Dave Evans, you were came in and
flying the kite at all? Is that an option? Uh, I'm not sure that's from sailing with Hiscox uh, back in the day, but uh, he was always a favour of putting it up because uh, even with it oversheeted or flapped, it generally helps the bow up um, and, uh, and just stabilises the boat a little bit. Two sailings, just all a bit, uh, a bit dodgy really. Um, so as long as we can get the kite up, we tend to get it up as quick as possible. Dave Evans, you were telling us about some windier weather in Marseille a couple of weeks ago when you were out training here. T tell us about that and um, what you needed to do just to stay upright on that day. Um, we had some breeze out the north and when it was out the north it was generally just uh, a little chop and then we had a few days where it came a bit more westerly and uh, some big swell came in and upwind usually a bit more of a wider stance and, uh, and then downwind it's a test to see with the crews who wants to beat the kite and go the quickest downwind. Okay, so downwind you can go too fast in a 49er, meaning it, it, going too fast you end up. I don't think they, they've got a big battle on today to try and get up into that, that top nine. Yeah, with a with a short week, they've uh, obviously struggled. Uh, it definitely hasn't been their focus. Nathan's been thinking about the America's Cup, um, but nevertheless, they they are here to win, and we'll get to see them later today. In the meantime, let's focus in on this uh, 49er FX uh, race, the first of four. We're inside a minute, um, so why don't we cut to the live images and, uh, and bring it in for you guys. And it looks lighter than we expected at the moment. We were, we were expecting strong winds today. They may still come in, and the reason why we're starting an hour earlier than originally expected is because they fear that the winds might get too strong later on. But it looks like they're just getting going there. Yeah, that's the start, isn't it? And we will wait and see if that start has got away cleanly. There haven't been many starts this week that have got away first go. There's been a lot of general recalls. But here we are at the moment. It looks like they're, they're off and away. It's a, it's a new direction as well. So far we've been racing in, uh, in westerly winds or so all week. And this is a northerly. So the girls, none of the girls have seen this except maybe in training. And uh, it's also, like you say, lighter than we expected. It's only about five knots right now, maybe five to seven. And uh, we expect it to build all the way into the 20s by about three o'clock today. So uh, quite a lot on. Um, who's looking good off the line there, Andy? Uh, looking at the tracking, it tells us that Jenna Mae Hansen from Denmark, sailing with Katia Iverson, won the pin and is leading out to the left-hand side. And it looked like it was a, a very pin-biased line. There Maybe she is in picture now, or oh, just to the right, and they've gone... Uh, so that we saw Jenna Hansen just to go right of the picture. That is uh, 117 is um, Caitlin Elks and Olivia Price, I'm guessing. Um, and then uh, in the middle of center of picture is Celia Lettinen and Michaela Wolf. Uh, Finland 125. Uh, Canada, that's Aaron Berry and Lauren LaVenture. Canada 120. And uh, they're all, well, it looks like uh, the Canadians are actually getting pinched off and as they go for attack, yeah. So Celia doing a good job making sure her lane's free. And uh, how's she looking on the track? Yeah, Celia Layton in the finish boat, Fin 125, looking good in, a, in about third going out to the left. There we're looking at, I would say, the leader in these early stages. Very difficult to say in, in these early stages, but it, it looks to me like the Danes are enjoying going out to, well, on the right hand of the picture, but out to the left hand side of the course is the way that we're thinking about it. Then we've got Australia 117, the, the next boat along from there. That is uh, Tessa Parkinson, oh. the gold medalist in the 470 from 2008. 
sailing with Chelsea Hall. So a good race for her so attack far. And, attack and cross or attack and duck, is it? Attack and cross for uh, Hansen but, and Everson. So they have tacked, uh, tacked out to the left and are trying to come back. We don't expect it to be a one-way course like we've seen a lot of the week, do we? Uh, in a northerly offshore wind, you'd expect the girls to be playing some shifts You would today. think so. You, you would think so. You, you would expect it to be very shifty from this direction. And it, it looked like things didn't work out quite as well as the Danish folks. But let's see. Let's see how they come in. Yenna and uh, Yenna and Kata, the Danish boat here, they uh, they've been fighting for for wins all year, and they found themselves in unfamiliar territory yesterday. They or two days ago, they were 19th after qualifying, so they barely scraped into the semi-final. Uh, but they had a fantastic day yesterday. They're wearing our Seiko uh, Queen of the Downwind jerseys as the fastest team sailing downwind yesterday, and they uh, moved all the way up to eighth place overall last night. Another day like that today, and they'll be in the contention for the lead, uh, like we hope, like we'd expect. Now, one of the other boats in contention for the lead, not in pictures, but out on the far side of the course, is France 871, that's Sarah Stayart and Julie Bossard. They are one of the ones leading the charge out to the other side of the course, which at the moment our cameras aren't covering. We're still looking at the left-hand side, looking at the Danes that we've been talking about, and the Australians, Tessa Parkinson and Chelsea Hall. Still very early days, and it looks at the moment like there are going to be boats coming in from both sides. So not particularly fast one way or the other at the moment. Key conditions, you can see the girls are having to work the boat quite hard. Uh, in and out, as the uh, adjusting their angles quite a bit. Oh, uh, oh that's, that's our third boat overall. Julia Conti and Francesca Klapic, Italy uh, 747, just going behind the two boats uh, center of picture. And you can see, okay, so they're crossing uh, that Denmark 11 is uh, Ida Hansen and Marie Olsen. Uh, the, lead, the winners from the 2013 European Championships, and going behind them is Vicky Jerzok and Annika Lorenz, uh, Germany 712. Uh, so good start from the good start from Hansen and Everson. They had a bunch of the boats have to duck them, and now they've tacked and, pro and crossed and stayed with the in case uh, the girls who are now going back left. So very good from those two so far today. Absolutely. And they just tacked in front of Netherlands 110, which is no. Nina Kaiser and Anna Deutsch. Who we've just been learning our Dutch lessons this morning. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then Deutsch, praying for Nina Kaiser. They're pretty new to the to the class, and uh, they come from the 470, and they've been surprising themselves with their performance this week. They've been having a great week. We just saw, we just saw, yeah, and, uh, we saw attack again, so it's obviously shifty if they're, they're already on their fourth tack. This, this is a lot of attacking for 49ers sailing, isn't it? Yeah. It's only going to be a 20-minute race today, so they're probably already getting ready to set up for the winner mark. I think so. I, I guess they're on their final approach there. We'll, we'll see the mark come into the shot soon, maybe. Rem remembering, of course, that it's a Wynwood gate, so they actually have a choice of marks to go around, which then is really unusual in, in this kind of racing. Just on the left of the screen, we're seeing our overall leaders. Uh, New Zealand 16, uh, Alex Mo Molly Meach. Wow, first of the winner mark from them. That's good sailing. They, they had the best day yesterday. So the big yellow dot, the yellow jerseys go around in first place. In se second more. place, it's, uh, that's Netherlands 131, which is Annemiek Beckering and Claire Blanc, lying in fifth place overall. And third, Mark, Cecilia Lettinen and Michaela Wolf from Finland, actually going for trying to roll. They, uh, they're not going to get away with that. Fourth round, Luciana Hansen and Katja Everson. So, so, so there's we, our top four, and they've gone all to the same gate. So uh, maybe the left gate, uh, right of our screen, is the favored one. Oh, well. Early drives from the Dutch there. Yeah. And it's going to be about staying in the pressure. From what the sailors have been telling us this week, the pressure is very, very localized. You've got, you've got to start with what you've got rather than chase what you see on the, on the other side of the course. Francis Peters and Nicola Gross, fifth round. That's GBR121. Vicky Yersok and Annika Lorenz, Germany 712, sixth round. Uh, so a lot of the leaders, are the people doing well in this regatta so far, are actually having good beats here. It uh, doesn't look like a great angle from uh, Vicky and Annika. We'll have to see how this downwind works out for them, but uh, they are quick downwind. And they should be very quick in the light. And no one else has chosen this, this other mark yet, have they? So uh, there, there's, there's the Canadians everyone, going around Everyone's the right going around the, uh, the right-hand mark in, in, in our picture, but it's currently off-screen, and either hoisting, straight-setting, or driving out as we're seeing some of these boats now. Oh, maybe we missed a bunch of boats that went to the other mark. 
out of out of picture. So out of we, picture. There, we then we've got the those, Brazilians one, now. One of those boats was Singapore, who didn't have such a great day yesterday in the stronger winds. But uh, Sarah Stayart doing very well. She's leading the pack on the left of picture. See, I think Sarah Stayart is actually doing extremely well here. Our, 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 ca our cameras aren't capturing it, but Sarah Stayart's already jibed and, and headed downwind. Uh, so she's ahead uh, of the game. And there's the Kiwis still leading their group there, but how will they do on the far side? It's the Kiwis leading the charge from this side of the course. And there in the distance, you see another boat. Is it a French flag? Yes, it is a French flag. So that's our leaders in the far distance, just going out of screen, we saw them. So that, that's a new race leader, Sarah Stayart and Julie Bossard, currently vying with the Kiwis. So those are the two top teams at the moment, the Kiwis and the French, battling for the overall lead. There's Frances Peters, also having a great regatta, currently in fourth place overall. She's GBR 121. And in the middle of picture there, it's the current series leaders, the Kiwis. Looks like they're struggling actually. They're, they might have led around their side of the course, but it's the boats on the far side that, that did a lot better. So they, they were out of picture as we saw them round. But uh, it looks like the French were on round the leeward gate. And that was uh, Anatona Cliff and Molly Vandemore there uh, in the center of picture of the US, from the USA. And also doing well is another Australian boat who we haven't mentioned so far. 848, that's uh, Olivia, Olivia Price, Price and Caitlin Outs. Okay, so we, we were following the left side facing upwind, and uh, it sounds like the right side facing upwind is actually the one that's paid off. Maybe that's why we saw the Dutch jibe away there early, and same with Vicky and Annika. Yeah. Chasing maybe some more pressure, or what they think might be a better, better route downwind. And it looks like we got boats choosing both gate marks at the bottom. So, so there isn't a clear pattern here. What, what that tells us, Ben, is that both sides of the course could pay. There, there isn't a clear go left as there has been in some of the other races so far this week. Yeah, we saw. We thought we saw Celia Lettinen the finish the finish boat uh, center screen with the Audi symbol Spinnaker. We, just, we thought we saw her around in third, but either she's had a terrible run or she actually wasn't. It was the other mark that was paying. Uh, or that, that the leaders went around. So, oh, but there we see Vicky and Annika with the SA Speed P Spinnaker. Um, so they've passed a few boats on this run. I think. Um, one of the Italian boats, ITA 143, doing very well. That's Lavinia Tetza and Paola Bogomaski. They're doing very well just off picture on the uh, left hand side of the course as they come up wind. And that's, we just saw Sarah Stayart left of picture there. Just going out of picture. There we go. This is uh, can't quite make it. That's the USA flag, yeah, on the left. Oh yeah, so that'll be on a tiny cliff. And then just tacking right now, that will be um, Australia one four eight. No, no. Oh yeah, it is eight four eight. Okay, so that's Olivia Price and Caitlin Ellis, center of screen. So they're in about third place overall at the moment. Certainly third of those boats going out to the right. And if there is a pattern at all, it seems to be go right more than go left. And, and actually, the Kiwis that we mentioned earlier that we thought were doing so well are, are not having a great race, as it turns out. And we also saw Eden and Marie, Denmark 11, almost last, our European champions. So she, if they, she's having a difficult week by her standards. Yeah, I mean, they, were up, they got up to seventh yesterday, but uh, you know, th this would be the first regatta she hasn't won all year. So uh, she's going to need, she's still got seven more races to go, or six more races to go in the series, four today and three tomorrow, um, but uh, and maybe a comeback. But that's her just round, that's her with the red spinnaker in the background, just rounding the little gate right now. Tough, tough way to start she, a day. She was in seventh overall starting the day, so uh, she's still on track to, to get into the top nine today and secure a spot for the uh, for the top 10 final tomorrow. What place do we reckon we're looking at here, Andy? Uh, Australia 848 and Brazil 12. Uh, tracking group? I would say yes, Australia 848, about third or fourth overall. Okay, and the Brazilians are a little behind them, you can tell just by the height of the mass. They're, they're, they're about lower. fifth or sixth. So, they're tracking out to the left hand side. Uh, further, further off picture would be the series leader, or oh, sorry, the. They are Julie Bossard. Only been sailing the boat 
for about what, three months, not even three months. Yeah. And they're only three points uh, behind overall from Alex Maloney and Molly Meach, who we saw at least uh, about mid-pack. So they'll be looking to take over the lead if they can hold on to it, the it, rest of this race. And obviously in the shifty conditions, oh, we, fi we found um, Sarah Sarah and right here, center of screen. Um, and you can see the crews semi-trapezing, crouching in. It still tells us that the wind is only about five or six knots. So this is not the strong wind day we expected. Not yet. We do, uh, I talked to race committee this morning, they do expect it to continually build all day. And uh, we've got a bit of a battle between right, the right and left side of the courses. Our cameras are nicely flipping back and forth between uh, the first couple places, which is Americans and the French, and the uh, third place here, Olivia Price. Uh, and actually, just, we just see her tack and come into the mark. I think they're doing pretty well on, on the left-hand side of the course, right right-hand side of our picture here. Coming towards us, this is the Australians. The uh, silver medalist Olivia Price in the match racing last year at the London 2012 Olympics with uh, Caitlin Alts. And uh, I think they may be vying for the lead now. It could be that they've made this side of the course pay and they could be moving ahead of the French on the far side of the course. Well, just took a little bit of a header there, brought the boat to win, but nicely handled. And uh, it's obviously shifty, these girls are. Look at uh, the Brazilians now having to take a big uh, knock. Yeah, coming back on a bad angle there. Yeah, and now we flip back and we see the Sarah Stair likewise will have taken that lift and actually it looks like a puff on the water as well so she's come and managed to get across along with Anna Tunnicliffe um, just uh, just behind her and we'll see them round the windward gate here let's see uh, which side they go to uh, if they go straight it looks like a pretty uh, easy approach but no they tack they obviously they, they're seeing the darker water we can see left of screen um, they're, they're gonna Dark, darker water meaning more wind right yeah that's that's uh, it's difficult to pick up obviously from this distance but they took that lift and that puff up to the mark and looks like they wanted to keep cool down with it. Okay, so it's still very soft here, but uh, it must be difficult to defend a lead in this kind of weather, but at the moment the French still doing very well, still still up in the top few. Let's see if they are still number oh, wow, one. Wow, that going. wasn't ley line, so they had a couple more attacks to go. Difficult to get a perspective. Uh, for, there we go, now we're going to focus in on the gate. Oh, but it looks very there. soft, doesn't it, for America on in the middle of picture now. Yeah, it's really softened up here. And they just got a, they just got some pressure both up from both totally crouching to both. Oh, <laughs> no wonder it's so confusing for our cameraman. They've got the spare mark in that boat. So Julie, Julie, uh, Sarah, and Julie have just rounded the left gate, and the other mark we can see in the picture is actually the spare mark. Right. Okay. <laughs> but interesting, they've gone round that mark and immediately jibe set. When you when you have a choice of marks, it... oh, I know what's happened, Andy. They they bet you they've shifted the course for a wind shift, in which case they only lay one mark. So there's only one mark in the water right now. Everyone will going around will be going marks to port around this mark. We only keep the gate in if uh, we can manage. If we try and reset, if we have to reset for the angle, uh, it's too difficult to lay a perfect windward mark in that amount of time. So they'll lift it into the boat, and everyone knows that you have to go marks to port, which is the standard mark rounding. Got it. For, Thank uh, you, Ben. For Olympic sailing. Just setting out a picture there. Italy 143 having a very good race. That's Lavinia second place for them. Yeah. They're in 16th overall, so this is going to really lift them up the standings, and it's performances like this that maybe will help those Italians get up into the top nine today. Yeah. Round, third, round third is Anna Tunnicliffe uh, and Molly Vandemore. That'll help them out. They're actually having a very good regatta, uh, the, best, uh, the best of their new campaign here. They're in 10th place right now and looking to move up. Uh, but Anna is a gold medalist in the laser radio, right? I mean, we, we should be expecting good things of her, shouldn't we? Fantastic, Taylor. She was favored uh, for the match racing, too, in 2012 and uh, had to meet up with her training partner in the quarterfinals, got beaten in the quarterfinals uh, by, the, by Celia and uh, Michaela, who ultimately went on to win the bronze. But uh, there were a lot of sides of relief from that match race. So it was out of out yeah. during the Olympics. Yeah, it's definitely one of the favorites. Fourth round, Argentina... Um, Victoria Travasso and Maria Brantz. This is the first time we've seen them in Europe yet. Uh, this is the first time we've seen them in Europe this summer, and they're having a, a great regatta here. Fourth in this race, 20th overall. They made the semifinal. They've got to be thrilled with that. And uh, the South American contingent's looking strong. Yeah, well, this is going to do wonders for lifting them up from 20th to who knows where, somewhere in the teams. There's Olivia Price and Caitlin Alex. They were down in fifth, and that is... Uh, Okay, here's our leaders. Looking like good pressure. Looking like good pressure here. France 871, Sarah Stair, Julie Brossard going into the finish. It's two laps, windward lure, twice around. So they're going into the finish, and uh, they'll take another bullet 
uh, along with that was their last, that was uh, they had a third and a seventh yesterday for the best race. So first win of the semifinals for them. They'll be thrilled. They'll move into the lead for this race, and uh, in front of the home uh, on the home waters, the the French press will be all over themselves. Fantastic performance. We're joined by some Portuguese sailors waiting to go racing later on today. George, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, so what do you see from from these pictures? A little bit lighter than you might have expected today, right? Yeah, I think everyone was getting ready for a tough, tough day, stronger winds, but so far it seems pretty light. But uh, well, I believe it will take up a bit. I think. Just, just tell us how quickly how you're doing in the regatta overall. What your hopes are today? Well, so far we are nine. And uh, we're pretty close in points, like 12 points per third. And uh, well, the guys behind us, they are pretty close too, so I think we have four races today and everything is still open. Critical to make the top nine today, right? You've got to get into the top nine, so you're ninth at the moment. Yeah, we're, I guess we're in the limit, but uh, we're focused, we're relaxed, and uh, we hope to do well today. Looks like it's going to be a tricky day. I do think the wind will build, and we see already the girls are double trapping downwind. We saw them one and a half trapping upwind, and the, and the water looks quite a bit darker. That's uh, that's the French. through. They've just won that race, so uh, that's we can confirm that win. And um, as we see the rest of the girls uh, plowing downwind, Francis Peters, center of screen right now. There's uh, Singapore, uh, Grizzy Kung, and uh, there's Haley Eldridge, Australian 999. So difficult for a cameraman to, sh to follow the battles as, they, as the girls go directly away from us, uh, but it is nice to be able to see the racing unfold live here. It's out Italy through in second place, and uh, who, was, who was third we were looking for? That was, uh, was it Anna in third? Uh, Anna was in third as she went around the top mark. I haven't seen her recently, but uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure she's out there somewhere. It, it, looks, it looks like the gaps have really opened up down this final run. Okay. It looks like uh, that, that old cliche, Ben, of the rich getting richer, uh, that the French uh, are leading even more, but the... Okay, but, but and, and it's Italy sailed away from, from America, so um, they uh, those fronts who really jumped out on the rest of the fleet. But it, interesting to note that the Argentinians have done very well here, that uh, the girls in 20th overall, they've been fourth place here by the look of it. George, what do you get from this? Watching these pictures, does it does it tell you anything about what your strategy might be when you go out there and run the same course later on? Definitely not. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be outside and have a look at it while the, the wind is coming from shore. I guess uh, it's pretty abnormal for a lot of other types of racing. They came from 420s, but uh, we see that a lot in 49ers. People have good races and bad races in the yeah. same day, same conditions. Yeah. It's such a competitive uh, fleet, and it's such tight racing. Even, even from championship to championship, just like this year, we, we saw the, the German team, Hale. They've been doing really good. They won Palma. They were uh, on top three in the Justin Field in the last championship, and they didn't even make the top 40. short qualification series, wasn't it? So, yeah. so they got a black flag in one race and they were, suffered a collision in another race. So, I so heard, I heard. I didn't see, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's so hard to make uh, like uh, one or two big mistakes and you can have the whole championship. What's it like now having the 49er FX at all your events? It used to be just the 49er, now it's the 49er FX as well. How, how does that change things in the boat park? And, on the water. Well, it's definitely much better, you know, we have a lot of girls around, I think the guys must be really happy. And well, uh, it, it, it looks like Jose here, who's very busy doing his numbers, he, he yeah, he suddenly found an excuse not to not to work out his points for the day, so Jose, yeah, you're making, you're making this scale for <laughs> measuring the new math and the new terms. Oh, I, I, thought, I thought you were putting down marks for the girls in the next <laughs> Oh, no, 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 oh, right. not yet. 
we had we had some trouble. <laughs> we're, race today we're still working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the resilience just finished right now, and a really tight battle here with Haley Outridge and the pink spinnaker. I uh, can't tell who that is in the blue. I think it might have been, um, and then uh, Singapore or Netherlands through on the left, and there's Eden Marie. Uh, Denmark 11, still racing, haven't finished yet. I think they have a jive to go still to get to the finish line. So they're, you know, the back three or four in this, uh, in this race, uh, not the start they needed for the day. Um, so. and, and, and also the Kiwis, I, th I think they've had a, a difficult race here. Yeah, we don't see them on the screen yet even, yeah. So. And the Singapore girls who were leading after the first two days in this regatta, not having a great day, and, and yet they seem so fast early on in the in the lighter winds that we had at the beginning of the week. And this is not exactly strong winds, is it, George? No, I think it's pretty much the same. I think uh, outside, the, the only difference is that we don't have the left side working as it's been working like the last days. It's, it must be shifty and it's a... And, uh, well, I think that's pretty much it, but the wind is really light, so we were, I was talking to Jose this morning, we were expecting, like, to wear uh, warmer suits and put the, the stronger winds uh, uh, tension on the mast, but I don't think that's what's going to happen, it's, it's still pretty light. Matt McGovern, who we're hoping will come join us in a little bit, he, he announced on Facebook that he went out for pizza last night. <laughs> he, uh, he wanted to get a little extra weight for today. So uh, well, there we there we were at our Vietnamese restaurant last night, and the Kiwis came along, Pete, Pete Burling, and he was going for double dessert. That's right. So uh, maybe the double dessert wasn't such a good idea looking at the wind <laughs> conditions here. It's only ten thirty. The guys won't be out till twelve thirty, and uh, just this morning the race officer says he doesn't think we'll be able to race past three. So uh, even though we're seeing it light right now, it's probably already two knots more than what they started. If you remember off the start line one and a half, barely one trapping, and already I think we're seeing uh, a little more breeze than that, so yeah, uh, I, I think so. I think you might still have to strap down that last George. Probably, probably, yeah, we can see the flags on the, on the race committee there, the, it will be good, I think. Yeah. So, so was that, Ben, was that one of the reasons for the women going early, because they're in their first season of FX racing, set, send the women out earlier while the wind was lighter? Well, we wanted to move, we scheduled the whole day earlier so um, be if, because we thought we, we might not be able to race past well we actually thought uh, yesterday that we wouldn't be able to race past one o'clock um, so we moved uh, the start day start time up to 10 this morning so that we could try and get a couple races in and uh, yeah I think the, the right now the saleable wind limit which is what we use there's no fixed number in 49er and 49er FX the saleable win wind limit for uh, the 49er FX is still a little lower than the men the men have had a decade of experience and the women have had 10 months, so uh, uh, we can expect that uh, for now and uh, I'm sure the girls are happy to be out there getting their races in uh, first thing while it's, uh, while it's suitable conditions. It does look like good racing. George, just tell us what your crew Jose is doing here. He's, he's filling out a, a table of numbers. Show the, show the camera, George. Uh, Where is the camera? Jose. Just, just yeah, hold it up. Don't choke him on. This is, this is, this is, this is secret, secret stuff. stuff. Yeah. This is secret stuff. No more secret stuff. <laughs> Uh, Only like no, this. The thing is, uh, <laughs> yesterday we were making a checkup on, on our gear and we saw one of the main shrouds, it was uh, breaking. So uh, we had to put new one and when we tried to make the scale again, it, the numbers were completely different. And uh, so we're pretty much finishing the new one. That's it. The shrouds don't come identical lengths and uh, even a few millimeters makes a big difference to exactly, your platform. Yeah. So Jose is transcribing across uh, all his exactly. numbers to deal with the new length pretty of shrouds. Much, pretty much we had the... We had the, the numbers are the same because the mast is bending the same way, but the, the, yeah, just a few millimeters of the, on the shrouds, they will make a big difference. So you're varying the tensions in the wires that support the mast. Tell us why you do that. Why don't you just pull the, pull the mast tight and leave it? Well, we're pretty much trying all the time to get the, the perfect uh, shape on the sail and to get that is by bending the mast, the, the top section, the middle and the, the lower section that's pretty much that, I think that's the big challenge for uh, every team I know that some teams they have, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe the scientific uh, studies on the thing we have the feeling and a lot of hours on the, tr on, on the water train and uh, well, we're doing well so we're not worried about you, that you're, you're a pilot and uh, so the analogy for our non-sailing friends is, uh, you know, when the wing, when the plane's taking off, they put, they extend the wing, they put those flaps out to so make the wing bigger. Exactly. That's because the plane's traveling slower off the runway. Exactly. And uh, and and then when they get up to cruising speed, they bring those flaps in and they make the wing smaller. Well, you guys aren't able to change the size of your sail, 
all you're able to do is change the shape of it. So exactly. as if it's a if it's a bendier sail, if there's more shape to it, it's got more power. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, and then, but if it gets when you get up to higher speeds with the wind, if you bend the mast more, flattens well, out the sail, flat, takes the a sail, little yeah. power out of the sail, and you're able to still balance it with the same exactly. amount of weight. In the 49ers, both we have so Average much sail, sail area. Uh, we, we get overpowered really easy, so the mast has to be really flexible to hold the the, the bending that that we put on it on it did on yeah 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 it's a lot of tension yeah definitely I, I was uh, checking yesterday we were checking the scale there it's, it's like more than 300 kilos on the on the shrouds there the tension. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure we're putting on the boats. But you guys put even more on them when you bounce them over waves. So uh, <laughs> the setup, uh, the setup isn't all the load it takes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so George, uh, what's uh, after the world? I mean, it, obviously uh, you're not thinking too far beyond the next two days. It's the most critical regatta in in the whole year. But uh, how, how much does your future depend on what happens over the next two days, and, and what is that future? Well, to be honest. Uh, Pretty much what, what we have in, at stake here is the result, but uh, besides that, uh, not much more because we did really well in the, at the Europeans in Denmark. We finished six overall, fifth Europeans, and uh, well, for the federation, we are in level two, so we pretty much have the money. You know, level two is a level of funding. Uh, exactly. If you have top three in, in at the world or the Europeans, there is an amount of funding. From fourth to eight, there's another. That's level two, and level three from nine to twelve. And this is by country. Okay. So, uh, well, we're pretty much relaxed now, just getting focused on, on the results. Gonna get here. What's your best result in the World Championship? It was last year. We finished twelfth in the in the Croatia. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think we had. A, we're, we're getting much better since last year. And uh, well. So That's what's the difference between, say, someone in 12th and, and breaking through into the top 5 or 6 in the world? I think there is a minimum difference. Uh, probably there is no difference because uh, it's just, an, I don't know, maybe some decisions during the regatta. That's it. Uh, I think uh, at levels of technique and uh, uh, I don't know, maybe tension, speed of the boat, I think it's pretty much the same. Well, you can see at this championship, Nathan, Nathan he's not doing so well. And we all know he's really fast. We all know he's one of the best. Uh, he just came from the America's Cup, so there's nothing much to say. But he's not doing well here, you know. So I think uh, we're it's, there, a, there, yeah. it's a really qu hard question to answer because if uh, George knew the answer to your question, he'd work on it immediately. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the that's what every sailor is doing all the time is the you know the constant work. But the question is what to work on. What is going to make the difference for me for for you? Well, to be honest, uh, this year I'm feeling uh, very relaxed, actually. Uh, I'm on the water, thinking uh, anything else but, but the boat, the, the, the technique we have to, to do, the, the work with Jose, and uh, we have... Uh, and I think that's it. Sometimes maybe guys are more nervous. And, uh, I don't know. I think if we, are, if we are at trials for the Olympics or something, there, there's a lot of other things that can, can make you go bad, you know. Yeah, you said you were twelfth at the World Championships, but you actually didn't get to go to the Olympics. Why don't you explain, you know, what your trial system was and how close it was? And uh, well, to qualify for the Olympics, uh, Federation decided that it was uh, Palma last year and uh, Scandia, Scandia Regatta in Weymouth. So June, like right before the games. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So that was well, only two months before the Olympics. Yeah, actually, both of the teams, me and Jose and the other Portuguese team. Uh, we didn't want that. We wanted more races. Mm. Uh, well, but anyway, the, these things, the, <laughs> the leaders, they, they make the decisions. And uh, well, we didn't do well at, at Palma. We had some, some problems we're not going to mention. And um, well, Scandia, we did well, but it wasn't enough. So your 12th place in the World Championships didn't actually contribute to your Olympic qualification? Unfortunately, no. That's really rare. Most of the yeah. countries use, use the, the World, World Championship yeah, yeah. as a benchmark. Uh, yeah, the thing uh, they they tried to to take some pressure off the world because we had the the Olympic team results to to get there, you know. So you had to qualify the country. 
Uh, we no, the country was qualified already, and the, the Olympic team is about for the funding. Oh, okay. So they, uh, I don't know. We didn't agree with it because for us, uh, regatta is a regatta. <laughs> World Championship is the most important. We definitely think it should uh, should be on the trials for the Olympics next year. So when the Olympics were playing last year, what were you doing? Could you bring yourself to watch the games that you thought you should have been racing? In? <laughs> well, uh, actually, I was working at the office, but uh, but I had uh, I had uh, you know the live live broadcasting on, and I saw pretty much all the races. Yeah. And, and I was cheering up for the guys. You're from, you guys are still good friends with Francisco. Yeah, he has been uh, around I, for years. I was, I was in the Olympics in China with Francisco. Yeah, I, I was a coach of Bernardo, so yeah, we're pretty much friends. Yeah. So, what's it like actually competing at the Olympic Games? And, and you, Ben, were there as well. You were presumably racing against each other in 2008 in China. Yeah, well, George and I are very good friends from this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I actually, think we qualified together in yeah. guys the world in 2007. And uh, yeah, the Olympics is, I think it was one of the best uh, times of my life, for sure. A lot of fun in that Olympic village, I'm sure. Uh, it's not about the fun, I think the, 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 the competition itself, the, the opening ceremony, those are moments that you can go there once in a lifetime. I'm not sure if I'm going there again, so, so it was, uh, it's very nice. Jose and I, they beat us three world championships in a row by one place. Exactly, that's true. Including the one, it was a very good, uh, we were both very happy for each other, um, yeah. 12th and 13th countries at the 2007 uh, in, the, in, in your hometown, uh, Teshkai, uh, uh, qualifications, we both managed to get in. Uh, Alan Norgard just joining us, uh, he's come to check out the fleet, uh, <laughs> why don't you say hi to all the people out there? Who am I talking to? You're talking <laughs> to the world. Talking to, to your, to your fans, world. Alan. Oh, yeah. Bronze medalist from 2012, and uh, this is they just finished the first race, and they're, so it looks like they're just getting set up for the second race now. Yeah, it still doesn't look like much wind there. No, it doesn't so, look like much. So, did you have dessert last night when you had dinner? Did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Extra food. Finally, finally, had to get dessert. Yeah. <laughs> we right. <all> did. <laughs> <laughs> and now that you're looking at these pictures, do you think you should have had dessert? Um, I think I think we'll pick up later. Yeah, so I think I think we're okay. Okay. So how's it going for you so far this week? You pleased with your performance so far? Yeah, we're we're hanging in. It's uh, it's been a difficult week with the uh, light wind here, but uh, well, we're we're still close. I think we're in 12 or 11 right now. 64 points. Yeah, very what? close. So well, it's, uh, well, what's the goal for today? Well, definitely to get in inside the top nine, so that we don't have to sail six races tomorrow. Yeah. So just to explain what's happening, uh, the top nine from both the men and the women's fleets will automatically get into tomorrow's final. Everyone else will go into the petit final, and uh, only one boat from the petit final will make it through to the final. So uh, there's three races for, to do that, and then, uh, and then the one guy gets to go on to the final, and, uh, and then be another three races in the final. So uh, uh, George here, he's a ninth, so he told us the exact same thing you did. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think. Especially all the crews, that's that's what the we for. It's too hard to do six short short races in a row there. <laughs> yeah, it uh, definitely the intensity level is raised a whole nother notch, and the crews feel it, especially having to do all those twice and doses. Yeah, so yeah. If, if the breeze picks up later, a good day to get the tower trapezing out again, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, we didn't get to uh, to do that this time. It was close though. So, so you were the pioneer of tower trapezing last year at the European Championships. Who, who was standing on whose shoulders? Uh, I was, I was uh, going outside on on Anas, so he was uh, he was steering while I was standing waving. <laughs> so, so you you were handing over the stick to your crew, who doesn't normally steer the boat, but he's probably steered a 49er faster than you have, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so. Um, this this was quite an athletic thing. I, I don't know if uh, people can really picture what it was like, but but someone standing on the shoulders of somebody else who's standing on the side of an already very wide 49er. That that's quite something. I mean, what did what did it feel like? Well, it feels good when you're looking at the other boats uh, when you can 
go faster and higher at the same time. It's, it feels pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering, you used this at the European Championships just after the Olympics. Why didn't you use it at the Olympic Games and turn your bronze medal into a silver or a gold? Yeah, yeah. I wish, I wish we'd done it. It's a, it was a bit of a coincidence because we were, uh, it was the first time I sailed with Anas and we were a little bit too light. And uh, we just didn't have the speed in Lake Gata in this uh, 15 uh, knots range. And uh, the combination by being light and uh, having more leverage is, is a really good combination. So that turned out to be really good. So you guys just decided to start start during the regatta for fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just uh, having a little bit of troubles with the speed and we saw it on the way out to the course. Let's try it because we tried it back in the days and it was not really good. But then it turned out to be really good for us there and, and then we just used it. So I wish we haven't used it there, so we could use it at some <laughs> other more important regatta for did, did you train it a lot for the regatta? No? no, no, not at all. Just on the way out to the second race, uh, we practiced it on the way out there. Otherwise we didn't. We tried it four years earlier and, and, and the test we did there was that it wasn't really going that much quicker. But the, uh, the combination of being lighter and, and then doing this was, uh, was pretty good. Combination. And by the end of the week you were so good at it, you could do it just for one minute tats at that theater regatta. Yeah, yeah. and the funny story is actually that uh, coming into this regatta, we've been, uh, <laughs> there was some mistake in the class rule. It com came in as an amendment to the class rule last year, and then by mistake they forgot to put it in in this year's class rules. And actually at the Europeans it was allowed again, but we choose not to use it there because we thought we would rather use it at the Worlds here now. <laughs> so uh, we actually been practicing a lot coming off to this regatta, but three weeks before this regatta, there was a change to the crowd, to the class rules, but it came back in again, so we were not allowed to do it here. <laughs> so we actually dipped down in weight to, uh, we were 10 kilos lighter uh, four weeks before this regatta because we wanted to do the same here. So last night wasn't the first night you had a dessert? <laughs> no, 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 we've been going up and down so much the last uh, month here, so it's... Uh, so when did you find out that you weren't going to be allowed to do tower trapezing? About three weeks uh, before the regatta. Yeah. Okay, so you've been pigging out ever since, just eating what you want. Yeah, we, well, we were gaining a lot, and then the week before, when we saw it was going to be light as this regatta, then we went down again. So <laughs> been uh, going up, again. up and down all the time. <laughs> uh, Tom, can we just uh, show the image on screen just for a second? Uh, what uh, what we're seeing is uh, the committee boat there with the checkered yellow and black flag. That means follow me. So the committee boat has decided that the wind is probably shifted and they're having to reset the course. That's why we've got such a long delay between the races. So the committee boat, is uh, they've got the postponement flag. That's the Where's Waldo flag, red, white, red, white. That means there's postponement. The uh, checkered flag there, yellow and black, means follow me. So he's telling uh, the committee, oh, and you can tell it's a lot windier now. Too. So uh, something has happened, the wind has come in. Uh, they've had to reset the course. They'll do it as quickly as they can. So, uh, if my geography is right, I'd say the wind has moved farther left and they're moving the course farther right to still come to shore. You guys agree with that? Yeah, or well maybe we just get more wind so they need to have a longer course so they have to move up. Yeah, they could have gone downwind as well, yeah. yeah. But you can that, see all the girls following proper twin there. trapezing now when they want to do it. I'm not seeing many do it there, but that's, that's solid twin trapezing. Yeah, you can tell they're playing easily downwind without any sail, without any uh, spinnaker or any effort. So yeah. It's, the breeze is up to at least about 12 knots now, and we can see, I think we'll see it gain, gain, gain strength through the day. So hopefully they get this course set up quickly, and everyone gets a chance to get all the races in. Sorry, Alan, I'd like to uh, find out uh, your thoughts on uh, what happened to Peter, the guy that you won the bronze medal with last night. Um, that we had the 2012 Olympic champion from Australia, Nathan Aldridge, protesting the 2008 Olympic champion. Denmark, your teammates, Jonas Barrow and Peter Lang, what did you hear about that? Well, it was one of those uh, incidents that we get quite a lot now when we have the gate of my grounding, where if you're rounding the uh, starboard gate, you come out on, on board, and you have the guys coming out on the starboard day line, and then there's always time to find the, the way to squeeze in between all the starboard boats coming up, and they had a situation where they were trying to come down in front, and then they thought they couldn't, so they went back up, and then they, the Danish guys didn't think that they had enough time to avoid, but, uh, but it ended up being uh, that Nathan had the, had the right way on that, so, so they were unfortunately disqualified on that. So which boat were they? They, they were the starboard or the port boat? Yeah, the Danish guys were the port coming down and, okay. and trying to avoid, but, uh, but they, by the 
jury, so they didn't uh, do enough. Is it? Okay. So, so what's the feeling about the Winwood Gate? Do people, do people like it mostly? Um, I think so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's keeping the fleet a little bit tighter. Whereas uh, as before, when we had the top mark rounding, it was spread out more. So I think it's, uh, it's keeping the uh, the game a little bit more interesting further into the uh, into the race. What's interesting is that a lot of people ask us, why don't you have a spacer mark in the old system? And we did. We just bear off. And the reason is because the boats that were coming upwind were on port. So you could bear away, it's very difficult to maneuver in the 49er to bear away, the boat loads up a lot, you accelerate a lot, and you can really only get to one angle. It's a very narrow angle that you finish at, you don't, so you don't really have full control of where you go. But those guys were on starboard, everyone had to avoid them. Now what, it, what Alan was telling us is that when you go around on port, it's equally difficult to maneuver, you equally can only go to just about one angle, but the people you're pointing at are on starboard, and they don't have to get out of your way, you have to get out of their way. I imagine what you're trying to do. It's, it's a difficult maneuver, especially when the breeze is up or even when it's down. Yeah, we, we're getting quite a lot of situations on this, and especially now when it's new to everyone, and I think when people get more used to it, they'll get better at it. But, uh, but right now, we're seeing quite a lot of incidents right there. Okay. Just a few more things you have to think about. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to make it easy on you guys. All right. Let's just flip up onto the screen here and get the results up from the first race. Uh, our team here has been good enough to tabulate those for us. Um, and you can see if uh, the screen is, uh, oh, we don't get to see them on the screen, but it's physically showing for everyone else. So we'll have to look at our tablet. Um, behind, you can see the race committee boat has decided to move even more. So it's going to be a little delay still. Andy, what do you, uh, what do you see for, so, why don't you run the, down the results? And notice, so taking, what up, taking up the lead again, because they were leading two days ago, is the French team, Stayart and Bossard. So that, that means that the Kiwis that were leading going into that last race I've, I've We're just going to say bye order. to George here. Thanks for thanks for uh, Thank you, joining Jose. us. Thank Jose, you, Jose. Good luck today. Thank you. Good thanks luck, Jose. Work. Thanks a lot. Good work. So we have just to repeat, we have the French now in the lead, Stayart and Bossard, followed by Francis Peters and Nicola Groves from GBR in second place overall. The Italians, Conti and Klapsic, they remain in third overall. That's where they started the day. We, we have the Dutch Beckering and Blom in fourth, and we have Jurtzok and Lorenz, who, who are the, the top German team in light wins. They are fifth overall, and the Kiwis, who were leading going into that race, have dropped to sixth overall. They got a 14th in that race just now. So some big place changes already, just in the space of one race. A 14th isn't even that bad, really. I mean, it's still, uh, you know, still six people who finished behind you out of a uh, 20-boat fleet, and they're dropping six places overall. Well, it's not too bad of it. It's not as nice as first, which is which <laughs> is where the French finish. So the French are now on 40 points overall, and the Kiwis are on 57 points. Wow, so huge swing. 17-point gap now. Just in the space of one race. Ah, because the drop race must have come in as well. Right, okay. So now, uh, yeah, that's right. We've just gone from four to five races. In the fifth race, you, you discard your worst result. And for Conti and Klapsic, that was a 19th in that race. So they managed, they, they, they can discard the race they've just done. They remain in third place overall, but they now have a bad discard if they were to have another bad race. So of the top group, who's got the best discard? Because we're only five of eight races in. Uh, you. There's a good chance you'll sail another bad one. So who's 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 got a good uh, discard from the from the rest? Let me let me just have a look at this. Because or does everyone have a high one? <laughs> I'm just I'm just no no. Um, Maloney and Meach, uh, the Kiwis that were leading, now in sixth place overall. Um, hang on. Okay, okay, we're not going to talk about the drop race. No, we're getting well, the motion no, no, no. From, uh, from our stats guy. Yeah, he, we there, just there got past be. the official results, so he's going to update the table, I think. Uh, yeah, okay. Is that what you want to do? Okay, so let's pull the table down. We'll update it, and we'll get it back up to you. They, I, just show the, show the water, uh, Tom, and you, everyone can see that the breeze is building. All, uh, all the crews will be in tightening their shrouds like we just saw uh, Jose making the table for uh, so he can get his references right on the water. They'll all be cranking their masts down... Uh, Getting the sail flat or the mainsail, and, and actually adding uh, tension to the to the jib to the forestay as well, so the jib stays tighter. And then they'll go upwind and they'll practice. We just saw Haley Outridge going past us in the screen. So what happens is the crews go in, they, they reset the mast. You can see the boat center picture there. The crews huddled in the middle of the boat, and the skipper's trying to keep uh, keep the boat steady for that's uh, that's another Australian team. Anyways, and then and then the sailors will sail upwind. See how it feels. See if they've got the balance right between having uh, the right amount of power to uh, 
too much, too little. They'll make another couple adjustments, and they'll do that continually every time the wind changes in velocity. And you can see it's really, there's some pretty good puffs coming in now. We're looking downwind, and uh, it's quite rough. Yeah, it looks good now. Hopefully they'll get the course set up now, so we can get going. And how much do you change the wires and change the settings? Well, we're just looking at screen there. Coming off to the left, you can see the crew's actually gone forward to it. But they actually bring the jib down. There's no uh, there's no automatic jib cutting hand. You have to go forward and tie and retie a special knot at the bow there. So you, you bring the jib down, that changes the, the twist profile of the jib. And uh, that's hard work for both the skipper and the crew because the weight shifts and uh, gets really unstable. Yeah, I mean, we changed, we changed all from every two knots or so. It's a little bit of change, so... What we see now is, is more like a five knot change, I think. So you can see everyone down and, and making the change both to the dip and to the, to the mice thing here. So what happens if you get caught out and you don't get time to change uh, to your perfect settings for that wind condition? How bad is it sailing around with a slightly off rig setting? Well, if you sail the next race with the last setting you had for, for the breeze you had before, you'll be way overpowered and then you'll just be going slow. What do you do if it's not going to stay that way for the whole race? What do you do? Well, yeah, it's, it's always hard to predict, so it's uh, in, it's going out of the start. Is usually the most important thing. What we do is use the setup from what we got in the start, and, and if we know that it's going to keep on going up, we might put it a little bit on, on top, but uh, but, uh, but use the setup for what we have at the start, start time. As a kid, I was always taught, oh, you know, you set up for the lightest possible condition because you can always pull on your bang and your cunning hand to take it out during the race. But that doesn't work in skips at all because the the way the mass goes. Well, what do you think? You can do a little bit, but it's... Uh stay straight and the other one to crank it and you spend a lot of time pushing those wrenches around uh, in unstable conditions. It's, it's a big part of the game. Yeah, I mean in, in training this is what we spend uh, over half our time on is just two boats testing and finding the right setting for for the for all the, these conditions here. I think uh, for, yeah, we had two weeks of training here before this we got up just to, to trim the boat in for, for these, these conditions here. Today is some conditions that we haven't seen for the last three weeks here, so it's going to be new for everyone. So maybe only the French guy might have some advances in these conditions here. When you were sailing, it was windy, but the, uh, it was the Mistral direction, right? So it was almost 180 degrees from this. Big waves, yeah. maybe even windier than this. But yeah, yeah, we had some good fun races in the practice coming up to this, where we uh, where we had maybe three or five boats finishing and then uh, the rest were swimming around for <laughs> in the race so, so we had some good fun races there. You, you hosted a coaches regatta where all the coaches set the marks and take turns taking the scores and starting the races and uh, over four days I think there was only six races it was so windy or something like that? Yeah, yeah we had to cancel the last two days I think because the Mistral was just way too strong and so the way of and then 49 is there. How's Olympic sailing going in Denmark generally? What, what where does it fit into things? Do you get much attention back home in the media? Mostly during Olympic times. Uh, I mean, it was it was really uh, up in the media for for like months after the Olympics, and people knew what we were doing. But now it's back to normal. Uh, no one really knows what sailing is about. Yeah. <laughs> to explain them again, but, uh, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's a little bit more popular than it maybe uh -huh. was ten years ago, but uh, okay. it's, it's still not a big deal. So how life-changing is it to win the Olympic medal? Like, what was it like when you came back home? TV shows and opening Super <laughs> I mean, there for the first month it was pretty busy and, uh, and, and good fun, but, but after that it's back to normal again. So you, uh, you're not getting stopped in the street so much anymore for autographs? <laughs> no, no, no. But do you carry your medal around in your pocket like some people do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, some it guys really milk that. They carry their gold medal around. A free taxi ride to hold my medal. <laughs> yeah. Can I get a free dessert? Hold my medal. And, uh, I, I, I can think of a, a British guy who won a bronze medal in the sailing a long time ago. He wore it for so long he ended up getting a green mark on his chest. <laughs> so you need you need to watch out for that. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think I think we had the same with the actually Martin McHugh to have the Danish guy. He was uh, he was one of the guys milking it and uh, and there was some quite funny stories with, uh, with him on that. And uh, I, I I think for he had a bad experience coming into town uh, right after they won the gold and uh, he had some some girls there and they they didn't believe that he won a gold. So uh, so after that I think for half a year he always brought his gold medal to town. <laughs> Never go without it. So. I didn't, don't think you're telling us the whole story, but I, uh, I think we can. The there is, there yeah. is some more story to that. Yeah. Yeah. Martin is one of the characters who, uh, who you, yeah. him and a gold medal is a dangerous combination together in a room. It's definitely <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> it was nice to see him here. Actually, he's coaching. So Martin, immediately after winning a gold medal, converted himself to be a keelboat sailor. Really wanted to get into professional sailing. He got a chance to do what, one or two legs of the ball ocean race last time. And uh, the Volvo Ocean Race is just kicking off. They're just getting teams together. I'm sure he's ambitious to get on one of those squads. But he's here uh, coaching this week, so it's always nice to see him. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a lot to, to try and get in on those teams. But it's uh, it's unfortunately very hard to get in on because there are not so many teams right now. And, uh, but he's, uh, Do you have any inside knowledge? Can you break a story here about, uh, about any Volvo teams that Martin's going to be on? Um, I don't think he has uh, any luck with it yet. He was sailing uh, right now. He's one of the strongest and most fun people to be around. You could ask for so, uh, Yeah, he's a really good guy. I really hope that someone will pick him up. He's a very good guy. Let's take a quick break now. We're still waiting for them to reset the uh, the line and, and set the course. So we'll we'll come back to you at let's say, say uh, five past eleven. Five past eleven. So uh, wherever you are in the world, that's just over ten minutes from now. Uh, sorry, seven minutes from now. Five past eleven. We'll speak to you then.
Back at day five of the 49er Worlds, we've seen one race so far about to come into the second for the FX girls. So, and we're just about a minute away from the start, I think, Ben. Yeah, we've seen uh, David Campbell James, our race officer, racing the course. Uh, probably in, uh, well, 41 seconds to go to the start, and it's much breezier now up into the low teens of wind. All the girls had to reset the settings, and it uh, looks like it's going to be a great race here. Uh, puffy, shifty, offshore. 20 minute race is the best 20 girls in the world, it's, uh, it's going to be intense. And it's going to be so different to the previous race, uh, less than half an hour ago the wind was, was a lot less than we're seeing now, so that's why they shifted the course, the breeze has shifted round and it's a lot, lot stronger. And we must be looking at the way the boats are lining up, we must be coming into the last two minutes. No, 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 this is it, zero, they just went. Okay. No, we see the, we see the uh, yellow flag come down, and they're off the line, pointing straight at us, which makes it a little bit difficult to tell who's who, but uh, let's see, no uh, individual recall. So uh, someone was over early, and uh, we'll see if anyone's going up. We've got Anna Tuckle turning around, going to reset herself. Interestingly, we've got a Brad here, Brad Punk just joined us, so uh, uh, timely that. And uh, Brad, you chime in if you see anything interesting. A uh, couple boats tacking out, typically in this amount of wind, that would be because they didn't have good starts. So anyone you're seeing uh, tack out, usually you can get the start they want. Uh, one of which we see the Brazilians, Martin Grail coming out behind. And uh, wow, New Zealand, New Zealand 16 just made their second tack of the uh, Beatle. So that's, uh, that's not a good sign for them. No. That's two tacks so two. soon after the start. They were leading this event at the beginning of the day. They had a bad race early on just now and, and the Kiwis need to get back on form again to get back into the lead in this series. Annemiek Beckering, Claire Blom in uh, De uh, Netherlands 131. Uh, look like they're going well and uh, that was the Italians I think on the right side of the screen there. Uh, also look like they're doing well. And we saw those Italians do doing very well earlier today and uh, they could be pulling themselves up the rankings very well if they carry on like this. I'll just introduce our two guests. We got Brad Funk and Trevor Moore. Well, uh, Trevor Bird. Trevor, Trevor Bird. Bird. Uh, Team USA here to check out the racing with us and uh, yeah. tell us what's up. So uh, thanks guys. Join, uh, welcome yeah. to the studio. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely. It's nice. The breeze is up today and uh, flat water so it's going to be pretty challenging for everybody. Nice to see a bit of breeze again though, right? Oh yeah, Absolutely. it's nice to stress the legs out, especially for the crews. <laughs> yeah, typically uh, when it's uh, less than double trapping, it's the crew that has to go in first. Uh, skippers have a little bit of trouble moving their hands down the tips evenly, so the crews have to do a lot more jumping around on them. So in this condition, everyone's full trapping, uh, as much weight out as they can in this race. Uh, we're just... Uh, Yeah, a lot of boats tacked off early. I don't know if that's because they had bad starts or if they wanted to go right. Let's talk about the ones that you've got up in your GPS right now. So the guys who managed to hold their lanes. Who, who in that group uh, is looking good on the left side of the course? Out of so, picture. So finally, Eden Marie Nielsen and Marie Olsen, uh, Denmark 11, the European champions are showing some of the one the European championship. Having quite a difficult regatta by their high standards, but they're leading this race at the moment certainly leading the pack out to the left hand side and in a drag race they've they've gained some uh, good distance you can tell they're just uh, it looks like to us that they've won the left side of the course the side that we're not showing in screen and uh, a couple boats with them it's still really well, tight isn't uh, it? another danish boat as well it makes you wonder if the danes uh, particularly got a, a good handle on strong winds because it's the other danish boat uh, as well great. we see them in screen now so that's uh, denmark 11 uh we think that's our leaders Ida, Ida and marie they've just gone for their second tack of the beat now, so probably starting to play some of the shifts a little bit. Um, Considering how windy it is, pretty surprising guys to, to see them tacking this much, do you think? Oh, it is the, off the land, uh, the, the air is, the wind is, so it's definitely uh, more tacks might be uh, part of the protocol to get the, to the mark first, but um, as, as you know, the 49er fewer maneuvers, it's usually better when the breeze comes up. Okay. Maloney and Meech, uh, New, uh, New Zealand 16, they crossed ahead of almost all the boats in this pack and then have tacked on top of them. Uh, they've got some great pace in this breeze too, so they'll be 
be looking to stand over top of uh, this pack and come in from the right side of the course. And I, and I guess when, by the time we get to the windward mark, we'll see uh, we'll see which side of the course. Hey, just in the very foreground, we see one of the French uh, RSX sailors practicing. So uh, the French team, this is their base here in Marseille, and uh, we see we see them a lot for, uh, around the boat park here. Looks like great conditions out there, doesn't it? It yeah, does. Absolutely. Can't really see the whole race course though, can we? We're, we're only seeing uh, the boats coming at us and uh, can't see the, the ships that much. So we're how's it, how's it looking limited. on the GPS, Andy? Is the left side or the right side going to pay, do you think? It, it's middle left at the moment and it's a new Danish team. It's the other Danish team, Jenna Hansen and Katy Evenson, that have taken up the lead. Uh, Dan, Dan, Dan 11 still doing very well. There on left of picture we see Julia Conti, the Italian boat. Um, just trying to see, yes, she's she's doing well out on the far side of the course, but she's quite separated from the from the pack on the other side. She's in a group with Brazil. Okay, so our cameraman just was nice enough to pan up and show us the windward mark. So they're about three quarters of the way up the beat here. Just uh, they'll start positioning themselves in the next tax for how they want to round with the various pack they're in. Okay, so great. There's two very distinct groups at the moment. And we're looking at the group on the right, which is, you know, it's going to be a tight battle. We can't say for sure which group will come out ahead. Uh, on the right there, that's what, Australia 848? Yep. So that's that. uh, Olivia Price and Caitlin Elks uh, on top of uh, the girls who are were fourth going into the day, uh, Frances Peters. She's just falling into uh, Alex Maloney and Molly Meach. So Alex Maloney and Molly Meach, New Zealand 16, coming in on the tight cross here with the Danes. We think the Danes might be in the lead, 136. And they are crossing. The They're whole group crossed. Either. Okay, so the left side of the course, uh, the guys who managed to hold their lanes off the start uh, have beaten out the guys who had to tack out from their starts. And we see Germany. Oh, we just saw Germany, Yersok, and uh, Lorenz attack. <coughs> They're a little bit behind the lead pack. And uh, Yena and Katja will be, they've got full control of the group outside of them. Uh, they get to make the last tack here so they can plant right on top wherever they want and gain a few extra meters before. The, uh, for the windward mark, which they're going to round in first. And the left-hand side of the course, or right as we're looking at it in picture, seems to be working out best, but there are opportunities on both sides of the course. And now they have a choice of windward mark to go around, so let's see which side they fancy. Oh, well, they're tagging and can continue going uh, to the far side. So, so if they don't think it's that windy yet, they obviously have the boat handling skills to go wherever they want. Brazil round in second. Saw that immediately off the start line, so uh, we thought it was an error, but maybe they planned to go right. And then Eden Marie, Denmark 11, going around the opposite gate, they're going straight. Um, so the two Danes, first and third, split the sides of the course. Didn't look like uh, Grail had the greatest of bearaways. We saw her tack, oh she's jibes, no, that's straight set. So we think uh, up into second place is uh, already is, uh, second Danes. The winter mark, we're gonna see if these girls can all handle the Boat handling required, a little bit of tough fairway. You see all the coaches finally realize that it's not that easy and get out the way in the journey. <laughs> so that far, come? everyone's been able to bear away. Oh, the, the Brits are in a little bit of trouble. There we go. They've made it. Uh, there's Canada. And what's Aaron up with Tunnicliffe? Oh, Tunnicliffe, oh, no. oh. about to capsize. Oh, she saved it. She saved it. She, she used her bicep to keep down. <laughs> <laughs> she is <laughs> uh, the, the analogy there. She's an incredibly strong woman. She just Uh, she was games. fourth until the last day, I think. But, but. but she, yeah, she definitely got to use her strength there to rescue the boat. A few teams having trouble in these uh, brisker conditions, getting their airways in, and well, we see the boat load up there, and uh, then it got through. So let's uh, let's hope that they pan down to our lead. These uh, Eden Marie, a Denmark 11, they great set uh, and split from their countrymen. Everson and Olsen, and so, uh, they're looking good, right? Yeah, well, we got we got Danes claiming both sides of the course at the moment. We've got Dan 11 going down the left-hand side of the course. Just going for their jibe now. Nice, really so, clean jibe. Great boat handling with these girls. Uh, that's that's really what's kept them at the top of the fleet this first year of racing. And you saw how quickly they made it through the jibe and how smoothly. Um, looking really good right now, okay? Yeah, absolutely. It looks like it's pretty puffy and shifty. They're having a lot of trouble. Going. At the angle they're enough. going, we don't see the lured mark in the distance, so I wonder if they've overstood. It kind of looks like it. They're keeping it pretty lit up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's yeah. you see them heeled over. They're sailing without the boat being perfectly flat. 
that's likely because they're overstood and uh, can't are struggling to actually make it but up. But also, they, they've got a gust that you, you see the finish boat on the left of the screen. They, they just don't have that gust, do they? They're, they're, they're going fast now, and these, these FX spinnakers, uh, they're able to sail a little higher than the 49er guys, so mm. they'll be loving life right now if they can get up to the loop gate. So that, that it looks like they're off and away, and as, as you then it's a matter of will they actually still be on ley line? Are they going to have to drop the kite early before they get to the leeward gate? But it is absolutely neck and neck between the Danish boat in picture and the Danish boat out of picture on the far side. They're coming back on converging jibes. Uh, you can see in the left of screen the yellow mark, and they are definitely overstood. Whereas the other Danes, uh, we can't see in picture. Yeah, so they've gone to drop their spinnaker early. They'll have to sail with two sails into the mark. And my guess is that that will put them back into second place with the other Danes uh, on land. Maneuver right there. They're going to have to head up. There's the other Danes who we saw so wow a split uh, at the very top of the course. They went to different sides and they round almost identical times. Uh, Danes round either mark. We don't we see Kiwis made a huge gain on that run. Yeah, they did. Rounding in third or fourth for sure. The Aussie girls as well. The leaders lost a lot. That next group got right up. Probably at least 100, 100, 100 meters. Wait, with a shift like that on the downwind, I'm assuming it was a shift. Brazilians, so they're in about uh, they're in that second pack that you were talking about. So close, right? Just left the screen. 
Uh, yes, yeah, they are, let's have a look, in third place overall. They made a bit of a, a split away from the pack on the far side. There's, there's a very tightly knit group just out of the picture, just, just right in the picture. Now we are first on water shots uh, up and running, so this is, I'm guessing, we'll get some very close shots of the winter mark when they get now, uh, in about uh, two or three minutes. So that's nice to see. The Brazilians made a big move, though, yeah? They, they've shifted out to the right side of the group, but it doesn't look like it's going to pay off, actually, according to our GPS track, because it looks like this is, uh, this is, this is our leaders, uh, the Brazil, or the Denmark, but we think the pack just behind them, just to the right of the screen, is actually doing better. Oh, no, you're right. Brad. The Brazilians have got a shift on the far right side and are going to challenge them. Well, it certainly didn't look like that for a while. I, I don't know if it's effective. This is, this is the way to put it. So that's, that's the problem. But yeah, they've got an estimated gain there. They've really been good for this shift. We don't have the bird's eye view that we wish we had. I don't think we have the GPS tracker, but visually it's... Well, catch a... Uh, The real battle is in the battle for second right now, isn't it? There's a mass, there's a pack of five boats, and then there's also the Brazilians. And maybe the other camera. Going along really nicely. Really steady, considering how shifty it is. It is flat water, but they have good control of the boat. That was a pretty long left shift that they had. That all the way across. Looks like they never quite got their kite away properly at the at the bottom. That was that was them having to do that late drop and, and then reach up and they didn't get that last armful of kite away, which is why it's flapping around in the breeze there. At the front it's, a, of the boat. it's an issue in the 49 Air effects. There's only two retrieval ports, whereas the 49 has three, so you have to really get it all the way in uh, before before it disappears. The girls have been asked us to increase that to three, and we'll look to get that for the next as soon as we can. But uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of kites spill out the water, uh, the hoisting, and, and it doesn't get away all the way up with sometimes. So. Really nice trapezing style there. I mean, considering how shifty it is and how gusty it is, they're really flat down to the water there. They look really balanced there. The, the crew work with the main and uh, the, the skippers steering were, were pretty in sync there. It was pretty impressive. Choosing the right gate mark. To, uh, oh, I forget that. I'm sure there's nice. that oh, that's right. I forgot. They're wearing our purple jerseys as queens of the downwind. They were the fastest. Fast toys, up. Yeah, fast toys, but not a great set. Well, he's like just like Alan was telling us about a moment ago, they probably had to avoid these starboard tackers. It's probably a deep enough angle mm. that uh, that uh, they probably couldn't bear away quite as far as they want to, uh, having to avoid the boat. So it's actually tricky. Everyone's going around. These are our uh, series leaders, Maloney and Meach, round in second place, and then Eda and Marie having a pinch up to let uh, Olivia Price and Caitlin Elks in at the mark. They're in third place. And you can see oh. how difficult it is to bear away. Ian and Marie do get the bear away in over top, so they pass to get into third place. Uh, and then the Brazilians, in a high lane there, they're going to try and roll uh, Olivia Price as well. So a really tight battle. Olivia Price is going to lose two spots here on that oh, voice. She tacks in late and at uh, no speed. A uh, really difficult spot, and both the other girls who came in on port took advantage of that. Well, they, uh, they all want that side now, don't they? They're obviously something big happened down the previous run, oh, yeah. and, they, and they really like that inshore side of, of the run. Yeah, we've only seen one team so far go to the other <laughs> This is our overall leaders, uh, Sarah Steyer and Julie Bassard. Oh, oh, right here. Oh. This is uh, the finish, uh, Celia Caverna and uh, uh, Sinem Kirpi and Celia Caverna. Celia Caverna, bronze medalist from the last Olympics. Actually, all the match racing team are here. Let's watch the bear away. They, they've got a long way past the mark. Yeah, they, and that, oh, that's the sign of a, a team that uh, hasn't been sailing the boat for too long. Yeah, they definitely took their time to get that bear away in safely. Um, with that. So, you know, it, it, which it, to be expected, only two and a half months in the boat. That, it, it is, uh, but this, this, this was someone that was has been leading the regatta and, and was leading the regatta. And, and they're struggling in this group. You can tell by the way they're standing in the boat. They're not that used to it yet. We just saw um, the, uh, the Singapore girls do a 360 right before the wind remark. That's a painful spot to do it. Okay, so they got the, they did get their spinnaker up safely. I imagine uh, every time that happens in this kind of breeze, that's still a victory for them. Um, let's see how hard they can push the boat and if they can make it through their jive uh, to keep, uh, you know, they're mid-fleet still, so that'll be a keeper. If they can get through with uh, mid-fleet finishes today, I bet you they'll be happy with themselves, especially if the breeze continues to build. Lovely jive we saw with the black spinnaker there on the right-hand side of picture, the Italians in third overall at the moment.
beautiful part right now too. Put up beautiful O lane. That yeah, game, making really good games in that buff. Which boat was that? Yeah, the black the Italian boat on the right hand side. Yeah. Julia, I think. Yeah, Julia Conti, Francesca Klapic. Well, the breeze has definitely come up even during this race. You can tell the, the buffs, the darker uh, fits on the water, have become much more visible. And so our cameraman's going to chase up on the lead group now. Oh. How long have these girls been sailing the boat? I mean, no. The overall leaders, Sarah Stared and Julie Bassard, have just started in July. They're, they're, Julie or Sarah was teaching school until the uh, school year was over, and uh, Julie is an engineer. Wow. So the FX rig uh, has been available to the girls since the oh, first yeah. one. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, yeah. I think they got released November, December time, so no one in the fleet has more than 10 months experience. That they're, they're, they're getting there fairly quickly. I mean, a lot of these girls have been doing a lot of training. They're becoming uh, quite proficient. Pretty impressive to watch. So, coming, so down Dan, to coming down to the finish line, uh, they're, probably, they're probably, oh no, I'm going to have to go, right? It's getting close, though. Absolutely. And the, the Danes are really showing their class in this breeze. It, it looks oh, so great. great. We got a finish line image. This is the girls crossing the finish line. Look at that. They're really looking good. Really looking comfortable in the boat handling. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, second place. Oh no, third. Second place. That'll be uh, Eden Marie in Denmark. Eleven. Third place uh, of Molly Maloney and uh, Alex Maloney. Alex Maloney, 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 Maloney Meach. Meach. So uh, these uh, these are three of the top four boats. The, the 2012 Europeans. Europeans now in the breeze, showing their form, uh, able to reach the top uh, uh, with their boat handling skills. And there we go. Uh, also, uh, Martine Grail with the Seiko Spinnaker there. She was second of the Europeans. So the top four boats of the Europeans are all in the top five in this race, which uh, if they get three more of, will push them all to the top of the standings as, the, as uh, we kind of expected coming into this week. It does make you wonder if there's going to be more of a pattern emerging now that we're getting into stronger wins, because all those teams you mentioned all did really well in Denmark. And they're all training together. These girls are all becoming pretty good friends. Uh, Alex Maloney went and hung out with uh, and, and, uh, they went and hung out with uh, the Dutch after the Europeans for two weeks, and then when I got here this time, they were training with the Brazilians. Uh, the Danes all train together. So all these teams, uh, you know, they've got the smiles on their faces the whole time they're sailing, and, uh, and they're hanging out. Uh, Outside of regattas as well, which is nice. Yeah, they're leading the charge. Julia yeah. Conti, we saw her lit up uh, halfway down the run. Looks like she picked up a couple boats to get through in the top ten. She's going to be coming in just. And this is of the, the leader, Sarah Stair. Yeah. yeah. So they've made it through the finish line upright. That's nice for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, guys, you can tell so much about how comfortable someone is by their body stance in a forty-nine. Absolutely. <laughs> And and we, and we saw the way the the Danes stood up as they as they won that race. They just looked really comfortable, just yeah, yeah. really light on their feet. Yeah, you can see coming out of that last jive, they're perfectly comfortable and just hanging, hanging on the wires for a second, slid right into the boat. Really comfortable, really smooth. They've obviously got a lot of practice in the breeze. There goes Anna Tunnicliffe going across the line. Brad, how comfortable is Anna with the boat at this stage? Um, well, I think she's got less time in the boat than most of the girls at this point in the quad because she spent half of her time on the CrossFit stuff. So she's, she's balancing her life between the CrossFit and the 49 But I think this regatta is showing her that she needs to start spending more time in the boat with Molly. But, but do you think the CrossFit is helping as well? Oh, I mean, the physical part's there, you know, and then you, 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 you mentally last so much longer on a day like this, towards the end of the, the day, making the, the right decisions around the racetrack. Um, but, uh, you know... There's no substitute for boat handling in a 49. There's, there's no substitute, and, and, you know, with her strength, you know, a lot of girls would, would rather uh, to have her strength uh, as a crew, you know. Um, but she's, um, yeah, anyway. She's balancing her time. She's enjoying the CrossFit, so you, you yeah, know, she's, 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 she's balance doing something she likes, and it's still three and a half, three years from the Olympic Games, exactly. which she's aiming for. So it's nice to do something else for a while. Yeah. But she will have to polish up, uh, as I'm sure she knows. And maybe all these other girls that are leading the charge, and uh, they're getting the development in, and then she'll, uh, you know, let them figure it out, and then she'll try to copy them, and then just go the right way, and then beat them, beat them later in the quad. She's been at the front of many a fleet, so she doesn't need to learn how to do that. Uh, well, we saw at the beginning of the week that she was doing as well as she's ever done in 49er racing earlier this week in the lighter stuff where the boat handling didn't come into it. So she's got the sailing skills, there's no question of that. And she will pick up the, uh, oh, we've got a capsize. That's a 
That's the uh, Singapore. Singapore is yeah, it? that's Grizzy up on the center board and Sarah Tan pulling down the spinnaker. And then she'll swim around and the two of them will get that up as quick as they can. We saw them yeah. having to do a 360 ahead of the winter mark, so they're having a tough one. They, they look out of sorts in this weather, don't they? They were leading up for the first two days. They surprised a lot of people with their performance. And, and you can hear that breeze in the trees. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really coming big. up more and more. You can see it on the video. It's coming up and uh, one more race for the girls, right? They need to get through. Uh, two, well, two more two races. More. Two more schedules, two more races. but oh, the race committee has uh, has the ability to do whatever they want because uh, we do expect to get two windy to sail later today, so we have to share the course between the men and the women. Uh, so the race committee will do uh, will do what they see fit. Uh, I'm sure they'll be getting at least one more in. And uh, on screen is our French commentary team. Uh, Olivier has been leading us. He's on the left there. And uh, Tom, are you going to flip to us? So Brad, I'm wondering how much does moth sailing help with 49er sailing in terms of um, sunny angles and, and apparent wind and things like that? Well, that's an interesting question. It, it, it does uh, definitely play a role in how you sail the boat. The skill sets are similar um, for a skipper steering and the, the apparent wind that you have in, in the main. Um, it's obviously not quite as much as the moth. Um, and then also just the balance and agility. You know, we both have wings. The boat uh, still feels light on your feet, you know, when you're going through jives and tacks. So, um, just the balance, is the agility, um, and processing information, you know, um, just the whole thing, you know. It's the same skill sets as any other boat, but uh, Moth kind of is the accelerated version. And then, so is then sort of you like slow down. The bullet then time is the matrix, is it? You, you get uh, of it's in it. I can get down to the metaphysical part or the, the quantum mechanic part if you want. I mean, really, if you can process information faster, then everything else is slower. If you do, you know, so you go to Moth, you process, and then it's easy. Then you go to 49er, and then everything is slower motion. You feel like you have more time, and in reality, your reality, you actually do. And what about laser sailing? Uh, well, that's even, slower than that. Slower. <laughs> so, you, so, so, so those guys are processing information yeah. really slowly. <laughs> That Tom well, looks like he was processing information on okay, no. the American side. Well, you, you gotta, I mean, I also, if you, another way to compare uh, moth sailing to 49er is, I think tactically you get uh, a 49er over here, you get a, uh, let's say, 49er over here, or a laser over here, moth over here, and then 49er is in the middle, tactically. So you get a little bit of each. Uh, as you know, in the laser, you tack on the little ships, but then 49er you can't. And then the moth is also extreme, where you don't want to tackle little stuff as well. Uh, go fast. So 49 is kind of in between, depending on the breeze, tactically, is my perception of both. So, yeah. yeah. And, and then you switch to the month next month, do you, for the World Championships? Yeah, in Hawaii, uh, all the boats are arriving this week. Um, Started seeing pictures so. on the internet of guys taking their Mach 2s out of boxes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Looks so like you guys have a lot of fun as a fleet. Oh, it's great. I mean, even the guys that are, you know, maybe not doing the best in the, in the race, they're still giggling going downwind. They're still, you know, yelling at yelling at the guys going downwind on the crosses, just, you know, hooting, hollering, and everything, having a blast. Um, and it's in Hawaii, the world. So if you can't have a fun time doing that, then you need to probably do something else. So, so yeah, they're all having a blast. Well, we're going to take a break until we get going for the next race. So I make it 11:33 local time. We will be back with you at 11.40, so in about seven minutes from now. So we'll see you back then. Thanks, guys. That was fun. Well, if you want to come back again. Yeah, anytime. It's because we're on a break.
Okay, so we're just a minute away from the third start today for the 49er FX girls. So the breeze is still up and we're looking like we're going to have another nice windy race coming in here. So Ben, how's it gone in the scores? It's a critical stage in the regatta. The, the top nine goes straight through to the finals for tomorrow. So it's all about making the top nine today, right? Yeah, we, we the, now that the breeze is up, we, the breeze has been quite high. Tommy, Tom's working on the scoreboard, I imagine. We've seen that uh, the favorites have all managed to, uh, had a good race last race. So we saw uh, Hanson and Everson. We saw Martin Grail, uh, Nelson and Olsen, uh, Maloney and Meath. They all were the top group that race. And uh, But they're only mid-pack in overall. So if we look at the scoreboard, is it up yet, Tom, or no? Is the sport up? They're just getting going. That's so it. Now That's the start. Really, really oh, general recall. Okay. Really crowded on that committee boat end. They clearly want the right hand side. Must be a wind shift. Did you see the angle they're coming off the start? Yeah. Yeah. Probably wind shift right from the start. Everyone's general recall. Yeah, the guys in the boat would be close to making the mark. Yeah. And so I want to say we, with us we have again. Thank you, Brad, coming back. Harry Bethway just joined us. Welcome, Thank you, Harry. Harry. Where are you from, Harry? Sydney, Australia. And, and that uh, surname, that's pretty familiar to anyone who sells a I hope so, thought. <laughs> his father as the designer, his grandfather as the... Dad did above the waterline, and my grandfather did below the waterline. So the one story there. So which bit do you do? I just sort of pull strings, really. <laughs> so here you are, is this your first video you know, This is just my third. I've done oh, Ghana, okay. I've done the Bahamas, and now this will be my third one. Marseille, France. How's it going for you? Uh, it's been ups and downs this regatta. We had, um, this was a short qualifying series that Marseille sort of other everything or nothing. Um, we had a mass break in race three. Oh, yes, race three, and that sort of gave us. Which knocked you out of race four as well. Which race, not race four and race five, so the five race qualifying series, the two thirty four places are sort of. Uh, <laughs> certainly is. Andy, we've got the results ready to go online, so why don't we show, uh, okay. we show everyone at home uh, the results table, and uh, why don't we go through it, uh, we've got, we're down to so, about five minutes to go to the next guys. So we've got plenty of time to just set up the whole scenario, what's happening, both with our leadership battle, and then also the battle for night. So the locals will be pleased to know that it's the French team, Stout and Bossard, that remain in the league, even though they only got an 11th in that last race. Uh, the key was Maloney and Meech, they got a third in that last race, that was the second and they're only a point off the lead. So really it's very tight for those top two teams to match the key. Third place, we have Dutch In fourth place, they dropped a place, uh, Conti and Klapsic. And then in fifth place, Peter and Groves, they, they didn't have a great race, they were 13th in their race, so they dropped down to the bottom. Now, Gertzok and Lawrence from Germany, see much of them in the last race, but they got a 12. In uh, seventh place, they were second in, the, in that last race, that lifts them up, uh, the Danes, Dane, Denmark 11, Nielsen and Olsen, up to seventh overall, but we still expect better of them, and I wonder if we will do in these stronger wins. In eighth place, it's Olivia Price and Kate and Alps, they were fifth in that last race, and the winner of the, uh, the winner of the previous race is now in 10th overall, that's the other Danish boat, Hansen and Iverson. And we were talking about Anatoly Klepp and Molly, uh, Molly Vandermeer, they were 15th in that race, they're now 11th overall, so they just drop out of the top 10. And, it, and it's, all, it's all about being in the top 9, that's, that's the, the key thing. So uh, at the moment in 9th We've got enough time, let's just go through the whole group here and see who's still going to be in contention points wise. Okay, so in terms of making this cut for the top nine, if we look at seventh place, that's 68 points, that's the Danish Denmark 11, then both on 72 points we have the Aussies and the Brazilians, and then on in tenth place, 74 points, we have Hansen and Everson, so at the moment, Hansen and Everson just two points outside of the, that crucial top nine. And that's those four boat group that we saw do really well in that race. Personally, I expect them all to do well in this race coming up. 
So the battle for ninth could get very crowded. We don't know if we'll have one more race for the girls or two. They're scheduled for two, but if the race committee gets nervous that there isn't enough time to get racing in for the men as well, uh, we might see them cut it down to only one race. And everyone here wants to make the top nine. If you don't make the top nine, you get put in the petit final, and you've got to fight your way in. Only one boat from the petit final gets into the, the main final. So you're right about that, Ben. A lot of these sailors from 7th to 11th are, are really some of, the, some of the best strong wind sailors. And so, yeah, a bit, a bit of French background noise there. Yeah, they're all over the place. We're, we're in the middle of a, a canoeing centre here, so we're not everyone's quite tuned in to, to, to what we're tuned in on here. But the point you make, Ben, we've got some strong wind specialists, maybe not even specialists, just some of the, the, the best all-rounders that are enjoying this, this better breeze, where we've, we've seen some of the light wind specialists doing well at the beginning of the week. Maybe they're going to drop down the order and, and drop out of the, the ranking for the, for the top nine. Well, if we, look, if we look at... Girls who, uh, I think they are really good in the light stuff and the breeze. There's yeah. a few teams that actually can transition well. Yeah. There's a few teams, and, and but we'd expect maybe... Uh, none of the top group are people you wouldn't expect to do well in the But I would say that bunch, uh, both both the both the Danish teams, uh, we expect them to do well in the breeze. So there's only so many people that can be in the top five. Yeah. And uh, and everyone else has you know, got to fill in the rest of the spaces. And with the points so tight, um, uh, this, could, this could make for an epic battle. And, and it's an even tougher because we don't know, uh, we don't know whether we're going to have one race or two. We're, we're just coming up to one minute to the start line. Let's Flag starts, so let's uh, let's get uh, looking at the racing here. We can see again a very crowded committee boat end. We wouldn't expect to see a general recall this time with the black flag. No one will want to pick up an over early now. Um, you can see our timer stuck at one minute because that'll sync with the black flag going down. We've got a great view of it, so we'll all be able to count down together. And, it, uh, and there it is right there. So what beauty, our countdown timer starts. What do you think is going on on the left hand side between the French, the, the Brits, and the Danes? They're, they're all above the lay line for the committee boat. There we see them bear away. Two of them decided they weren't going to make it. So, oh, they're just Nielsen and Olsen, probably the boat, that, boat handlers out there. They just did a, a bear away and then stuffed themselves in there and they're going to try and hold that first boat position. Coming up to 30 seconds to go, and I'm always staggered how these teams can just hold their position. So what are the Brazilians doing? Uh, uh, Postponement post flag's gone up. So we saw it looked like it was still really the breeze is right, and I guess we're gonna have to move the window marks yet again or something. Uh, David Campbell James, our race officer, wasn't happy with that start line. So it looked like the breeze had shifted right, and it was going to be very pretty boat, and we were maybe sailing up to the mark and start attacking the go. Some of the third or like fourth big shift we've seen today, where he's had to readjust the course. So uh, it was obviously quite a bit. Happening. Is it near? It does feel like the breeze has come down a little bit. Actually, it might be uh, a little bit, little transition before this next big wave. It's supposed to get quite windy later. Okay. It might be one of the, the last few light air bands for. It's wind up, minutes. and we're not hearing the wind go through the trees like we were for a bit. So uh, doesn't doesn't look particularly windy on the water. Either. Yeah. So they, they might try to get the two more for the girls. Is what I'm thinking right now. What are you thinking? Yeah, uh, completely agree. I mean, um, yeah, hope for the girls' sake they can get the races off. But uh, everyone wants a fair race, so everyone knows Paul Campbell James does a great job and trust in him, so whatever he everything's fair, I'm sure the sailors agree as well. The Aussies always used to be great in the breeze, is that still the case? Is that still what the Aussies prefer? For sure, you don't get too many light days back at home around this time of year, so I'm sure the girls are looking forward to, uh, you know, well, we're hoping good results for them anyway, I'm sure they're expecting good for themselves in this breeze. So, so a lot of your girls have moved over from match racing. They won a silver medal last year, and here yeah. they are. So we have um, Olivia, who won the silver medal in the match racing. Then you have, and the next one was Tess Parkinson, who got the gold medal in Beijing in the 470. And then Nina, who is a Sheehan for uh, Olivia in the match racing as well. As well, silver medal. Sailing so. with Haley. Sailing with Haley Outreach, back in sister. Now, do any of them live in the same city and get to train with each other, or are they all in different parts of Australia? Uh, Tessa are in Chelsea, both live in Perth. Olivia's in Sydney and Caitlin's in Perth. And then Nina's Sydney and Haley's Newcastle, so that's about a two hour drive. So it's, it's a big old country, place, and big country, even though it's all the, you know, what were really the stars of sailing. Yeah. They, they don't get the, like the Danes all live together, the Germans all live together, and they get to train together. These girls kind of have to do it on their own, or with the men in their various uh, cities. It's a different setup. Yeah, it's funny. It's the same with the boys at the moment as well. Uh, really, Nathan and Goobs live quite close, but everyone else is either 
Melbourne and Perth, or Melbourne, Coffs Harbour, so it's quite a bit of a variation happening at the moment. So it's, it's interesting to see, but um, I think everyone's happy with how they've been going, so obviously it's working. Well, it's similar, similar for you, Brad, isn't it? I mean, in the, in the yeah. States, it's quite, it's quite common for uh, Olympic teams to live on opposite sides of the country. And fly yeah, together. well, you know, air travel is a great thing. That makes it happen. Within a day, you're already training together. And, you know, girlfriends, wives got to deal with it for a week or two to get some good training in. But uh, just like Harry was saying, it, you know, you, uh, you make it work and, and get together and make your, make your strides and then go home and reconnect, you know, it's kind of life with uh, Olympic sailors. I think Haley's had it even maybe tougher in some ways, but she's making it work because Nina's been doing the uh, with, doing the catamaran. Doing the macro as well. Doing the yeah. macro as well, so she's only got uh, Nina for a certain Nina period of time. Nina, you know, certain period of time. Nina's been over here since, I think, met him late. done the, the macros and back to the 49ers, done that for a little while, and back to the macro, uh, back to Holland for the macro world, so she's had, um, yeah, and Haley's been sailing, she said she's been going out with blokes as, uh, as crews so that she can get the time on uh, steering. Yeah, well I mean, pretty well. there's no shortage of sailors in Australia, luckily, so mm -hmm. when we go back home, there's, um, you know, there's always someone to go sailing with, so, yeah, I mean, we all get on pretty well together as a team, so... Not a lot of places can say that, you know, oh, just jump in and grab another 49er helm yeah. to, to go with me. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. happen States. in any places. They've got all the 18-footer experience exactly, and lots yeah. of other skiff experience. So well, that's pretty cool. That sense, yeah. Well, it, it's the birth of skiff sailing, really, isn't it? Well, Sydney is where it all started, and, um, you know, none more, none more so than because of your family, really. Yeah, I mean, the adding footers have been a part of the, the Bethway history, I guess, growing up. Um, when Dad was in the 18s, yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I, mean, I guess until now, really, it's probably one of, the, in my opinion, one of the biggest uh, stages for progression in sport until really we got to the America's Cup and 90 foot trauma as we're flying around soft wings, also in a slow down period. But yeah, the 18s one of those great development classes, I guess, to push the sport to where they are. And what about experimenting with hydrofoils on skiffs and adding 40 miners? What's happened there so far? Um, I mean, once uh, it was going pretty well for a while, and then yes, politics took over a little bit and couldn't slow it down. But you know, that's really sure we'll get back into it once we get the chance. But um, yeah, we've got several things to play at the moment, so I think once they slow down, then we'll have some time to get back to it. Hopefully, we'll have some fun and we we'll try with it. Uh, so you've done a bit of playing in the 49er? Yeah, I was the, the test dummy for it. <laughs> Whether it was on the, the mold as a speedboat, the foils on the front with my grandfather, and then when we stuck it on the boat, it was quite a lot of fun as well until I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> At least it didn't break you, though. No, no. It was well, sitting quite comfortably before it broke. So there's another one which is uh, in the mix, but hasn't been trialled, and hasn't been trialled for a long time now. So uh, Other things on the pot. Other things, yeah. I'm still, I guess. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You've got a very creative father, so uh, he's off to one thing and then uh, off to another, and it, you know, there's so many projects in the air. That's it. So only a certain number of things can take. So many hours in the day. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to meet him. I'm sure, I, I got a great boat. Yeah. So, yeah. So he my almost first came here. Boat, and it's it's a great boat. We expected him to be here, but he changed his mind a couple of weeks ago, and it's yeah, nice to meet him. Yeah, as you said, it's only so many hours in a day. I'm sure we'd love to be in uh, sunny Marseille, but. So he tries to join us at least once a year. Yeah, exactly. So, which is great. Can we see what's going on with the flags here? Looks to me like uh, maybe the orange is up. So we got about six minutes at least till the next start. Um, should we take a little break until we get close to the Yeah, let's, let's take another break. We'll come back in about four minutes from now. Yeah. Just a couple of minutes past the hour, and then we'll pick up just as they're getting into their oh, new sequence. Hold on a second, they just put up the flag they just put up. Uh, I don't think station. No. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, we'll let's take, take a we'll break. We're taking a break, we'll be back in about four minutes' time.
Part of race three for the 49er FX women. It's uh, coming to the sharp end of qualifying, Ben. It's all about getting into the top nine. We've got 20 boats out there, all of them extremely good, but it's about making the cut for the top nine to get into tomorrow's final. Yeah, there's uh, there's a really tightly packed bunch of girls from seventh to about 11 who can all be in the top nine, and the top nine go automatically straight to the final tomorrow. The rest of the fleet goes to the petit final of which then only one more makes it into the final so these next this next race so these next two races depending on how many they're able to get off uh, will really set teams up differently for how they get going uh, not only is it about qualifying though it's also about the regatta win here we've got a really tight battle uh, for the podium places Sarah Stayart from France is in uh, first place overall but only what two points behind we it looks like they're just getting going and off they go. Will this be a clear start this time? There's two clear cracks there. There's a, there was a, uh, a boat super favorite, huh? good start from Eden Marie, Denmark 11 right at the boat. That's Italy 747 is Julia Conti, Conti. Yeah, and great Francesca Klapkic. Uh, Australia 848, Olivia Price, another good start. Uh, Francis Peters, GBR 121. Uh, a little bit of chop there, she had to go around, and actually, she looks like she's now fallen into Celia Lettinen and Michaela Wolf, Finland 125. Singapore off the line really well, Singapore 9396. That is uh, Grizzy Kung and Sarah Tan, and then Anna Tunnicliffe, USA 816. And France, our, our uh, leaders overall, 871, Sarah Stayart and Julie Brossard. So, that's a pretty good punch out. Look at the look at very the good, very good punch oh. out for the Finnish team. Yeah, Finn good one, speed two, five. They've only been sailing this boat a little bit. They were students all winter. Lots of the sailing and skiff experience. So uh, he's a twenty nine world champion. But uh, we haven't seen pace from them like this just yet. They've they've really taken that start well. They really have. But she she would be someone that I would I would see as vying for the medals in three years time at Rio twenty sixteen. Celia Latham, already a bronze medalist a year ago in match racing, but but as you said, already a great skiff sailor in her own right. Yeah, she's they're, it's a little bit lighter. They took a header and some light, and they uh, I don't think they went back. Maybe someone was pinning them on their hips. They weren't able to take advantage of the shift, um, so they just carried on. But it uh, looks like they're through now. And uh, you must know Celia pretty well, Brad. She was training partners with uh, Anna. Yeah, I know they worked really well together. In the LA. So that's Julia Conti, she's tacked out. Um, we saw a pretty even track last time. We saw people going right and left. So as long as you're sailing in clear air in the puffs and getting some shifts, we expect a lot of different routes to, be to, to get to the top of this uh, mark well, don't we? We do, but as Brad Funk just said, that it was very right-hand favored coming off the line, and it seems like the, the trend and the reason why we waited for this race to get away is that the breeze has gone right by quite a big margin. Yeah, we've got totally different uh, angles now the, from, the com from, the, from our fixed position camera angle. So uh, we get a different view of the race, which is nice. It'll uh, be nice to the downwind, too. They'll be coming out. So the and, uh, look at the, these folks doing a pack of ribs, unfortunately. Um, as all the coaches uh, go around the side of the course. There we go, back up at the front. Sarah Stairs uh, stayed in her lane. Well, we saw a bunch of the boats drop out, but uh, she's not doing well. And she looks like she's actually made up a bit of ground on, on the Finnish team. Celia Leighton and then Michaela Wolf. And it particularly impresses me just how well France 871 is, is going because they're new to the 49er effects, all the girls are of course, but they're new to skiff sailing and only three months in. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the lateral separation is between these boats. So hard to do uh, with these tight angles, but they're, they're close on the, they're close. So this is a, this is a true battle for the lead in the race, isn't it? It is. That's a real tuning one there between the, the Finns and the French right there. And then we see the boats on, on the, the far left-hand side. This is a little farther behind. Uh, there we go. Back to the battle of the lead. That's nice to see. Um, French continues to, to score forward on them, huh? Yeah, and, and you wonder if the Finns had to tack away because of uh, getting, needing some clear air. Or well, they're tacking away tactically. But either way, the French look like they're pretty fast. Yeah, the, certainly the French men's teams have always been fast. Manny Diem and Stefan Christie are as fast as anyone. They came forth at the last Olympics. And if they've taken that know-how uh, and experience and uh, passed it on to, to Sarah and Julie, then you, it's no surprise that uh, they'll be fast as well. Of course, very experienced sailors in their own right, even though they're new to the 
49er FX, uh, world champion radial sailor, plus Sarah, and a very experienced match racer, with Julie. So uh, that plus speed is a deadly combination. Yeah, great campaigners, great experience, and, and, and great background in, in French hmm. skiff sailing. Big left shift they're in as well. Looks like they rode that right right shift off the lawn all the way over and then hit it into a nice lefty. Looks like the fleet should be spreading out quite quite nicely now. Yeah. Already on the first beat. Maybe some local experience coming into play as well here. Uh, we, we said before that we haven't seen this direction for the regatta at all, and uh, and neither have we seen it in the month of training that people have been hanging out in Marseille. So the French might have a bit of an advantage being the only ones who have ever sailed in this condition uh, before here, and they are, if, they, if that's the case, they certainly look like they're extending away. Um, we'll see how the shifts come in though. There's uh, there's not going to be there's going to be more than one shift in the speed, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. At the moment, very much a left-hand trend. That seems to be what's favoring the French moment leading this race with Francis Peters and Nicola Groves in middle of the picture in second place. They're from Great Britain. Still, um, and only recently uh, got going full time in the, in the boat. Uh, Francis Peters, she's won the youth championships in the 20th. So again, she, she has a, a great background in skip sailing and so has taken to the 49er FX very quickly. And she probably wouldn't have done Olympic campaign if there wasn't a 49er FX. That interested in sending other types of boat. This is what she wanted to do. It's the perfect boat for her. I talked to her brother yesterday a little bit about that. They uh, had battles for years and years together in the 29er, and now both have graduated up to the senior fleets and are doing very well. Look at the difference in angles between uh, Celia on the, or is that to Francis Peters on the right, and Sarah Stay on the left. Sarah Stay was able to stay nice and high, and uh, Francis Peters got a header and had to tack underneath that pack of boats. So, yeah. Sarah actually sailing a different wind than the rest. She's, she's extended so much already that she's uh, managed to get a few extra puffs and you can see it looks like she's sailing into a, another puff right now. So. Well, that's a, a nice spot then because that's exactly what the tracking is telling us, that the boats on the left that, that were leading the, the French and the British may be still leading but not, by nothing like as much because it's headed badly for them. So it is shifting around. There's Francis Peters just tacking and there's the Dutch just tack tacking on that. They must here. reckon they're all in the way line here. The, uh, the squeaking in the background is one of the sailors just getting ready to launch here. Sarah Stair, let's see if she can tack and do a left-handed bear away. Um, and she goes around, no problem. It's a little bit lighter than we've seen with this shift and with the change. Oh, and there we see Ida and Marie, uh, Denmark 11. Oh, so they've beat the French around. So what, what was the boat we saw go around? Was that the Italians? Sure. Because we are there in second, and, or a second behind Ida Marie on this side. And Ida Marie goes straight set, straight into a jibe, actually. Beautiful uh, jibe. Very tricky maneuver that they pulled off beautifully. Oh, so it was the Italians, Julia Conti and Francesca Klapkic, uh, rounded first and went the right gate. And uh, hopefully our camera pans back, and I think we'll see they a lot a of great things job. Way. They did a great job at the top of that beat. It looked like uh, the French girl, what was her name again? Sarah Stair. Sarah Stair. It looked like she was launched, but it ended up uh, caving in a little at the top. Julia was able to chop the, the last bit right in half, huh? Yeah, she got, yeah. Julia got that, those last couple... Uh, there go the French shifts right. Very here. wide trapezing stance downwind. Not as nearly as comfortable as you can You can tell how slick uh, both the other teams round looks. Uh, really good boat handling there. Okay, the, the good battle for the lead here. Oh, what's... Uh, oh, jiving, okay. So, jiving on the shifts. So the Italian's looking very fast down the far side of the course there. Ida and Marie might be a little uh, a little gun shy after overstanding on the first downwind last race. Uh, it is shifty, so maybe they're going to play a little more down the middle than they did the first time. But it's good to see them up in the top pack again. We talked about how important it is to get into the top nine, and they're one of the teams that needed a good result here to ensure that they get in the top nine. With a place like this, you'd expect them to get through, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. And they were seventh going into the day, and they're having a good day today, so maybe even in the top three by the end of the day if they keep on sailing like this. But but also great for the Italians who have been, I think they were fourth after the, after that last race. They've been sitting in the top three for a good part of the week. The Italians looking really strong, so also making it a good play for the overall world title. I've got to head out, guys. Got to rig up. Brad, Brad good luck with us. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Have fun, guys. All right. You too.
There's the Italians going for their jibe. Not nearly as slick as Eden Marie's. Two jibes have been. Look how flat and fast Eden Marie look. Uh, the Italians are still high up in their traps as they come out of their jibe and have to uh, get set. So it'll be interesting to see who manages to pull off the cross here. And uh, it looks tight, doesn't it, Andy? It, it does look tight, but, but actually, uh, for, for all the boat handling differences, I wonder if the Italians are, are actually making a gain on the far side of the course. Let's now move on to the battle for second place, probably, on the downwind. We've got uh, New Zealand, 16, that's uh, Alex Molly and Caitlin Alex, uh, and Olivia Price is the Australia 848, and Francis Peters, uh, GBR 121, all pushing pretty hard downwind. Uh, Olivia Price and Caitlin Alex were looking really lit up down there, looking good. Uh, Alex and Molly go for their jibe. Let's see if the Brazilians cross. They do. So that's Martine Grail and Kaina Kunz, uh, Maseko branded boat there. And uh, now we get to move to the leeward marks. Ooh, a bit of a sloppy jibe from the Danes. But it looks like the Danes are going to be in the lead. Can't see the Italians at the, the moment. The Italians overstood, I think. So they probably were way overstood. Uh, had to douse their spinnaker early because they might have been going to another mark on the course. There's a lot of race courses out here. They were well outside according to the GPS. Oh, late douse from the Danes. They had to just go deep there. But they do, wow, they turn the corner really nicely. They're good patience from the helm. Edith. It's so easy to stick it in, isn't it, to, yeah. to capsize on, on that rounding. Italians not doing too badly. No, they've done well. Got, they've got through. They had to take down early. So we saw Pete, a pass for the lead there. Oh. And that's Olivia Price in third place coming around the mark. Francis Peters Late in fourth drop place. There. Late drop for the Aussies with a pink Jenica. And Francis Peters tucks inside. You're right, they've dropped the main sheet on the Aussie boat. And now uh, Lost two Alex, places there. Alex and uh, Get that jib Molly. in. Got to get the jib in. So they just they just left themselves far too much to do there. Brazilians it's coming around in sixth place, and here's Sarah Stair. What's well, she's keeping it upright. Sarah yeah. Stair, yeah, she's keeping it upright. Uh, we thought that she. Oh, it's not a great rounding. Yeah, it's not a great rounding. You know what? If she keeps top tens in a windy day like this, she'll stay in contention for the championship, which I'm sure will her goal at the beginning of the day. Yeah, although we're in for more breeze tomorrow as well, right? It's going to be Strong. a breezy day tomorrow. Now we hear, oh, the capsize, just yeah. tell us. Oh, there's a capsize, yeah. There's yeah. another capsize. Can't see who that is at the moment. Yeah, so the guys are telling us there's a few capsizes. Actually, we can see a couple overturned boats, so uh, the breeze is on. The, the breeze is truly on now. There's Antonia Cliff, she made it around. A lot of, a lot of capsize boats, though. I don't know if all of those are in this race. Yeah, right? you're seeing some background boats Looks for like some it other could courses. Be French leaders and Canada 120. Okay. So we're getting word here that we think the French leaders may have capsized in this race, uh, which would certainly be a blow to their championship uh, contention. We're, no, we're not picking that up yet on our GPS, though. We're picking up that they've rounded and headed back up end. Yeah, I, I, so, I think that uh, wide we'll, we'll, trapezing stance is standing them in good stead. Better to trapeze wide and, uh, and stay upright than look cool and capsize. There we go. Our cameraman's doing a great job here of uh, panning up through the entire fleet so we can see them all. Looks like they've all kept on port on starboard. Um, and we'll see just how big the lead is of uh, so Ida and Marie. That is a big lead. You know who we haven't seen yet is uh, Hansen and Everson from Denmark, 136. That's true. They're one That's of the true. boats that oh, is also in contention for making it straight through the final. And, uh, they've capsized. Oh, you think they've capsized. Okay, so we're getting word that... Uh, along with Netherlands 131. So a couple capsizes in this race. And to be honest, if it's Poland, it's, just gonna be, it's sure to be that there'll be more. Yeah, and you can you can really feel it now. It's yeah. really blowing through the, the studio, the outdoor <laughs> studio here. <laughs> Look at that lead that Ida and Marie have got. They only rounded you know two or three seconds ahead of the Italians. Yeah, and, uh, they're, they're really showing their class here. Beautiful tack. Well, it's been it's been a bit one tracked as well. I wonder if it's gone even further right and actually there's not much to do on port tack anymore. Could be the case. It it, it just could be that. Uh, Really, it's the leaders just stretching out because there's there's not many tactical plays for the boats from behind. Also, uh, as the breeze gets up and the boat handling gets trickier, everyone just kind of, especially the leaders, they just lock in, minimize maneuvers. If everyone's in the same area, they're all happy. Just go up wind, keep it safe. The windier uh, it gets, the slower attack is. So you know, it's a more expensive maneuver. The windier the breeze. So so there you see the Italians having to go a little bit further and tack up on the hip of the Danes to maintain their clear air. They still look very comfortable. So well within that boat handling range, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Julia Conti, 470 Olympic representative, Francesca Capsic, I think she may have been the representative in the radial. 
So, two experienced Olympic campaigners. And they've been at it pretty solid since the FX was announced. They came to Miami and spent the month there. Great place to be in the winter, especially if you want to work on things for a solid block of time. Uh, really fun girls. These girls are smiling every time you see them. Really enjoying the way the, the, sale, the campaign's going. So that's uh, fun. And then we got Francis Peters and Nicola Groves, GBR 121. We think they're in uh, three, third or fourth I place. Third place. Yeah. They, uh, they didn't have the best first race today, but they uh, won a good race today. They were fourth to start the day, so they'll be in contention here. I think they'll be loving this breeze. They're not that heavy, but they are great boat handlers. They, they just love the breeze. And Francis Peters, she, she was probably the best 29er sailor in, in the UK, men and women. I mean, she, she can race around with the best of the men in skiff sailing. And we have confirmation that Sarah Sterrett and Julie Brassard have indeed kept it upright and are still racing uh, within the top number of boats here. We can see them at uh, France 871, put getting their tack in. And uh, so we see uh, Aussie 484, uh, 848 rather, Olivia Price and Caitlin that's right up there as well in the top five. And just in the far distance, you can see the windward gate they're going to set uh, about 100 meters apart. So uh, we've got a great view actually for how this beat's gonna unfold as these girls all slot themselves in uh, appropriately. Good uh, pressure. Good puff and pressure for the far left uh, group there. Uh, You've got a good eye for that stuff. I, I mean, it's pretty hard to tell from here, but you can see that uh, the breeze is pretty nice on the you left side. You see them? They're there. starting to crouch in a little bit. Uh, so really, as they get closer and closer to shore, the breeze is less consistent. Uh, we just see Olivia Price right in, in the center of the picture. Uh, she's sometimes crouching, but sometimes extending. And uh, that's a, a tricky situation. Eden and Marie, our leaders, still well ahead. Uh, they'll probably just do one more attack into the winter marks. And they look really solid. This, this is why they won the European Championships, right? Just really good, steady boat handling. Amazing boat handling. They, they can handle uh, handle anything. The, the first regatta they came to was Palma. Huge breeze, huge waves, and they, uh, they just rocked it. And uh, here they go, into the windward mark. Bear away, no problem. Nice, easy bear away. Look at Marie there, so confident in the boat. Jive setting. Oh, and that pops is such it around. a beautiful maneuver. Yeah. So hard to do. Yeah, they've done well there. And uh, we won't even bother counting the seconds uh, here between them and second place. If they keep it up right, they'll be fine. And uh, let's see if our camera decides to stick with the wind remark. That's great. So that's Julia Conti coming in here in second place. And uh, Alex, and, Alex and Molly have caught up nicely. That's a nice little, little climb for them. And they're going to split marks here. They're going to go around the, the right mark. And so it looks really slow doing that. I, have to say, I, I much prefer, if you can get away with it and not capsize, what the Danes did. Just go around the mark you're going around. And, and then if you want to go the other way, do it as a jive rather than uh, as a tack. Certainly we saw that in the America's Cup. You know, the, the guys in the America's well, Cup. Hang on, what's happened to the Brazilians The here? Brazilians got Stalled themselves out. stuck in attack. And uh, a little bit of jib on, I think they'll get it, make it right. Eden and Marie continue on the, onto their victory, but you can see the Brazilians, yeah, just didn't have a good attack. Oh, uh, Olivia Price, Caitlin Ellis, oh, Sam Round. Brazilians got away with it. Is that, which German boat is that? That'll be uh, Vicky and Oh, the Aussie! Oh, Aussie, Caitlin Ellis, Olivia and Olivia Price. On their jibes at the maneuver you're just calling them up to do. Yeah. They couldn't well, I said only do it if you can do it. it you I didn't, didn't say, say you should do it. Sarah Stair and Julie Bassard, my bet is they use great set. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm not Celia play against you on that one. Celia Lettinen and uh, Michaela Wolf round. That's got to be in about eighth and ninth place. The French get their spinnaker up. But look at those Aussies. They're trying to get the boat up with the kite still half up. Oh, that's a battle. That's a battle you're likely to. But they're getting away with it. Maybe they're getting away with it. They'll, uh, they got the boat upright, and then we'll have to suck it back in. Yeah, uh, the boat's well, actually decent if you can they, do it. Hard work. That's not a bad tired. recovery. Yeah. Who's so, with the pink spin? Okay, there's our leaders. Oh no, that's uh, Julia Conti in second place. So we should be seeing a pair in picture fairly soon, the Danish. Oh, I think they're miles ahead, so we'll see how far camera you, you, you can maybe see their weight there. You can see a yeah, you, there's, you can see something. Look, there they are. Oh, they're miles just gone. Ahead. Just gone. <laughs> Good for them. They, uh, you know, they actually, to be to their credit, they had big smiles on their face all week, even when they weren't doing well. Absolutely. Um, these girls have a lot of respect for the competition. I bet the smile's going to be bigger too. now. Yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a good one. We see them. Look how beautiful uh, that shot is. Just these, the 49er effects have rides a little higher downwind, 
and that's why they're able to push it harder for longer. So, uh, the so maybe maybe the fastest boat out in the water today, faster than the men, you think? Uh, certainly, the men have been sailing the 49er FX in big reason, took it four knots faster than the 49er 7 Wow, wow. So, so just a more efficient sail plan, smaller sail plan. That's the victory for them. Uh, so that one's done. And let's, nice uh, work, Danish uh, ladies. And we don't see any flags on the committee to send them in, so my guess is they're going to get the portraits. Okay. So here come the Italians, a long way back, so they're giving a lot of ground away, but, it, but in points terms that doesn't matter. They're still going to get a second place if they keep it up right to the finish. Yeah, second place is certainly a very good result for them. That, that really puts them in the leader contention with, uh, with Sarah Steyer backing off a few points and the Italians uh, having two good races so far today. Absolutely. They're, uh, they're going to be up in the championship uh, contention, which is really good to see. And I'm sure we're going to see Alex Maloney and Molly Meach here shortly. We saw them do the tack fair away. There they are. And they're, they're leading going into the day, and uh, and another solid race for them. So we're setting ourselves up for a really nice championship. If we can have Eden Marie battle back into the fight, uh, plus the Italians, the Kiwis, and the British, yeah. uh, you know, they'll all be, the, the, the home crowd here will be rooting for Sarah, and uh, she'll have lots of competition on. Really tight here, that's Alex versus the British. I wouldn't want to call it from here. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll catch it on the GPS replay, let you know who won that battle. That's the Brazilians round, that's that sixth place, so another good race. I think fifth, I think okay, fifth, fifth. And, yeah. and now it's a big gap to the next, so the top five really broke away from the rest. Uh, we saw that gap, Caitlin and uh, Olivia uh, put it in the piss, so uh, that was, the <laughs> that was uh, one of the spots. They, they confirmed they managed to get it back up right now. Let's see if they show up on the tracking. I haven't picked them up yet on the tracking, but from what we saw from the shot earlier, the, That's them. Uh, about 12th, so that we, we reckon they were what, about 6th before that capsize? Yeah. Uh, that's uh, Victoria Yurtsuk and uh, Annika Lorenz, uh, Germany 7.2, and Haley Outeridge in Australia, the pink spinnaker 999. Very close between those two. That's for what, 6th and 7th. Good yeah. races for them. Uh, it's uh, Celia Leitonen in 8th place for Finland. And doing better than this earlier in the race. She's look, looking like she's going to come in for ninth. So a great beat from her, and uh, doesn't doesn't leave too many spots. You know, a ninth. It's, it's not it's not too bad. I mean, I, I, I'm sure she's happy just to be getting around. Looking at the number of cap sizes that are going on by oh, sure. teams that are more experienced than she is in the 49er FX. And uh, wow, that's I don't know how she managed to go so slowly through the line there. She must be really nervous. Okay. Well, you, you, good for her. Hey, listen, you cross any way you can. If you can keep it upright, you're happy. Sure. Yeah. And someone who didn't keep it upright will be crossing the line fairly soon, barring any further disasters. It's going to be Olivia Price crossing fairly soon, just behind Anna Tunnicliffe. Okay. So Annika's round in tenth. Uh, oh, another. Oh no, the Aussies. Second. Uh, no. Second boat of the day. Second At least no, they've they laid it over again. They will drift through the finish line. It counts. <laughs> So, uh, can you oh. be sure of that? I'm not so sure about that, but uh, no, they'll drift through the finish line there. With the wing up, it pushes you downwind. So they'll have to shout their sail number at the race committee. So uh, Olivia Price, the girl who fell out of the the boat in the final of the Olympics last year, lost the lost the gold medal, ended up with a silver medal. Here she is falling out of the boat again. A uh, little trickier in this one. We'll give her credit for that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, it's it's definitely difficult, you know. She wasn't the, she's twelfth round and capsizing for the second time. So, what's everyone else doing? Yeah. No, I mean uh, Singapore. We didn't see much of them in that race as well. I suspect they're struggling in in that stronger breeze as well. I was what talking to Grizzly earlier in the week, and Singapore just doesn't have wind very often. So, right. You know, they go out training all the time, but if you don't get the wind, it's really hard to, to practice in it. So, they, they, this is their second trip to Europe already this year, and. Uh, and they'll, they'll have to go and find out find out some uh, some spots with wind uh, so they can get used to it. Uh, they're both students right now, so uh, well, take a break from their studies as well. Well, we should take a break from our studies just for five minutes or so. Let's see, it's 12.34 now. It's probably going to take let's a while to... Yeah. Let's come back at 12.40, put up the results. Okay. We'll put up the results and just confirm from everyone, not to put you under too much pressure. But uh, we'll come back as soon as we can with the results. And, uh, and then let you know what's happening with the rest of the racing. We'll be back to a little bit later and then it'll be race for FX.
actually I've been waiting for it since 2006 when I stopped the 29ers and uh, I've been looking forward to ski for women and um, I've been sailing the 49er Grand Prix series in Finland for or in, on some of the summers and I uh, really enjoy the ski sailing so it was a non-brainer like of course I was going to go to the skis. And, and what success did you have in the 29er all those years ago? Um, we did quite well in the girls with Celia Kanelva on 2004 and 2005 and then 2006 I paired up with the Australian Scott Babbage um, for the Worlds and Australian Nationals and won those so that was really exciting and learned a lot from Scott. So you won the World Championships against the boys and yeah, that, that was... Yeah, Yeah, okay. So the right instincts for 49er FX racing, right? <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Uh, that was seven years ago, so I'm slowly getting all my skills back. But and obviously it's a different boat and more complicated. But um, yeah, I'm very happy to be back in the skis. And what skills does the match racing? Uh, what relevance does that have to this kind of sailing? Does that help you out a little bit in places as well, like the start line? Uh, not so much. <laughs> Maybe if it comes to the end and there's a battle with two boats or something like that, like that. But so far I think it's more just. <coughs> Olympic campaign experience, not so much the sailing. So how's the first season gone for you in the FX? Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we were studying after the Olympics for the whole, whole winter in Finland and started sailing when the ice melted from the sea and uh, really been enjoying the Finnish series. We, we, we get like 20 boats on the line, like FX and 49er combined and it actually worked quite well sailing mixed. So. Uh, that was a really cool summer in Finland and now this is our first international event and having fun in the fleet. Finland of course won the 49er gold medal back <laughs> in 2000 so you've got some good skiff experience in Finland. Have you been relying on that as well? Yeah for sure we have a like long skiff tradition and uh, I think at the moment my brother Lauri and Kalle Buff are the uh, best 49ers in Finland so we're getting a lot of information from them which is really cool. Okay. And uh, so what are your goals over the, over the next couple of years? Do you, do you see a, a medal as a serious prospect, a second uh, we'll Olympic see. medal? We'll see how things go. At the moment, just uh, or just enjoying the experience here and seeing how we go. Presumably for you, the learning curve is a little bit shorter, having done the, the 29er as, as successfully as you did, compared with some of the other teams that have come into the FX, maybe haven't sailed skips for the first time. Are you seeing that advantage? Um, well, I think we had quite a short summer before this Worlds and uh, I think we, it definitely helps to at some point to get going at least, but to get to the top is another story, like you need to spend time in this, this exact boat. And what's the biggest challenge for you in the FX at the moment? Um, just everything I guess, <laughs> like there's just so many things that you, you can practice, like all these conditions and speed and maneuvers and everything. So just having enough time to have train all those little bits will take some time. Steve Layton and bronze medalist at last year's Olympic match racing, London 2012. No longer in the Olympics, you had a chance of class to the 49er effects. Well, obviously, uh, it came to the Olympics instead of the match racing, but actually I've been waiting for it since 2006 when I stopped the 29ers. And, uh, I've been looking forward to a ski for women and um, I've been sailing the 49er Grand Prix series in Finland for or in, on some of the summers and I uh, really enjoyed ski sailing so it was a non-brainer like of course I was going to go to the ski. And, and what success did you have in the 29er all those years ago? Um, we did quite well in the girls with Celia Kanelva uh, in 2004 and 2005 and then 2006 I paired up with the Australian Scott um, for the Worlds and Australian Nationals. So you won World Championships against the boys and yeah, that, that was... Six, yeah. yeah, okay. So the right instincts for 49er FX racing, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, that was seven years ago, so I'm slowly getting all my skills back, but and obviously it's a different boat and more complicated. But um, yeah, I'm very happy to be back in the skis. And what skills does the match racing, uh, what relevance does that have to this kind of sailing? Does that help you out a little bit in places as well, like the start line? Uh, not so much. <laughs> Maybe if it comes to the end and there's a battle with two boats or something like that. Like that. But so far 
I think it's more just the <clears throat> Olympic campaign experience. Not too much to say. So, how's the first season gone for you in the Apex? Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we were starting after the Olympics for the whole, whole winter in Finland and started sailing when the ice melted from the sea. And uh, we've been enjoying the Finnish series. We, we, we get like 20 boats on the line, like FX and 49 combined, and actually we were quite well sailing mixed. So, uh, that was a really cool summer in Finland. And now this is our first international event and having fun in won the 49er gold medal back mm. in 2000, got some good skiff experience in Finland, have you been relying on that as well? Yeah, for sure, we, we have a like, long skiff tradition and uh, I think at the moment my brother Lauri and Kalle Bakker are the, uh, the best 49ers in Finland, so we're getting a lot of information from them. Okay. And uh, so what are your goals over the, over the next couple of years? Do you see a, a medal as a prospect, a second uh, we'll Olympic see. medal? At the moment, just expect, uh, or just enjoying the experience here and seeing how it goes. Presumably, for you, the learning curve is a little bit shorter having done the, the 20 as quickly as you did compared with some of the other teams that have come into the FX, maybe haven't sailed skips for the first time. Are you seeing that advantage? Um, well, I think we had quite a short summer before this world, and uh, I think we it definitely helped at some point to get going at least. To get to the top is another story, like you need to spend time in this, this exact boat. And what's the biggest challenge for you in the FX at the moment? Um, just everything, I guess. <laughs> like, there's just so many things that you, you can practice, like these conditions and speed and maneuvers and everything. So just having enough time to have a train. At last year's Olympics in the match racing, match racing longer in the Olympics. You had a choice of classes. Why did you choose the 49er FX? Well, obviously, big, uh, it came to the Olympics instead of the match race. Actually, I've been waiting for it since 2006 when I stopped the 29ers, and uh, I've been looking forward to a ski for women. And um, I've been selling the 49er Grand Prix series. ready for the final FX race of the day. This is a critical stage in the 49er World Championships for these top 20 wi women, right Ben? Yeah, final of their eight races for the semi-finals. The final race of their eight races for the semi-finals. Uh, the top nine in the series after this race move automatically into the final. Uh, tomorrow we'll have three double point races, so it's really getting to the critical end. Um, let's just cut to the uh, to the live uh, shots of the water when you get a chance, Tom, and we'll see that the breeze is built nicely through the day as it's forecasted. And the girls are uh, ripping around in what are flat water, windy conditions, really challenging them. We've seen a few capsizes. We've definitely seen some teams struggle with the boat handling, but likewise, we've seen some teams excel in the boat handling. None more so than Alex Moni and Molly Meach who are the Kiwis that we have seen the world number ones, and they shot up to the top of the leaderboard. They're, I don't know if they're rivals necessarily, but certainly the girls who have been winning all the regattas, Ida uh, Nielsen and Marie Thurgaard Olsen, 
they won the last race by quite a margin and uh, they might have put themselves into the championship picture so that uh, so they can get going. We've probably got about two and a half minutes to go to the next start. Conditions look, uh, look windier than last time. We're seeing a few more white caps. Definitely. And, and if they were much further offshore, I think they'd be really struggling. Just saw a boat in the background and there, it was going downwind pushing a lot of water there, there's a lot of breeze further out to sea but hopefully close into shore near Marseille we're going to keep the flat water 49ers like flat water they hate waves <laughs> with flat water definitely allows them to push hard it allows the especially with the 49er effects the bow stays up they're able to go as fast as they can at all times sometimes with the waves in a 49er you got to slow the boat down um, we just uh, went under last one minute yeah last 30 seconds I think we're coming into here so <coughs> let's see who's stuck up where it looks like a French are we putting the uh, are we putting the score up or no okay we're gonna we're gonna get you the score in the middle of the race sometime when uh, when we've got a gap we've got the finish had another had a good race last race they're looking good at the boat end where's uh, we're looking for Sarah stay up really early. I think somewhere on the right hand end of the line is Sarah stay up she's uh, she's number two and, oh they're and they're off so and really really congested at the committee boat end and it looks like Brazil got away Nicely. We don't see in any uh, flag, so it looks like everyone's got off nicely. And, uh, oh, there's Jenna Hansen and Katja Everson. Denmark they won need three, a good one. They did not have a good race last race. They need a good race this race to make it into the next round. And a ton of cliff off the line. Both those boats are fighting for the last spot to get into the finals. And it always starts well. She was saying if, 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 if you stop the race after two minutes, they'd probably be winning this reaction. It's just they're not finishing so well. But, but, but another, another great start for Anatolic. But taking off already on support tack. Just to confirm, the five boats we think are fighting to stay in the top nine are Beckering and Guam on 76 points, Grail and Kunza, Brazil at 77 points, Caitlin Alex and Olivia Price on 83 points, Hansen and Everson on 86 points, and Anna Tunicliffe on 93. So only two of those teams are going to get, only three of those teams, those five teams are going to get tomorrow and uh, we saw them all have three decent starts so uh, it'll be a good battle through this whole race so there's our leader Sarah Stair another good start yeah we haven't seen her for a long time yet. really good yeah. so it's the two laser radio sale and anatomical really good starts this thing that was transitional well in that respect to 49% does not have uh, uh, trend does not have two data points <laughs> You're probably right. Nikki Jersok and Annika Lorenz, Germany 712, they're uh, there. They are reasonably secure to get into the final, uh, I'd say. They're in sixth place overall right now. And uh, there's 131. Uh, they're one of the teams, Becker and Blom, that are seventh place right now. And if they can keep it upright and have a good race here, they'll make it through. There. Good starts, fast. She just punches, doesn't she? And uh, we saw her take a fairly commanding uh, position in the first beat of the last race. Yeah, that, 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 not the lead she's got on the other side of the course there. And then this is, I think, the other side of the course. Well, the finish boat is definitely on the other side. The finish boat. Both finish boats, yeah. yeah. Both, they they taxed both immediately at the start and went right. Uh, that's what I don't know is Cynthia uh, Kirkby and Celia Carna. And uh, they're, they look like they're in pretty good control, although we see some, see some upside down 49ers behind them on the other course, so the breeze is definitely out. Tapia's having another good race, 747. Uh, yeah. Hard to tell with this perspective, but it looks like maybe they're in a bad there from the French. Yeah, they're probably in a different lane because they're staying there, but uh, the French definitely extended. I mean, that, that's a pretty good thing. Yeah. And but Matt Maloney and Meech, we see there, New Zealand 16, uh, kind of just, just holding their lane above Annika and Vicky, they're just, just tacking now, so they obviously couldn't quite hold on full time. And Francis Peters, Britain 1 2 1, also held off the line so far. So, do you think these are our leaders? Could be. Just, just checking the track at the moment. So there's attack for the French, and there's attack for the Italians. And, and they're British. British. So, and Annika, so all the pack is tacked off on port together. Uh, they're a clearly uh, out of the course and guys to get the best car up and tack you want to go outside and get clear out of the clear water the whole way. Absolutely. 
Italy. I, again, it, it might be perceived, but it still looks to me like the Italians had to had to attack in bad air, or, or, or <laughs> may, maybe they're, they're well to learn. It's hard to tell from this angle, but you, you'd rather be with a French shot right now, for sure. Well, with their experience, they wouldn't attack in bad air. It must, it must be a lane, there must be separation there. You don't need that wide curve in that. So yeah. We can, as long as the Saracen doesn't keep going, so much better than everyone else. <laughs> the Italians would be okay all the way back. But I, I still worry for the French when they bear away onto the downwind. I, I, I just worry about their, their lack of experience and will they be able to keep the boat upright. I, I'd be surprised and very impressed if they managed to hang on to their lead in this race. Surprised, you say, Andy? Yeah, I say surprised. Okay. I, I think some of the more experienced teams like the Danes are going to come through in this race. This is windy now. Oh, this is properly windy. And uh, we saw a little bit of uh, untidiness last race. Well, we saw untidiness in the first race. We saw cap sizes in the la in the most recent race, and what are we going to see now? Yeah, I, I think we're going to see more untidiness. To be honest, I quite enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a hard battle, that's for sure. Great right, backdrop uh, here in Marseille, isn't it? I oh, mean, it's, it's beautiful just... surrounding. Sailing in the bay is wonderful. There's mountains on all the sides, and little uh, houses and abodes uh, dotted in with some greenery. The sailors have been having a great time playing in all these mountains and all these uh, places. Yeah, there's there's a few crazies that, that go a few kilometres down the road and and take their bikes up some of the the great coals of the Tour de France. There's some really mad cyclists in this fleet as well. So even Sarah Starrett and Julie Brassard, they're looking fairly lit up coming across. Uh, you know, heeled over, mains already out and heeled over. So the breeze, so on a lift. breeze is it up. Looks like they're on a lift or maybe overstood. Maybe they've actually overstood on the ley line, but they they're really comfortable there. They're both, uh, well, Julie, uh, Julie's not so tall, but Sarah's quite tall, the skipper, and uh, just getting her leverage out there to uh, keep keep balancing against the power. Julie Conte and Francesca Kapke, the Italian boat, also looking good. Oh, and we're seeing the first boats. No, that's the 49ers. So there's, uh, there's other, we might get confused. The green sailed boats might be coming in from another course. Ours, in this race, it's all the blue sailed boats, the 49er effects. So that uh, Swedish boat, you can ignore them for now. They're just sailing home after... Uh, so it looks like there's been a big lift on port. The way that the French have managed to put the it looks to me like the left was the way to go, and that's exactly where they went. And there go the French. Now this is the most dangerous part of the course, the barrel way. Attack barrel, never an easy maneuver. Look how slow they are, so they've got to do their barrel way, and oh, they get right. Okay, so that's that's good. That's good the most dangerous girls. part. Yeah. yeah. And we see the Italians going for the straight barrel way. I think your preferred maneuver, and then uh, tightly around. Frances Peters having another good race, and a ton of cliff. We saw her get off the start line well. Alex Maloney, Molly Meach in 16. Uh, Annemiek Beckering, 1-3-1. One, one. Olivia Price, 8-4-8. Eight, eight, eight. Uh, hopefully, Olivia Price, that, that could be here in the finals. It could be that we have uh, Denmark 1-3-6 knocked out at this stage, which we wouldn't have expected. We'll check on so that So the finish boats that went right, not so good. They're further towards the back of the fleet. No, they uh, they won't. Uh, we see the the 49er men's uh, semifinals happening after this. We see a bunch of the boats tuning up, but our cameramen hopefully will get out of the get them out of the frame. So that's okay. This is the uh, there's the French on the, the right lead. hand side. So that is the lead there. Well, the Italians. Yeah, this is the battle for the lead right here. You see, Francis Peters caught up an awful lot on the French already on the down. It looks She's like to leeward, so she might have to do a jibe uh, in order to keep her air clear. So the, the French are a little bit slow down wind. It looks like. Yeah, I, they wouldn't be as comfortable pushing it quite the way that Francis Peters would. Have. Yeah, so that's okay. Haley Outeridge, Australian 999, with the pink spinnaker going out of picture, and what, 117. That's Australia 117. That's uh, that's Tessa Parkinson Tessa and Chelsea Parkinson. Hall. And just seeing a couple of the men's 49ers here, just watching the uh, the racing going on, just trying to gauge what they're going to be doing when they come and race on the same race course in. Uh, half we an did hour's see time. we did see Francis Peters jive. Oh, okay. So we've just gone to a GPS view of that. Oh no, we're back. Um, we saw Francis Peters drive away. She obviously couldn't get around. Sarah Sarah Sarah, Sarah did pull off her drive there. Right. So she's back on port and uh, going to get. Maybe I'm mark. worrying about Sarah stay out too much. You know what? She's got a lot of experience. She knows how to terms of the placing. Though. Right, so that, that, that's a big gain in distance terms. Mm. France, it, uh, if she's done as well as it, it suggests here. She was queen of the downwind two days ago, so she's uh, definitely got the wheels downwind at times. 
Oh, Sarah Stair, look how lit up she is now. Good buff for her. Yeah. Let's not count her out here. She's no. This is that's about the first in the race, so uh, maybe looking I'm, to stamp her authority here in Marseille and say, uh, I may be new to the class, but I'm not ready to give up anything. So this will be the cross with the Italians for the lead. Uh, Italians are certainly ahead of Francis Peters. Let's see what it looks like uh, with uh, the French. Really enjoying these performance conditions, aren't they? They do a lot of training at Lake Garda. What, Italians what? jibe right on Sarah Stayard. So not only will do they will they lightly take the lead here, but it actually puts the boat handling pressure on Sarah Stayard a little bit as she runs out of wind. She'll have to turn up and down. Francis Peters gets through her jibe. Yeah, I'd say get through is the way of putting it. That wasn't a great jibe. And oh. in the kite, they need to get the kite down early by the look of it. Oh, there we go. Some messy drops, but who's going to get away with it? The Italians go around. One mark, Francis Peters around the next. And they're all, they're all, they're all safe. Safe to third. You wouldn't complain about that one. No, that was, that's good sailing for everyone. There. But oh, 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 from, this is whoa. Vicky and Annika. They also Leaving it late. off. A lot of late drops here. The boats are planing into the mark anyway, so they, they don't need to be pushing it this much. No, they, they definitely could be dousing a little earlier. Uh, a late drop there for the Red Jenica. That's Oh, that's Denmark 11. Okay, that's Eden Nielsen. She pushed it late into the last uh, in the last race as well. So they obviously... But they got it away. It. So they actually, a pretty good recovery, wasn't it? And the Brazilians. So if I was guessing, I'd say that right now it's Hansen and Everson and Anna Tunnicliffe and Molly Vandemore that are going to find themselves outside looking in on the top nine. Because everyone who's in the top nine has already... Okay. Other than... Oh, every, wow, so the top nine overall in the regatta are... Oh, we haven't seen... Have we seen uh, them go around yet? Uh, I think we have. I think we have. Um, they're in about fifth at the moment. Okay, so yeah. So it looks to me like... Uh, the oh, Danes, no, no, sorry. More like, more like uh, eighth or ninth, the Brazilians. Okay. Looks to me like the Danes won three six. They won the first race today. And uh, I think... I don't think they're having such a great one. We didn't see them at all in the last race. Yeah, they won the first race today, then 12th in the second race, and I'm not sure where they are now. A couple of boat, there's an upside down boat in the middle of the course. I don't think Denmark 136 is having a great one, but I can't be sure about that yet. Okay. Sarah Stayart, uh, it's, it's impossible, I guess, to tell from this camera angle, but she certainly doesn't look like she's falling behind the times. Be something uh, she. No, I, I would say that she's possibly got a bit of upwind pace on the Italians. I, I wonder if she's holding her ground and maybe even slightly gaining on the Italians in boat speed terms upwind. She looks very fast upwind. Mm -hmm. Those two boats going out to the right-hand side of the course. On the far side of the course, Francis Peters was going left. She's now tacked. Wow, look at the speed. This is, that's, that's actually a Denmark 136 just coming around the Lord Marks now. So they must have pissed it in. Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're fast, so it's the only way that they'd uh, be that far back is if they'd been upside down at one point today. Disappointing for them. Victoria Yurtsok doing a little bit better in this race in, in six, but they're one of the really small teams, aren't they? They, they would struggle for, for power in, in these strong wind conditions. Yeah, they're very different. The first day with the steady light winds, we saw them rocking into the lead. And uh, they've got good boat handling. Oh, and Hanukkah looks like she's also capsized somewhere in the run. It's just yeah, so going she, again now. She there might she is, be just coming through screen. So that looks like they might be out of that top nine. Yeah, it's safe to say that uh, she's going to fall. Well, she's in 11th right now. It's safe to say she's going to make it up into the top nine. And they're Brazilians. No, I'm not seeing them. Have okay. you found the Brazilians yet? I think they're in the back. Yeah, they're yeah. there. We see them in the center screen. Uh, they're in, yeah, they're fighting for ninth or 10th. That should be enough yeah. to come in yeah. to the uh, final. Y you know who I'm looking to see if they can pull something off is Ida Marie Olsen and uh, Yeah, they're not doing Nielsen. as well as I thought they would in the race. Well, they're coming through here in pictures. Hard to tell exactly where they are, but if they can pick up a couple more points here, it might see them into the leadership uh, race. But uh, the way Sarah well, Sarah's Sarah's up. Sail, yeah, I mean, nothing's going to stop Sarah's her. Sarah, stay upright. I mean, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> think that she would be. So I okay. might have to beat my points. Oh, i got to get off this. It's a little delayed. Um, but we do see uh, where everyone is. The Italians just on top of the French. Uh, center screen, numbers two and nine, according to that. Uh, 
demonstration. Oh, oh this is uh, this is about reaching through the middle of the course to get in. Oh, Hansen and Everson upside down. I'm guessing with the purple jerseys. No, that's British. Brits. That's Brits. Um, I, they would that's another, up I think that's yeah, another fleet. Yeah. I think that's because we the got Francis silver. Peters in the background. Yeah, I think that's the Silver Fleet girls sailing through the middle of the course, confusing our cameraman. Yeah, unfortunately. Do you have the scores to go up from last or not? Uh, uh, GBR yeah, twenty seven. Charlotte Dobson up, right. and, uh, and Charlotte Dobson and Sophie Ainsworth. So yeah, not not really race. relevant to this race that we're watching at the moment. Results are, on. Results are on screen right now. Okay, good. So we we can show to the rest of the viewers here what we're talking about. So far in the top of this race, we've seen uh, everyone up in and including Price and Elk, so the whole top nine upright, and then we've seen Hanson and Everson in tenth uh, capsized. We've seen Anna Tunnicliffe capsized, and uh, no one else can make it up into the top nine for tomorrow. So I think so as long as these boats all keep it upright, we'll know who our final nine are going to be. Okay. And of course, everyone else gets a chance tomorrow in the petite final to, to get that one remaining spot to get back in. Yeah, so the, the door is not shut on Anna Tunnicliffe and, and those others that are on the cusp. And we saw Francis Peters do extremely well in the Europeans, get back in, win that spot back into the petit final, uh, through the petit final, back into the final, finish fifth overall. So, so you can, can make great gains. So that's Francis Peters we're looking at there. No, on the this is this is the men. The oh, cameramen are oh, okay. Cameramen are truly got confused by the fact that everyone's uh, sailing through the middle of our course, unfortunately. But I think in the background we see no, that's uh, that's uh, Dave Evans. Wow, it's they're <laughs> ripping though. It's clearly windy. The guys can barely uh, get across the course. There we go. This is the uh, cameraman I just found. That's the uh, no, it wasn't. I thought that might have been the Italians. Okay, he's finally found our, our fleet again. Can you take, are we back on just regulars? Okay, great. So there's uh, Nielsen and Olsen. Up. Yeah, they're having a good beat, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Who's black kite are we looking at there? The Italians, maybe? That could be the Italians that are hoisted. Where are the French? Yeah, there's the, the French middle of the picture. picture. They're, the French are just uh, up on ley line now, so it looks so like they've dropped one so spot. So they've given a lot of distance. Away. You think they were chomping on the heels of the Italians up that beat just now, five minutes ago? Let's so see if they can make the spare away. Yeah, no problem. We're already round. Good for them. Francis Peters, round next. And then we'll see the Danes in about sixth. Yeah. Okay, okay, so the Italians, just the runaway leaders at the moment. If they can keep this upright, then that's a nice win for them. And, and they will be certainly in the top three, probably higher. Yeah, how many points back are they right now? Uh, I'm we'll, sure we'll, we'll check all that when we when they finish. But uh, I, there's I the Brazilians just setting, so they've had a good beat as well. And here's Beckering and Blom. Okay, you can see those patches of really dark water, can't they've you? They've set the wind mark very close to shore. I wonder if that's just to make it easier there. Right? Well, I, I think so. Yeah. I, I think so. I mean, certainly if you're having to do those barrelways at, at the bottom of this course, they get a lot. Places like Kashgai, where the wind comes off the land really fast, they do that uh, as well. And that way, even if you do get a blast, you can kind of wait it out, because you will get a lull, and you can get your bear away in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. The rest of the boats are cleared through our shot, and we can, uh, we can see what's going on here. Sarah Stair, looking good. So, yeah, that was the French in the middle of the picture just now, but and there are the Italians leaders. leading. And looking very steady. And then back on the French there, right of picture, the blue Jennifer on the right. Big battle here between uh, Francis Peters and uh, Brazil. Martine Grail, uh, unless Martine's actually out to lure and uh, that's how she's got a clear win, which must be what's happening, so otherwise she'd be rolled. That's a good game for the Brazilians there. Mm -hmm. Hang on, oh, hang on, not a great drive. That, oh, was, that was Sarah Stair. I thought that was the Italians. Oh yeah, it could have been the Italians with the red circle. Well, why did we, we, we need to get back onto that. That, <laughs> that was a very dodgy jive and I don't know if they got away with it. Are we looking at the Italians again there? Ooh. Oh, there's a close caps. <laughs> it's hard to tell who's capsized and who's not. Oh, sorry. Well, we can tell who's capsized. It's hard to tell who they are. Uh, the boat, the frames we're looking at now. Who's well, that? with Sarah Stay Up, the blue kites is, is the most right-hand one. And it's the Brazilians, then it's the British. So it looks like the Brazilians are going very fast down this run. It does look like they've chomped up on Francis Peters and now they're rolling Sarah Stay Up. Um, one of these boats, these black Jennicas, you would think, would be the Italians. 
You think this is the Italians just getting upright again there? I'm trying to tell who's who's a 49er. Here we go, with the extra circle. There we are. That's Sarah Stayard. No, that's the Italians. Oh, it's they survived. And this is the Kiwis. That's Ali. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, it's an alley. Yeah. All, all the way up to them. Oh, safety jive there from the Italians to get... Whoa. Sometimes oh. there's no such thing as a safety jive. And they've so, doused ahead of the finish line. Have they gone the wrong side of a mark? It doesn't matter on the down, last downwind. Is this, this is last downwind. Yeah, it yeah, is. It is, it is. But I'm wondering, why did they drop? Have they actually finished? Maybe they got through the finish. And the win. The win goes to Alex and Molly. The Italians just have had a terrible time on this run uh, for some reason or other, and they dropped their spinnaker early. But they are getting through the line, so second place. Second place, okay. Um, we'll see if that, they we'll might be that second. Two, we'll see if that two-point switch matters later in the regatta. Because really, they that, was a, that yeah, was a that giveaway. That was a giveaway. I mean, the Kiwis uh, had an amazing final. And run. the Brazilians, you got to be impressed with their bull yeah. paddling down this run. They pushed it 100% the whole time. They chowed up. They passed Francis Peters. They passed Sarah Stayart. Yes. And uh, here's Eden Marie and Sarah Stayart, I think, through. And uh, we've lost Francis Peters. Yeah, where's Francis Peters gone? Yeah, That's we've lost Francis Peters. She must have capsized. There's no other explanation for her being this far behind now. So here comes a kite, but it's not the right color for Francis Peters. I just can't tell which one. That could, that could be Francis Peters on the left of picture now. So coming yeah, through without, uh, without Jenica. Without Jenica, so maybe she overstood. Looked like uh, Vicky and Annika got in there. And there's the Dutch through in, uh, what's that, eight or nine? There's two bad Dutch boats actually in the middle pack, so it's hard to tell which one was which. Whew. Pretty good action there. Yeah, yeah, great. And but but you reckon the top nine that you talked about are still safe as the top nine? Yeah, I reckon the top nine are still safe as long as that's Olivia Price. She's actually the one who's most in danger. But uh, you think she might slip out? She well, but but not because Hanson and Everson capsized and Anna and uh, yeah, yeah capsized. So I think almost no matter what, um, Olivia Price is going to be safe here. Now, you said that two data points don't make a trend, but here, here, here is never, nevertheless a very weak trend for the women starting. This is the, explain firstly the starting competition. Okay, so the starting points competition, we, uh, we well, every, every sailor knows that the uh, start is really important. So we teamed up with Magic Marine to run a starting points competition each day. We call it the green jersey, just like the, uh, just like the Tour de France has a sprinting jersey. And uh, every day uh, you get points based on your starting, uh, based on various skills. If you're close to the line on the start, you get a point. If you win the boat or the pin, you get a point. If you um, have a lane after a minute, you get a point. And if you do out the windward mark, you get a point. Measured how? Measured with the GPS data. Okay. And uh, you are holding a list here that I think is uh, some sort of trend. Yes. So, <laughs> so two data points don't make a trend, as you pointed out. But I'd just like to say that two laser radial sailors are the top two in here so for today's racing yeah so it's France 871 they've so won the starting points competition they for won today the, yeah they've won it yesterday I believe also Dan so that's two days in a row they won it so she knows how to start she and Anna Tunnicliffe from second place not a great finisher by her own admission but a great starter so she's in second and in third was Alex and Molly from, from New Zealand also great finish as, as we saw just in that race just then. Alex and Molly have the whole package right now. They, they got a head start on everyone because they got to do some of the testing of the 49er FX gear. Um, but the, and they're slick in the boat, but they're clearly good sailors. Uh, their brothers are both top 10 laser sailors and best friends. And uh, the two of them sail together, so it's quite the sailing uh, group they've got going there. And we're about to see some great Kiwi men competing in a moment uh, for the uh, the men's 49 they're going to have four races just as we've had four races for the FX no reason to think there'll be much of, of a delay they'll roll no, straight into it we right? saw all the 49ers uh, already uh, out there it, it, all, already out there in the middle of our course uh, they'll have sent them out as soon as that last race got started and uh, the David Campbell James the race officer will run into the men's semi-final just as soon as he can and uh, as the breeze is building, and we've already seen how good the action is in this course, now we'll see it brought up to just the next level of intensity, because all 20 guys here can really throw the boat around the race course, um, at least until it gets really windy. We're not going to see some of the boats drop out quite so early. So this could be just an incredible display of sailing here, uh, as we hope. So ju just summing up, we, w we can come back a little bit later on when we have the points. We'll have a much stronger sense of who's got through to the top nine for the women. It'll still be pr provisional because there still could be protests. 
It's still provisional, yeah. The, the, the girls might protest each other. Also, the scores we're giving you are GPS scores. They're not the official scores. So David Campbell James's team will be logging the official scores. So uh, the, the scoring template we'll put up here uh, is not official. Uh, but I'm, uh, you know, I think, I think I'm right in saying who the top nine are. What I'm curious to see is what the top three are looking like because we've got Alex and Molly, we've got Julia Conti, and we've got Sarah Stayart. Alex and Molly were on everyone's radar, but I don't think the other two were pegged to be in the leader uh, race as much. The French did tell me to look out for Sarah Stair when I arrived here this week, but every nation would say that. But it turns out they were right. And uh, What about Eden Nielsen? Hasn't quite started as much as we thought she would today, but she's still in the hunt, isn't she? She's had a great day. Um, she had a great day, but she didn't have all top threes or anything, which really might have taken her up into the leadership race. I bet you she's mathematically in it tomorrow. There's going to be three double point races, each worth uh, up to, you know, so you can score 20 points, you can score two points in a race, um, amongst the 10, and there's three of them. So there's a lot of points at stake tomorrow, uh, and the ten races are only 10 to 12 minutes long, uh, and in the in the theater style boundary. So so you've got real lane ropes, it's like a swimming pool, you've got, you've got boundaries. Like we saw in the America's Cup, they had virtual boundaries, and a bunch of flashing lights and GPS signals. Uh, we use rope, which uh, is visually much better for the sailors and a lot easier for us to manage. And uh, to Cheap, to cheaper than having three helicopters in the sky as well, right? And the eight transmission towers, yeah. 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 Um, so the, the racing tomorrow will be intense, but I would like to see, you know, that, that's a real boat handling battle. So Sarah's, uh, Sarah Stairts, you know, stance today, you know, indicated to us that she, we didn't think she was all that comfortable with her boat handling. And she may not get away with it tomorrow. Um, although, to be saying, to be fair, we've been saying that all day, and she and, did, and <laughs> she stayed upright. And I mean, starting I skills are going to be at that much more of a premium tomorrow. That's true. And she's clearly shown us she can start. That's true. Yeah. And so, if Anatonic could be that boat that gets back in through the uh, through the petty finals tomorrow, maybe her starting skills would stand her in good stead for moving back up the rankings as well. These starting skills are so important in the theater because if you can get to a point where you don't have to do boat handling based on other boats. You can just plan your maneuvers based on how you want to do it. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. So the so that get the starts, you, you know, that first couple crosses just can really play out on the difference. And uh, especially if you're worried about capsizing or anything else, uh, keeping it simple is the, often the easiest way to do that. Well, let's take a break now, Ben. We'll be back very shortly. We don't think we're going to be waiting very long for the men's racing. So uh, we will be back in, in about 10 minutes time uh, or less or less if, it, if we get into use the uh, flapping the genica. Uh, we tend to if we see a bad set of boat coming up to the head we call it between the two of us and over sheet just slow the boat down a little bit, just get it under control and then uh, if it looks like we're going to go bow down into a wave then we just let the kite flap just to release the bow and hopefully not send us over quite so quickly. Okay. All right, so various different ways of, of getting downwind safely. What about not flying the kite at all? Is that an option? Uh, I'm not sure if it's from sailing with Hiscox uh, back in the day, but uh, he was always in favour of putting it up because uh, even with it oversheated or flapped, it generally helps the bow up um, and uh, and just stabilises the boat a little bit. Two sailings, just all a bit, uh, bit dodgy, really. Um, so as long as we can get the kite up, we tend to get it up as quick as possible. Dave Evans, you were telling us about some windier weather.
Eric Harley was seventh in last year's World Championship and you had a good season in 2013. Tell us how it was going in 2013 and what your expectations were coming into Marseille. Yeah, first of all, we had a great season in 2013. We uh, won the World Cup in Palma, had a great European Championship and uh, went here with big ambitions for the regatta. We uh, increased our performance from 2011 of the 11th place to the seventh place last year and uh, yeah, I think we had the ambition to uh, to come under the top seven again. We have a big and a great fleet here and um, So how did it go? The, the actual what happened in Marseille? Qualifying? Yeah, we had two qualifying days. On day uh, two we had a, a big collision with another boat and um, yeah, that brought us into uh, uh, to a bad result in this race, and uh, that means around 15 points. I think 15 points with three uh, three fleets. Yeah, it's like 45 points. It's like 45 points, and I think it's about 20 places. And um, yeah, we are for sure a bit disappointed about that. So you missed the cut for the top 40. So in the blink of an collision your ambitions for this world championship it's a, it's a tough game isn't it yeah we that's for sure yeah and we didn't know that um, that that means the overall ranking is uh, such bad but um, it is like it is and uh, yeah, we will try our best again and uh, learn out of this uh, folds also trying to avoid collisions, avoid uh, protest situations. I think we had too much of this in the last days and uh, yeah, learn whatever we can. Okay, so just get through the qualification, don't try and win qualification, is that what you're saying? Just be happy to get reasonable results. Yeah, I think after the qualification you are very close together with all other teams and that means you just have to be under the top 20 and to compete again with a, uh, with a normal series. and. Don't be first and every at every mark. Just uh, stay in the fleet and uh, yeah, be around the top five or something like that. What implications does it have for you and with funding with the federation when when you don't get a good result at the World Championship? Does that matter? Yeah, for sure. We have a, um, a qualification for our federation. That means we I think we have to be under the top ten to. Um, yeah, to keep our our position in the federation clear and uh, to get the uh, support again but uh, yeah, we had a great season so maybe we'll find another way okay. Eric, thanks very much for talking to us and best of luck with the rest of the season thank you Eric. hi caroline van dam welcome thank or i you. guess you should be welcoming yeah. me <laughs> here we welcome are in your home <laughs> yeah Beautiful place for sailing, right? It is. It's really nice. Uh, we actually get this weather a lot of time during the year, so yeah. it's great when you sail on the 49er because we spend quite some time in the water. Well, I think of Marseille as being a windy place. I always thought it was windy here. Um, we actually get both. Last week was very windy and then sometimes you get that, uh, which is great because we train in every kind of weather here um, and we get good every, everywhere. So tell us about the setup of the French FX sailors. You've got a group of you sailing here. So we are like six boats. Um, all of us are here, uh, and we try to train together as much as we can, um, depending on where we study and stuff like that. And the guys are also training here, so we actually have a lot of uh, cooperation with them, which is great because we're like a big team, all working together and uh, improving so much faster like that. And have you got any skiff sailing experience amongst the squad of FX sailors or are you um, all new to it? We, uh, we only have one girl who used to sail on 29ers. Uh, all of the other girls were coming from other dinghies like 420, 470, laser. Uh, so not much skiff sailors. Uh, but uh, a lot of the guys are sailing 49ers for a long time now, so we get the experience from them, from them which is good. I so mean. it's early on in the learning curve. Yeah. Lots yeah, yeah. of big mistakes, lots of things yeah. to learn. <laughs> um, a few a bruises this year, maybe? Yeah, a few injuries as well. Uh, for T a few tell of us. us um, I broke my toe. Um, one of the girls actually twisted her ankle pretty bad. But 
I mean, we've been quite lucky. Uh, we actually managed to avoid very big things. So. How did you break your toe? Um, I flew from the back of the boat to the top and I just hit the boat with my toe. <laughs> Nasty. Nasty. Yeah, yeah, but it was during the winter, so it actually gave me a break during cold times, <laughs> which was nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's part of a game. I mean. And what's it like having the Seiko 49er World Championships here, right on your home waters? It's really nice. We actually get to go home every night. Um, we have everything set up here. We have everything we need. So it's it's really nice. It's a big chance for us. And is that going to give you a bit of a home advantage as well, do you um, think? I think a little bit. I mean, we have some pressure because we're at home, but I think we have a big advantage. We actually know the place pretty well. Um, and if something goes wrong, we have a lot of people to help us, and that's really nice. It just makes things as easier a lot. And how many French FX teams? Um, sailing in the world, we're like five teams, um, and I think nine guys, nine uh, teams for the guys. And um, are you all happy to share information and knowledge? Yeah, it's actually it's working pretty well in the French group right now, uh, all working together to try to improve as fast as we can, because we started quite late in comparison to the other countries. So. Fingers crossed, but yeah, it's working well. But in the end, for Rio 2016, only one team gets to yeah. go. Do you think yeah. you're going to be able to keep talking to each other? <laughs> We're going to try to make that last as long as we can, but it's not going to be easy. I mean, we know about it. Just We'll do the best we can all together, and then when we can't anymore, we just go our own ways and compete against each other. But that's not the plan for now. <laughs> Caroline, thanks very much, and sure. best of luck. Thank you. Hi. Caroline Van Damme, welcome. Or Thank I guess you. you should be welcoming yeah. me. <laughs> here we welcome are in your Marseille. home. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful place for sailing, right? It is. It's really nice. Uh, we actually get this weather a lot of time during the year, so it's great when you sail on the 49er.
the 49er World Championships. We've just seen the women's FX racing conclude for the day. Four races there. Now, Ben, we see four races for the men. The top 20 going through to decide who, who are the top nine out of today's racing that go through to the final for tomorrow. Yeah, this is the semi-final, the second day of the semi-finals, and we've got four r races scheduled, each uh, target time 20 minutes. And, uh, and luckily enough, we've got the 21 highest ranked teams at this uh, regatta so far, the 20 teams that qualified straight from qualifying, one team that made it through from a repechage yesterday, who's Drammer and Brown from the USA. And uh, we're gonna try and look mostly at uh, who's in the contention to win this regatta, because we got a summer, and then we'll talk a little bit about who's not, which is also a surprise. But uh, why don't you run us through what teams we're looking for, and uh, well, or maybe should we talk about the, what's happening? Well, no, we, we, can, we can talk about that very briefly. Uh, Dylan Fletcher and Alan Sign from Great Britain, European champions, they are leading, they've led for most of the week, they've been selling a, a really solid set of races through the light winds. Now it's a test of who can sail in the strong winds. Uh, Jonas, Jonas Vara, he was in second place last night, but he was disqualified in, in a protest by Nathan Altry, so he's, he's dropped to about six, six, six overall. Um, but uh, John Pink is another Brit doing very well. He's in third overall. Manu Dien, the French Olympic representative in second overall. And we're not too far away from a, a starting sequence for the for the first race. And it looks like that breeze is holding up nicely, doesn't it? Yeah, we've got a great day of racing in. The wind's from the north, a direction we haven't seen yet today. We just saw the girls, uh, you know, sit pretty well. To, to, to right in it. And, uh, and, and anyway, uh, it, sometimes you would think offshore breeze was, was a problem uh, because uh, you'd think it would be too shifty. But to be honest, it's what keeps the racing going on a day like today because bearaways getting from the upwind to the downwind is really really tricky on a 49er yeah we saw in the last races the the little bit of wind shadow from shore flat water helped the girls get round and if the breeze continues to build like we expect although we don't particularly feel right now uh, the guys will enjoy that shelter as well at the top mark. it yeah. does make it tricky at the bottom mark though if it gets lucky <laughs> uh, yeah it, it does uh, to be honest i i, I wish we were seeing a, a, a few more capsizes for from uh, <laughs> from some of the men, but I, I fear the top 20 are not going to give too many capsizes to us today for our entertainment. In the flat water, I doubt it as well. We did see uh, we did see some of the racing before. Um, they came this week, they, they, they did a few coaches regatta in the Mistral conditions, and uh, apparently there were very few boats, if any, able to uh, keep it upright uh, at all. But um, now, what are we at? We've, we're less than a minute to go to the start, and uh, Hopefully our cameraman picks that up, but um, the first start will be up here shortly, and uh, that'll be great. We'll be able to see the 49er men's racing. But I, I just wonder, it, it, they didn't look that sort of lined up. They it looked like some of them moved across the line. I wonder, here we are back on screen again. No, no, they're getting ready to go here. Uh, yeah. yeah, that yellow flag's just about to oh, go there. Let's, let's go. Let's go. They're off, just a bunch of boats on board. Postponement. Looks like a postponement to me. No. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Good eye, good eye. <laughs> postponement flag at the back. And you can see some of the teams I, I, relax there. Huge shift, I mean, just to have the, all the boats come off on port like that. Uh, and you knew something was up. Yeah. So, uh, so Gabe another Kelly big James is going to have to readjust the course. He's already done that four times today. Yeah. So at least the wind must just be continuing to shift and. Uh, and we're back on postponement, so uh, we've been here a few times before. Hopefully, it wasn't that long. Are we anywhere near uh, results for the women? Absolutely not. Okay, so why don't we uh, pull up a clip of another one of the sailors we talked to this week? Absolutely not. We're gonna uh, keep talking about the racing here. Well, you know what's interesting to me, and I'm looking at the results sheet here, is the top French team we saw. In the absence of Manu and Steph, the Olympic representative, we saw Matthew Frey and Jan Rochu win the European Championship in 2012. In the absence of Manu and Steph, we saw Julian Dortoli step up and come fourth at the European Championships, the third European. Manu and Steph get back in the boat a month ago, and they're sitting here in fourth position, the top French team, although Julian and uh, Noé are in seventh. Um, and meanwhile, Matthew Frey and Jan Rochu are in 14th. So, 
you know, within that French team, the, clearly all three teams have shown their ability to be the, the top. But uh, even with the year out of the boat, Manny and Steph are just right back in it. Yeah, sometimes it happens like that, doesn't it? You, you come come back in and uh, maybe maybe the pressure's off because you're not expecting too much of yourself. Uh, Manu has just become a father for the first time. Uh, that sort of resets your priorities a little bit. Maybe you come back in a little bit more relaxed, even if you're not as practiced. Yeah, and they've certainly put the years in uh, the time in over the years. So, uh, a bit like riding a bike, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of rust on it, but uh, it chinks off quickly, quickly once you get going again. And uh, certainly to be in the top bunch so quickly does show their, their depth of experience uh, in the 49. Having said that, else who's just taken a year off is Nathan Outridge and Ian Jensen, the reigning world champions, the reigning Olympic champions, and here they are in 18th place with an awful lot to do today with these four races. These four races are all about the Aussies trying to get back into the top nine and seeing if they can salvage a world title that it looks for once like they're not going to win. Yeah, I mean, we will have the top nine automatically advance into tomorrow's final. And Nathan Outeridge is in 18th, so uh, he's got to make up nine full spots uh, within a day's competition. Now, we do have four races, so uh, there's lots of racing to do, but he's 27 points behind uh, the two teams tied for ninth and 10th. So he'll have to have one pack of the day to, to make up that kind of distance, especially in a day where it's shifty. You wouldn't expect the same person to win every race uh, in, a, in a day like this because the pups are going to come in at different times. And it, even people sailing well aren't going to pick up every one. But he will be really thankful that the breeze has picked up because it's been light wind so far. It's sort of been anyone's game up until now. When the breeze picks up, there's a much clearer packing order, and you would expect Nathan Outridge and Ian Jensen to be somewhere near the top of that packing order in, in a strong breeze. For sure, and uh, they're used to going at huge speeds now. They're, they're still we're working as a team together with Artemis Racing, and uh, we just heard Brad say, uh, you know, when the racing's fast, your mind gets up to that speed. So they may not feel like today's particularly fast. They may, you know, take, take in the sensory at a, at a different speed than everyone else. And uh, they may be very comfortable, uh, more so than that, some of their more practiced uh, competitors here today. So I, have an, I have a feeling an awful lot of these teams are going to be feeling pretty good about the way their, their skills are at this first World Championships of the quadrennial. So it's about four minutes to the start. We've just seen the blue pizza go up. So we're going to get back into the sequence fairly shortly. And we've seen all sides of the course pay the women early, earlier on today. I, I would say maybe the left was slightly more favoured on the right, but we did, we did see a little bit of things work both ways, didn't we? Yeah, no clear patterns yet, basically. Uh, teams that get off the line well, teams that hold their lane well and are then are able to emerge and take a couple shifts uh, seem to have done pretty well, but uh, we've seen people do it from both the right and the left today. Um, and there's no reason to think that's going to change. Uh, if anything, the wind's just going to get a little bit stronger. Uh, and with it coming down out of the mountains and landing on the, on the ocean here, where, where the windward mark is very close to land, uh, the randomness to it will, will continue. So there's no particular reason why there should be a trend in, uh, in the course overall. So anyone that you can spot as being particularly good in this kind of breezy, shifty conditions, is there anyone who really stands out? Well, Nathan Outeridge actually does stand out because it wasn't so dissimilar in Melbourne, 2008 Worlds. And, uh, he was on fire. I remember uh, coming in off the first windy, shifty day from shore and our coach saying, guess how many times Nathan tacked in that beat? And our guess was four to six, which is basically what everyone does typically, and it was 12. Wow. Um, so wow. he was just picking up the shifts. He was really comfortable with his boat handling, being able to jump on them and off them. And uh, it's not as shifty right now as, uh, as it was that day, but I can't, you know, I, I can see him doing that. Uh, other guys who are looking uh, good here, I w I'll tell you one thing. I'll be interested to see how Benjamin Dutchstein and David Husserl um, do today because it's very difficult to, it's very difficult. Uh, these guys are the first year in the boat, Benjamin Dutchstein and David Husserl. It's very difficult for, uh, for us to uh, know how they'll handle this kind of breeze. They, it's been a light air world so far. They've done exceptionally well. But this is a whole different kettle of fish, right? Well, I, I predicted Sarah stay out wrong, so I'm going to make that prediction and say this is far too hard for someone in their first year of 49er racing to do any good in, in these kind of conditions. So there you go, boys. I tend to agree with you on this one. <laughs> um, they're a little bit undersized, fantastic guys, and really nice people. But uh, I think 
the experience here of almost all these teams in the fleet are going to come through. We saw uh, also some guys take a break where uh, Peter Burling and Blair too. Uh, their boat handling at the Europeans was on fire. I saw them pull off one of the prettiest jibes I've seen uh, just 20 feet away from me. And that's the kind of boat handling that can really help you in a day like this where it's going to be tight racing, there's going to be puffs that you have to react to, and if you can have that really crisp boat handling with confidence, it could be what separates you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they we talk about maneuvers slowing you down and, and um, trying to minimize the maneuvers. I think we saw jibes from the Kiwis where they were actually faster for doing the jibes. So we're under one minute to go. Uh, the flag went down about 10 seconds ago. John Pink, fourth place overall, was uh, GBR 19. He's setting up nicely at the boat. Now we're looking at the pin. Uh, that's Lowry Lettinen, Finland 49, middle of the line. Looks like the, the Brits in the middle with the, the big yellow one on their sail are quite far back at the moment. Yeah, in the breeze, you can set up a little deeper, but you gotta watch out that someone doesn't take up your real estate. Uh, that's Strammer and Brown in USA, what it looks like a 122 or a 222, uh, setting up uh, just below the line. And that uh, New Zealand 6, that's Burling and Toot. And that's John Pink in GBR 19. And above him, Jorge Lima, who joined us this morning. Uh, for the Portuguese, he's just gonna slip in uh, at the boat. Looks like everyone's gonna have space. It's gotta be in the last 10 seconds here. And we'll see, uh, well, there they go, they're off. Right, and it looks like... Oh, Dylan, he was far back because he set up on port. Okay, so that's the reason. So Dylan's going for the port tax start, the series leader at the moment, reckoning that he wants to go right. And there he goes. Most left hand on our picture, but actually going right as they look at it, going, going up the course. And it looks like John Pink, third overall at the moment, is also doing the same. So the Brits are making a charge for the right hand side of the course. So is Alan Norgaard in uh, Denmark. Oh no, that's uh, Jonas Warer, Denmark 30. So those guy, the guys at the top of the fleet looking to go right. Uh, middle of the line here, Ireland 99. That's Ryan Seaton and Matt McGovern. Here's our leaders overall and uh, possibly in this race, Dylan and Alan. Looking really good. Yeah. Uh, gotta like the way they're cruising up with those waves there. Well, and the great thing about doing what they did is that immediately you, you have space to sail how you want. You're not fighting with everybody else. But look at the number of the, the boats that are going out to the right-hand side. They really like the right-hand side. New Zealand 2, that's Burlington 2. And they've crossed Dylan and Allen. Dylan and Allen have come in and they've attacked on starboard and forced Pinky. Uh, meanwhile, they're getting... So not a great start Not a great start, not no. at all. wonder why they attack back so well. Must be a start ship because the, the, the Danish boat did the same thing. Burlington 2, I think, are our leaders right now. Center of screen. And uh, they've stayed on starboard, but we're going to see Jonas War, J Denmark 30. He's coming back and he's getting passed by Lowry Lettinen and also George Lima, Portugal 27, ahead of Berlingen 2. So, and there he's tacking as well. So, it'll be, I'd really love to know why they're all tacking in that same spot. They can't be on ley line, surely. And, surely uh, not after, after such a short time. It, must ju it just be, must be. It must be some sort of shift, and that's. Uh, Hanson and Porbeski. So here's Ireland 99 uh, st have stayed on starboard the entire time and uh, meanwhile the guys in the back of the screen are actually quite far away from them uh, and they've done a couple tacks already. So Ireland 99, great start from them and they take a little header actually if they if they'd love a header right now they can tack and cross. Uh, Denmark 28, that's Alan Norgaard and Alders Thompson and there we see Nathan Outridge for the first time, Australia 1, uh, carrying the big numero uno uh, from winning his world last year. So uh, he's got the line nicely, and uh, Arturo Alonso, Spain 9, France 8 is Dottoli and Delft that we're talking about, uh, Delpesh. He was kind enough to come and talk to us, uh, talk with us on the commentary this morning. The Portuguese also came along and talked with us. They're also doing very well, so it seems to pay to come and help us out on the commentary here. That's what I'm thinking. Two, two data points, I think, a pen. <laughs> we already established that. So I'm, I'm going to guess here that uh, the Irish have moved. Did we see any of the other boats? So just bringing up Warren, the, tracking, uh, the Irish are normally in the lead according to the tracking. Uh, a long, well, no, it's, it's we're very gonna see the, We're going to see the two packs come together here. Nathan Outer just leading uh, the left group back right, and uh, he's, so the, uh, the Irish get the nice bonus of uh, having him to gauge how they're going to uh, approach with the guys who went right early, guys like Dylan and Allen and uh, Burling and Took. Uh, you can see how close this racing is. Uh, all the boats are still basically in the line. 
uh, or at least a big pack of wind. I'm wondering when was the last time we saw Nathan Outridge and Ian Jensen under this kind of pressure? Because normally they lead from the front. This, if this is a regatta, they're going to win. They're going to have to win it coming from behind with a lot of pressure. So we saw we, we saw that in the America's Cup just a few days ago with the Australians on board that boat, James Spithill. Will these Australians be able to do the same? That's it's a very good point. sort of situation. You know, we talked about earlier how difficult the task would have been. It's going to be for him to make the top nine today. And he's come out with a great start uh, in the lead couple boats here in the first beat. And if he can have uh, an amazing day, that would be one worth talking about, just like we saw from James Spithill. It would. It would. That, that's the kind of performance we're going to need to see from him if he's going to win this World Championships. Looks like John Pink is far right boat uh, in still in clear air. Hansen and Porebs attack middle of the fleet and have to duck their countrymen. Burling and Took. Uh, we've got uh, Dortoli and Delpesh, uh, France 8, uh, and uh, Burling and Took attack just underneath them. And then the other French that we were just talking about, Manu and Stefan, France 4, uh, in a really tough hole right there. And, and I'm sure at this point in the beat they don't want to have to do another couple tacks, so they might just sit and take that bad air. And just to the right of the picture, the Irish also doing very well in the distance. They looked a little lower on their angle though, so I think maybe something might be coming off the left uh, that Do Nor Dortoli and Delpeche may be getting. We did see the French stay art in the 49er FX. Really seemed to know what was happening in this breeze up wind. Interesting point. Yeah, do the French know what the, what the others don't know, which is that maybe the left hand side at the top of this course is the way to go. Is that a trend? We'll find out fairly <laughs> shortly. Here come the Irish. The Irish tacked underneath as well, so um, and the Irish are looking good here. I'm, I'm going to... Well, it'll be interesting to see where Nathan comes in from. Has he gone far right? I think he has. I can't see him on the on the tracking at the moment. Um, yes, he's one of the furthest right. He's not super far right. Okay, and the Irish are going to tack and go to the right gate. So Nathan uh, is only in the top group. He's not a uh, good, good lead for the Irish, and then it's going to be really tight amongst this next group. There's a foreign... You know, that's Norgard, 28, Furling and Toot happen to go outside him. And, and how oh, there's boats? Nathan in third. Okay. But, I mean, pretty much sailed under the whole fleet there when they hoisted, so that's how much it shifted left. Yeah. So that left really did play at the end, just as we saw with the girls. Wow, just, just three just three boats rounded cleanly, and everyone else has kind of held themselves up as they tacked and uh, went around this mark. So, so uh, you reckon the Aussies are rounded the third, did you? Yeah, Ruggiero and Tito, the Italians, we haven't talked about them yet, and here's uh, Benjamin Bilton and uh, David Hussel, Australia, third overall right now. Jorge Lima just rounding. Oh, gosh, it's going to be tough. The Japanese, they've had a pretty good regatta. It's an amazingly consistent performance, the Japanese on circuit. Okay, um, there's... What, is oh. there a, a, a rematch from last year's Olympics. Uh, Ryan Norgard with the bronze medal, Nathan Edwards with the gold, and wow, Nathan is going quickly. He's on fire, way. isn't he? He knows he's got a lot to do. Is he going to get through there? My goodness. He's not hanging about. He, uh, they're, they're a much heavier team than the than the Danes, right? Yeah, the Danes were in here this morning saying how they died to do some theater stuff, or some tower trapezing, tower trapezing and it doesn't look like uh, Nathan and uh, Goobs have been dieting this year. It looks like they've been... Uh, putting on a lot of muscle for that AC racing. Yeah. Still well out in front are Matt McGovern and Ryan Seaton, another couple guys with muscle. Ryan Seaton actually got in a boxing ring for charity this winter. Uh, while Matt was working, they took a time, little break, but uh, they didn't take a break from the gym. Wow. Wow, so um, there the we Lonzo are. Brothers. That? that was a brilliant looks like they're trying to win that second pack. Okay. Uh, battling for fourth. Uh, the first three have definitely got a bit of separation up this first beat. Here's the Irish coming straight at us, the leaders with their Providence uh, Providence Security, I think it is, uh, sponsorship, looking amazingly uh, secure out front. Uh, so if you could call secure being uh, ripping down wind on a skiff, hopefully we get the jibe coming up here. They're going to go for it. And uh, hey, we got uh, Saskia and... Uh, Andrea, Andrea coming in straight <laughs> off the water. Um, thanks for joining us, girls. Uh, they just got in from the 49er FX group. And it's a good race for the Irish. Yeah, yeah it is a good race for the Irish. Country woman here uh, to cheer them on. Did Matt just do a hand drag in the water? <laughs> he knows he's on TV, that's the thing. He's such a show off, isn't he, girls? Kind of good, yeah. It's all show. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, just, uh, nice drive drop. And they're back around. Going out to the right hand side as they're looking at it. And so that's a gain for the Australians already up into second place. 
looking very, very good. So this is what the Aussies needed to do. They need they need to have a great day, as we've been saying, Ben and Nathan Altridge and Ian Jensen, they got their bit between the teeth. Could they get past the Irish? The Irish had a good lead, but the way the Aussies are going. I say they had the weight advantage on uh, on Norgard, but they're not going to have the weight advantage over the Irish. So uh, they do train together quite a bit. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, if, if Nathan and Goobs can uh, keep tracking up. But uh, Dane's still doing well here, uh, third place. Uh, there's Strammer and Brown having a safety jibe, so it must be pretty full on. Uh, some of the guys are pulling safety jibes off in the middle of the race course. We don't like to see that, do we? No, no, we like to see go for jibes. Yeah. And so the younger Kiwis, they're all young, aren't they? But we the, saw the younger Kiwis just tacking there. And there's Alan Norigard. Just, hip, like up, just hip up on the Irish. Yeah. Just keeping a lane out. Uh, he'll be uh, at third place. He'll be happy just to cover the fleet, I think, and, uh, and secure well, he, a nice he's got, safe to, he's got to do some good work as well, hasn't he? He's, he's currently outside the top ten. Yeah, he's in 11th right now. Only uh, only five points back of the Magic Nine. Uh, but he'll, So this you know, race he, will put him in there. He'll be more ambitious than that, though. He'll be looking to push all the way into the top group because he's only he's only 25 points, 30 points from the lead. And in a, oh, there's Dylan. Speaking of the series lead, leaders, Dylan and yeah. Alan. Uh, Not a great race for them. Their so best far. race looks like they overstood. Look at that boat handling as they uh, had to. They overstood, had to do a, jo a drop and then a two sail rounding. That's well, hard nice work, try. and they kept it perfectly flat. Yeah, uh, those guys have been putting in the time, so that boat handling really pays off. Center of screen, France 14 is uh, Matthew Frey and Jan Rocheru, and here's the Aussies and Goobies. So. Um, Oh gosh, the Irish. It looks, way looks back, like the Kiwis but have made a game, and it's hard to tell with this perspective. Yeah, it's hard to tell with this perspective, but it looks like Nathan's legged it out. Uh, and I think you're about to confirm that on the GPS, on Andy. He he looks like it looks like Nathan and Ian, the Aussies, have moved into the lead. I'm trying to find with. So the Irish, uh, they went out to the right. They're now following the Aussies out to the left. So I think they made a tactical mistake. The Irish. It looks like the Aussies. Have kept on going left. Have, have made the gains. We saw the top of that last beat that the left paid heavily, and uh, looks to me like Burling and Took, uh, New Zealand two, are going to cross ahead of the Aussies. And it does look that way. They weren't even in the picture in the first down, unless our cameras completely missed them, which is possible. I'm not sure that they're showing up on the tracking, so maybe they've been having a better race than we thought. The Alonso brothers, Spain nine, uh, snuck around that winner mark just a uh, just with a good lane. And uh, held on uh, well, and yeah, Berlin too. So, speaking of a repeat of the Olympics, this is actually one, two, three from the last Olympics. We've got Nathan Outridge, <laughs> Berlin and Tuke, uh, and then uh, and uh, Alan Norgard third, battling with the Irish. But, but the Aussies yeah. were the, the standout runaway winners of the Olympics and the, the dominant force in the World Championships for some time. I'm wondering if uh, Pete Berling and Blair Tuke are thinking their time has come. They, they won the European Championships, and I'm wondering if they're thinking, you know what, it's about time we won one of these worlds as well. Irish down to fourth here, they've, uh, they've fallen back into the pack, uh, unfortunately. That happened in a short space of time, didn't it? Going around that other mark really didn't work for them. It is shifty, yeah. It is shifty. Yeah, they're still, oh, still getting third. across. Okay, still so getting still across third. Up there. And, uh, and we'll see how the Alonzos do here on uh, their... Oh, no, so obviously a shift in there. Uh, Alan had to tap. Look how steady, rock steady the Kiwis look. Uh, even Nathan, Nathan's got a little bit of bobbles, uh, but you don't see anything in terms of movement from the, no. the New Zealand boat. And so those two desserts they had last night, they seem to be paying off at the moment. Yeah, we, uh, we got to join them for dinner last night and they uh, <laughs> yeah, we, weren't shy. No, no, they, they, they were packing it in. They, they reckoned the breeze was coming in today and, and so it seems. Bonza Brothers, long time uh, veterans of the circuit. Uh, let's see how they're doing overall this week. They're in 12th place, um, so tied on points with Alan Norgard. So they too will be looking to get in the top nine and progress through the finals, starting out with a good race today. Ooh, you said they were steady, but they weren't so steady there, the Kiwis. Yeah, you see that line, that line uh, they just sailed into. So it surprised me a little bit, they didn't get it right. And another one, I wonder if uh, the Aussies, uh, out to the good of them, might be profiting from that. But you can see how much the mains time to time. It's a real blast of breeze there. It's real lines of hard gust. I'm uh, stunned by the coastline right now. Wonderful bay we're sailing in today. Fantastic. Yeah. 
And finally, we're seeing what Marseille is all about. The only thing that's missing is the sunshine. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Tack from the Aussies. Let's see who's got this. Let's see if our man can zoom in. Oh, yeah. Aussies are way ahead. Okay, so Nathan needs a big step up in his game today, and he's starting out in the right foot, that's for sure. How's the barrel like? Oh, Goob's in there. Straight leap. No problem at all. Kite up. Get it set, boys. Off they go. Quite a nice lead there. So the gold medalist in the Olympics, followed by the silver medalist in the Olympics. Oh, they had to go around the uh, Alonzos. So, so a good game for the Alonzos. Drop back from fourth, uh, from first all the way at least to fourth or fifth, eh? Yeah, yeah. Some big snakes and ladders on this one. Very slow bear away there for the Spanish, but they get away with it. And not quite so fast on the hoist, but they're off and away. We got a come on, boys, from Saskia here a second ago. As uh, we'll see if uh, we'll see if the Irish can s sail through. The lead. Oh, a, little, a little slow on that hoist there for Matt. You can give him a little grief later. <laughs> Noé Delph and uh, Julian Dortoli, France 8, Manu Dion, Stefan Christidis, having to go around the outside of uh, Jonas War. And you can see the breeze on the water now, that really has picked up, hasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty full on. But it's hard to imagine that the Kiwis and the blue kite are going to catch the red kite of the Australians at this stage. It seems like maybe Nathan and Ian haven't forgotten how to sell the 49er after all. <laughs> Well, they got tangled up a little bit yesterday. We saw them with a black flag and an incident. They ended up in the protest room. So even though their results were as bad as we've ever seen from them, it wasn't like they were sailing badly the whole day. A couple, the, the race that they were black flagged, I think they were third across the line. And uh, I don't know exactly what happened in the incident where they ended up protesting and winning the protest against Jonas War. But uh, certainly any time you end up in the protest room at the end of the day, it hasn't been your favorite day. No, and I was speaking to Nathan the day before that, actually, and, and he said one of the mistakes they made at those Olympics in 2008 was they kept on getting into trouble. They got into marginal situations and ended up doing really badly. So ever since they've tried to stay out of trouble, and then a day later, he has another day where he can't get out of trouble. Sometimes, no matter how much hard, how hard you try, it's the nature of 49er racing. You're going to get caught up in other people's business. Especially uh, this week, we've got our 20-minute courses. Uh, everyone's close by nature. The first beat, you're never going to sail. Uh, you're never going to sail cleanly, uh, completely, anyways. And, and also, you got the windward gates, which are a new thing, and a new thing even for Nathan and Ian because they only came in this year, right? So they they got very limited experience of, of these windward gates. We may see them only go around the regular way. They may not know how to do a left-handed barrel. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's them. So for that's the finish. Them. Good job. Fellas. Nice work, boys. And, uh, so. Eight, 18th Canada going vote. up to I wonder where after after we resolve this race. It's got to help them out a lot. Burling and Took, a solid uh, a solid Once. finish there. They're in sixth second. going into today. That second place or fifth going into today. That second place will put them up. Uh, probably put them up into third, if not second. Uh, we'll see where Dylan and Alan come in. We haven't seen much of them from our cameras. No, and they, a great start. They only had a 10 point lead after basically dominating the first half of this regatta. So that'll put them back in the picture. There's the Irish and locked, locked in the whole way down wind. So maybe no a way. fourth, maybe a fifth. Maybe a fourth, maybe a fifth. Good race for them. And that's uh, Julianne Dortoli, France 8. Uh, that, he's in eighth overall, seventh overall. Good race there. Oh, that's uh, France 8. Sorry, so that was Manu and Stefan got around. Oh, no, that's them finishing right now. Okay, great. No, that was the uh, that was the one. So, somewhere in there was NZL six as well. They've had a good race. Oh, did they? Okay, so that was yeah. Abby who we saw go through. So all the single digit numbers. That was these guys' place at the last year's World Championships. So uh, if you get a single digit number, that's because of the placing at your previous Worlds. Double digit numbers means you've been in the top twenty five at a World Championships. But you can choose any number you want. Okay. For the rest of the way. So quite big gaps here now for the rest of the race. Who do we see those? That's there? Matthew Frey and Jan Rocheroux. Okay. Uh, good race. I think mean, that's a tenth, and I think they're in fourteenth overall, so probably one to keep. Uh, can't see that sale number. It's not, not a good angle for sale numbers, is it? Not really. No, was that a seventy-seven, Stevie Morrison? Well, we haven't spoken about them, have we? Yeah, he usually sells with a light blue kite, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, that could well be and there's Pinky. Uh, so that's uh, about 11th or 12th place. Uh, we saw the Brits all go right off that start line and yeah. they being very heavily left favoured. Didn't work out for them. Yeah. This is Rigero uh, Tita. Yeah. Italian and the Trentino spinnaker. Trentino region is where we did our and I think European coming up soon we'll see Garda. Dylan and Alan. There they are. There they are. Dylan and Alan there. Series so leaders. At about 14th. That's not great for them. So they, they may well have given up their lead after that. They'll still be very much uh, at the, somewhere at the top of the rankings, but uh, not the cushion that they went into this race with. Dylan's very much an optimizer of things. You know, he, he loves that pin start. He clearly went through the port stack start that time, but all week in the light winds we've been seeing the pin starts from him. And he also is one of the lighter teams. He, he and Alan reckon they like to try and hang in in the breeze, rely on their skills, and then use their weight advantage in the light winds to really pull ahead of guys of other teams. And, uh, and it certainly worked this week. They're in the lead by uh, quite a ways. But now that the breeze is up, uh, we saw how Nathan Edwards powered through underneath uh, Alan Norgard. Oh, like bunch of them. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the girls. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys so, catch the faces? So Saskia and Andrea from Ireland, that must have been nice to see the boys get a good race there. Okay, they didn't win it, but they, they got a fourth or a fifth, right? Yeah, yeah, really good. They've been racing really well this week. It's just so brilliant to have them here with us. We've got a lot of waiting around, so you've got a, had a lot of chance to pick up tips right now. Yeah, it's great. We can, you know, sit with uh, also Barker who's picking them. So, um, I know it's been good. Ross catching some sun, so it's been uh, a good chat here. It's like having to sit with lots of people to ride and nice and quiet over in our tent. So. <laughs> Andrea, you guys are a new team. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about how... Uh, about uh, the recent developments in the Irish uh, 49er FX teaming. Yeah, so uh, originally at European Tokyo was training in Australia, and now we're training with uh, someone else. And we decided that um, it would be better if we teamed up together to make one more team. Stick around, we've done some. It won't be long between races. 
races. Uh, we can see some of the teams limping through the finish line, but uh, it'll be you might even already see the six minutes. So we'll be back very shortly. Well, thank you. Thank you. Santiago Lange from Argentina, winner of two Olympic medals. Are you aiming for third here in Marseille? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, I'm here just watching my sons. Uh, normally, in the, uh, since uh, this regatta, I always decide not to coach my sons. So, you know, uh, for me, my, as a father, my priority was that they do whatever they love in life. In life. Uh, so I didn't want to them to do it because of what I have been doing in saying. So, Jacob, uh, for example, only started saying when he was 19, and Klaus when he was 13, and it was always their choice. And normally we speak about saying only when they ask more than me talking about saying, even if I love to talk about saying. But, uh, but now was the time, you know, they are really into it, and uh, they were really, really anxious for me to come and coach them. And, uh, we have a, I came here because it was a long time without seeing them, and uh, just before starting coaching, I have a serious conversation that I am a father first, and then I am a coach. And, uh, we set it up pretty well in a good chat, and uh, I am enjoying it a lot. It's really, really, we have done a really, really good work and uh, enjoying together, which is the primary goal. So this is your son's first United World Championship, right? It's the first regatta. They've been saying for four months or something like that. They came to San Francisco to train. That was a good experience as well. They managed to leave uh, an America's Cup team. Was thanks to Artemis, you know, the lead in between to the team and to the base and all that was a good experience for them and for me to share it with all the team and them. And then uh, they came here to Europe and it's now uh, they are around the four months of uh, sailing the 49 so you just said that uh, you were at Artemis racing in San Francisco and we've seen some amazing action out <laughs> there and, and we've seen the evolution of catamarans into boiling catamarans. Uh, what's that experience like for you in observing that kind of technology leap? Well, the Artemis campaign is a tough one, but uh, uh, leaving that aside, uh, I think the gap is unbelievable. I think no one that, you know, it's pretty obvious that what we have seen is history and uh, you know it's it's amazing uh, it's no word for it you know and uh, I, i'm a big fan of uh, developing the sports for a long time you know when 2000 they picked the 29er the 49er i think was a great call by Isab. i really believe that we should have uh, you know popular classes like the laser or whatever to make sure we can in the sailing and in the Olympics, like windsurfing or probably the hobby 16, whatever they want, and make sure we have as many countries sailing as possible. And then we need the technical boat and we need to keep growing. And uh, I think it's great that the planes exist and hopefully it will kind of a wind design. And now it's great that the America's Cup for me is what we got. And I really, honestly, for a long time believe in that, and I'm so happy that. We, uh, the America's Cup end up uh, being what it is today. And we've seen the beginning of 49ers hydrofoiling as well, just for fun, not in competition. <laughs> is this something you could see in the future, a hydrofoiling 49er in a World Championship? Well, that's a really good question for Julian Perthwaite or, or, or Nathan or the guys that really know the boat. I don't know the boat so well. Obviously, it looks like the boat, that the sport is going in that direction. We see people surfing, foiling, we see kite surfing, foiling. It's manageable, uh, you know, still the question is, you know, what are the steps we need to do to get there, uh, you know, I think we need to have a plan more than be by coincidence, by people doing the flying most in the backyard or the catamarans in America's Cup just because Team Zealand have done a, a 
outstanding job. Uh, but, uh, yeah, let's see whatever it takes to move forward and it's a good, well uh, plan, you know, say, okay, by this year, 2020, we should have a falling vote in Congress or whatever we think. But, uh, but yes, for sure, uh, I think sports should continue to develop. Santiago Lange from Argentina, winner of two Olympic medals. Are you aiming for a third here in Marseille? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, I'm here just watching my sons. Uh, normally, in the, uh, since uh, this regatta, I always decide not to coach my sons. So, you know, for me, my, as a father, my priority was that they do whatever they love in life. In life. And so I didn't want to them to do it because of what I have been doing in sailing. So, uh, Iago, for example, only started sailing when he was 19, and uh, Klaus when he was 13, and it was always their choice. And uh, Normally we speak about sailing only when they ask more than me talking about sailing, even if I love to talk about sailing. But, um, but now was the time, you know, they are really into it, and uh, they were really, really anxious for me to come and coach them, and uh, we have a I came here because it was a long time without seeing them and uh, just before starting coaching I have a serious conversation that I am a father first and then I am a coach and uh, we set it up pretty well in a good chat and uh, I am enjoying it a lot, it's really really, we have done a really really good work and uh, enjoying it together which is the primary goal. So this is your son's first 49 World Championship right? It's the first regatta, they've been staying for four months or something like that, they came to San Francisco to train, that was a good experience as well, they managed to leave uh, an America's campaign was thank you to Artemis, you know, to let him bring to the team and to the base, and that was a really great experience for them, and to share it with all the team and them, and then uh, they came here to Europe, and it's now uh, they are around the four months of uh, staying in the 49ers. Okay, so you just said that uh, you were a pessimist racing in San Francisco, and we've just seen some amazing action out there and, and we see the evolution of catamarans into boiling catamarans. Uh, what was that experience like for you of observing that kind of technology leap? Well, the Artemis campaign was a tough one, but uh, uh, leaving that aside, uh, I think the cap is unbelievable. I think no one that, you know, it's pretty obvious that what we have seen is, is history and, uh, you know, it's it's amazing, uh, it's no words for it, you know, and uh, I, I'm a big fan of uh, developing the sports for a long time, you know, when 2000 they picked the 29er, the 49er, I think was a great call by the ISAF, I really believe that, uh, you know, popular classes like the laser or whatever to make sure we have countries in the in sailing and in the Olympics, like in surfing or probably the Hobby 16, whatever they want and make sure we have as many countries sailing as possible. But then we need the spectacular boat and we need to keep growing. And uh, I think it's great that flying mods exist and hopefully we get to a kind of a one design. And now it's great that the America's Cup is what we got. I really, honestly, for a long time believe in that. And I am so happy that uh, we the America's Cup end up uh, being what it is today. And we've seen the beginning of 49ers hydrofoiling as well, just for fun, not in competition. <laughs> is, is this something you could see in the future, a hydrofoiling 49er in a world championship? Well, that's a really good question for Julian Westwaite or, or, or Nathan or the guys that really knows the boat. I don't know. Well, obviously, it looks like the, boat, that the sport is going in that direction. We see people surfing foiling, we see kite surfing. Don't that, right? Someone else is going to say that. The Seiko 49er World Championships in Marseille, and you are the coach of the German FX team, is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, I'm coaching the team now for, well, almost a year. And, um, well, it's a very strong team. We have five boats, and uh, we hope for a good result. And it's been a good first year for German FX racing. It's, it's a new thing in Olympic sailing, women's skiff racing. Uh, Germany's got into it in a big way. What, what were the reasons for that and why do you think they were so successful so early on? Well, it's a very exciting boat and um, it's, I think, the, a good choice that the 49er FX is the boat for the girls. Um, I sailed a lot and really liked the boat and um, well, the girls are really into it coming out of, uh, of the other boats' classes and 
and it's so much fun to say the boat really. Max, what qualifies you as a, an FX coach in your own right? Just tell us a little bit about your own history. Um, I set the 49er for well, years, maybe eight years, and um, I had an Olympic campaign, went to the Games in, in Athens 2004, and the world. So um, I think I've been quite a good expert and the um, girls And where have the girls come from? What kind of racing background have they come from? Um, very different. Uh, some girls are out of the 470, some are out of the laser. 29er, so it's a um, big variety, but um, that's also fun, and you know, just uh, yeah, you just gotta take it, yeah. And so, from those different backgrounds, does that mean that they need to focus on different priorities, and does that mean you, you're working on different things with different teams in the group? Definitely. I mean, we have uh, girls in, in our team, um, uh, and they have done a complete Olympic campaign. Um, they know, know all about tactics and, and strategy, and we have teams coming from the 29er. They know a lot about boat handling, and um, if you put it all together, you might be successful. And who do you think has got the best background coming into this? Where, where, if it was you, where, what would you rather have done? Would it have been the Olympic campaigning in an older type of boat, like a 470? With the background of the boat handling, like the 29er? It's very hard to say. Um, we are so early uh, in the new class, so um, I think, well, it's, you know, good thing having done an uh, Olympic campaign is that you know how to approach a campaign professionally, you know what is important, what might be not so important, but coming out of uh, the 29er, you know a lot about boat handling, you know exactly how to trim the kite, how to do tacks and drives. That is right now a big benefit for, for example, Ida Marie, she's winning a lot. Um, but she's the European champion, she's right? She's the European champion. She's in Palma Week. Uh, she won more or less everything where she started. But um, So this is the Danish sailor? That's the Danish sailor. But um, it might change. You never know. Um, Welcome back to the Seiko 49er World Championship in Marseille. I'm Andy Rice with Ben Ramoka, and we're just coming up to the start of the second race today for the men. This is the top 20, battling it out to see who can get one of those top nine spots to go through. Yeah, and luckily joined in the studio by Martin Bale and from Francis Peters. So they just got off the water, we got to watch them uh, couple hours and uh, this is race two of what we see today uh, which is fantastic breeze is on uh, shifty offshore and we've got the top 21 boats of this regatta all battling it out um, and the, the top team in the world the, the one with the one on the sail the Australians they have a lot to do today they need to climb up from 18th place overnight to get into these top nine if they have any chance of holding on to the world title but they did the right thing really just happened. Yeah, we're under a minute. And we talked at the beginning of the day how they had 30 points to make up on uh, Dylan and Alan. Uh, or no, just to make the top nine. But with the win in the last race, uh, they'll have made up already at least half those points. So, uh, great start to their comeback. And we, we just saw that the, uh, the, the guys who were leading this series going into today, the, the British GBR 96, sign, choosing the opposite end of the line this time maybe. Unless they are going for another... Uh, port tech start underneath the fleet, and it they're looks off. like they are. Yeah, that's that's exactly what they're doing. 
didn't work for them last time. Why are they doing it again, I wonder? I'm just seeing uh, Nathan Outeridge, second boat in from the boat. Uh, had a good start there. Well, we're now at the pin end of the line. The Alonzo brothers, who are sixth last race. There's a... Uh, okay, but the farthest uh, right boat in our screen, the French, uh, Manu Dien and Stefan Christidis. Uh, great start from them. They've already pulled up some height on Nathan Outeridge. They can now start to steer whatever line they want. And uh, Nathan's had a good race. He's pinching out Peter Burling and Blair Two, uh, who are in New Zealand Two. Uh, on the far left, the British uh, start. Just one. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, they'll have been disappointed with that. That was a that was an epic battle coming up there. Well, anyways, we Fra Francis Peters, you know all about the port tax start underneath the fleet. That's your that's your favourite start, isn't it? And it worked beautifully for you at the European Championships in Aarhus and Denmark earlier this summer. But we just saw Dylan Allen have a great start because they one start, but they couldn't make anything of it two minutes later. So, what, would you be thinking about doing that in these conditions? Um, I guess it depends. I, I, we did try it once today and, and it was quite difficult because there was a big bunch of boats up at the starboard, at the starboard end. It worked for us quite well at the Europeans just because it was a small fleet of boats and everyone was quite clean off the line so we could get clear and, and then with the theatre style as well it helps. Um, and it can sometimes be a bit harder in, in racing like this depending on how many boats you've got there racked up at the starboard end. Um, and I guess as well just where the pressure's coming down. So, yeah, I knew a lot about the pressure because we uh, had a bad start once and we had to go uh, straight to the right and we just couldn't get the other pressure from there. So, so when the pressure is so localized like that, Martina, what, what do you think is going to be from the on the last down when we saw. Yeah, yeah, definitely. When I saw the finish line, it was like already in our battle. It was pretty nice. So I think we got it. You passed a few boats on that last time. That's been a good way to finish the day. Yeah, of course. Yeah. One of those boats you passed was Francis, I think. Yeah. Maybe you could tell, tell us what you saw and how you got past Francis. Did you see them? Yeah, we, of course we saw them. But, uh, well, after we ran the mark, we got the pressure that we ended up in the race. So we uh, immediately tried to jive. We had a little bit of trouble, but and we just I mean, ran for the finish. It was nice because we ran over them. <laughs> Francis, you, you trialed a different sport down that last run, didn't you? Tell us about it. Yeah, we were skiing. Yeah. Um, sounds like we're a bit rusty going today after so much life and so um, And just in that last drive into the finish, I just couldn't get into the boat, got caught, my legs got taken off the side by a wave. <laughs> I was just clinging on for dear life. Um, so we saved it, we didn't capsize, but we did lose a couple of places from it, which was a real shame. But. Yeah, but you were very. Uh, <coughs> you did very well not capsizing because I think a uh, big part of the fleet was having some trouble yeah. at some, some stage this race. There's a lot of capsizing going on today, wasn't there? And, uh, we, we, we saw many of the first capsizing twice in one race. So, uh, one of them they on us. <laughs> Where was that? Was that the finish line or no, the, the was, mark? I don't know if it was this last race or the, the race before, but they uh, they were in port and they died because we were coming and they did it really close to us. And when we were going to avoid them, they kept size, so their mass like came like this. And I I didn't see what happened after. I think she kept size and I was going to... Almost sure we're gonna break two masks, but I don't think that happened. So they hit you? Or you hit? <laughs> Look, I didn't yeah. see it really well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I wasn't looking up because their, their masks were just like shooting the windpipe. Sorry, it's not a protest. The TV the, uh, the uh, no, wind uh, coming through here is as strong as we felt it, I will say that. Uh, so I'm interested to see how the men are going to deal with all these pups coming in. It looks like they got the black flag in this time. Yeah, yeah. we're in, inside four minutes. Uh, do you guys have any results from the women to put up the men? In two minutes? Oh, the women. Give it a the women's results. Oh, but we don't have them to look at, so maybe that's a little bit. Hard to stay close to the line with this win, and with the votes with 
bigger breeze, they get very unstable. So we had some situations going on. You need some forward mo movement to keep the boat stable, do you? So it's yeah, so like when we uh, we were a stop, if there was too many people together, we had to too much forward to go out of the line, which seems to be happening a lot, happening a lot today. There's a bit of a back waves, so it's getting everything higher. Okay. Yeah. Once you end up too far forward in this kind of stuff, it's really hard to get back because of the boat handling. Um, it's a big bear away, isn't it? It's, it's a, a big bear away and, and reversing is quite difficult, especially when you've got a lot of boats around you. Yeah. Um, we're just, so, yeah, so we're so just looking at the start line here. Uh, less or just around two minutes to go to the start and all the teams are already lined up. Okay, that, that was the black flags just got down, so we're under a minute to go. And as we see, 49 are about to take down their main sail to uh, get back into shore, actually. But so we'll focus on the... Up on the boat end is uh, Jonas Warrow, Denmark 30, that's the 2008 Olympic champion. And uh, well, that, that was uh, a windy medal race that led to his victory. And uh, here we are, not quite as wavy as it was that day in China, but he's, he's going for the right hand end. Who's going to go for the, for the pin end, uh, for the, the port tack start underneath the fleet this final one? It looks to me like Dylan and Alan are going to do that again. Yes, this. Looks like Swedes. Oh, no, no, no Dylan and Alan. The, uh, don't forget that 2008 uh, race, the guys were about 135 kilos, and they're definitely not 135 kilos anymore, so... Or we well, like 155 kilos, right? So yeah. that's, that's sort of the going right now. So look, just getting going. So Martin, talk us through it, what, what you see there, who you like. Well, um, I think the right side is a lot favoured. Well off the start line are both Kiwi boats, two and six. Um, two is player two, and six is Marcus Hansen. Looking down the line, we see the finish, 49, that you probably let in. Pulling um, forward, I can't tell which Brit is above him. Uh, oh, does it look like 96, does it? So, um, I, I, could be 19. The, the finish and the Brits at GBR 96 are very close together, so. Uh, okay, so, yeah, well, they've just got, uh, Dylan's just got pinched out by Lowry Lenton and Cali Basque. So we won't be happy with that um, in a tough spot. And also tacking off early underneath the fleet is Australia 1, Nathan Outridge and Ian Jensen. Yeah, they're just leaving our screen now on the left. So not a good start for Nathan. Uh, we didn't actually see him for the first bunch of uh, time in the last start either. So we'll see if he can pull through. Not a great start to uh, turn this into another good scoring race, which is what he needs to do. In terms of the bulk of the fleet, uh, Denmark 30, the Jonas were looking very good. His committee work and start is serving him very well at the moment. And there's Dylan popping through, so he uh, he got forced off by the Finns and is now rejoining uh, actually the front group here. So Nathan's coming back, we got a tight cross with uh, Dylan and Nathan. He actually Dylan's easily across. And oh, attach right on. What if that was? Uh, it's hard to tell. Maybe the other one was the telelines. <laughs> Well, they look pretty close, that's for sure. And here's Peter Burling and Blair, too. They were one of the best teams off the line. They've already attacked uh, one time. So, the guys definitely look to look like they're trying to get a bit right, like you were saying, our team. Yeah, I think the, the bunch of bulls that passed uh, behind the, the bulls that started well and, and tapped again, I think they're doing quite well now. These are the three boats mostly in the conversation, aren't they? Dylan, uh, Peter, and, and Nathan. Uh, all in one frame, it's nice to get that. And it looks like the Kiwis are doing very well again. Second in the first race today, they, you wouldn't bet against them from that point. Uh, good to see them have a good day. They were in... Uh, Who are you looking for? Kiwis. Ki uh, six, fifth going into the day. Well, that, they are now leading after coming second in that other race. Okay. So if you, if you want me to run through... Alonso's having another good race. Let's get the seat. Yeah, it's hard to see the lenses. Yeah. It's really close this race. Look how tightly packed that bunch is. It's a lot of boats. It's only a 20 minute race. Do you know it's between the 20 and 30 minute races? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yesterday I noticed more than okay. today because uh, a little bit more races spread it out a little bit. But yesterday 
yesterday it was they were really close, so it's really hard to uh, go around the marks because everybody was at the same time. There were some unbelievably close mark roundings yesterday. Yeah. Like boats five wide going around, and we don't usually see that in the 49er. Yeah. But the coaches were really uh, happy to watch because it was <laughs> really fun to watch. But not being close. That was definitely one of the main challenges today, I think, with the boat handling of those who have marked. Uh, where, especially in the third race. From the outside, it always looks like people are dropping Jenica's too late. It always looks like people are giving, giving themselves too much to do. How, how does it feel? I think everything just happens so quickly at that stage. Just trying to find yourself a lane, trying to get yourself on the right tack to go around the mark as cleanly as you can. And you can always, if you, if you can leave it a bit last minute, and it's just all panic stage. Think ahead as much as you can and make sure you're going in with a clear line. It looks to me like the boats in from the right here in this race uh, have done well. Uh, we saw a lot of boats push right earlier than we, we might normally see, and we see the guys, the Alonzos, across through the uh, Lowry Letman now here to the north are uh, attacking back on the right. So everyone's uh, pushing right, and uh, good race for me. Oh, this is Jonas War, sorry, not Alan No, no, I think you were right. No, no, you remember, yeah. Yeah, that's Alan Noah 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 Yeah. Yeah, there's Burling and Took in uh, New Zealand too, who, who were the early leaders in this race, and the tight angle between the two. So which which bit of wind will hold? It always looks like it, it's favoured up to the left hand side as you come towards these top marks. I don't know if it felt like that, but we, we're seeing a lot of boats do quite well on the left towards the top end of the course. I think that I feel was. Have popped themselves ahead of both those boats, so yeah. I'm pretty sure the Kiwis didn't have Allen. And uh, now the Alonso's, you, you pointed out, they got two ships, didn't they? Yeah, but I think they have two, two tags or maybe one to the, to the mark. So maybe there, who went to the right now, maybe he's gonna come back. And, yeah, see, he's covering it. Yeah, there's 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 the uh, right in the head of this bunch. You can see how on the water how gusty and shifty it is and it, that makes uh, calling the crosses and the ley lines really really Speaking difficult. Speaking of crosses, uh, oh the Alonzo's just, oh they're holding up, they're, they're pinched up to let Lowry go across to keep their lane and now they're going to duck him. So Lowry's in the lead as far as I can tell. Um, he, he went farther right so it's, it's been these right boats, the Alonzo's first took the lead and now Lowry went farther right and took it. Yeah. And now we'll see if uh, Peter and uh, Blair can do the same thing again. You said they said they went right as well. Yeah, but you can say it's uh, one one side course. I think both sides are having their, their goals, so they have to wait for the right one to go. Well, so. Lowry's got lifted now in the pressure, so he's uh, put together a nice couple of shifts. We saw the Irish you know, dominate the first beat and didn't get the second one quite right, so it's a uh, tricky sailing. Nice Chris Benoit here to mark on. How close to shore is it, or is this the Tallulance? Well, that, that's the Tallulance, but it's uh, close enough to shore that you can see the mark running. Okay. It's close enough that it's really shifty, I can tell yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Look, Lowry just yeah. had to steer uh, 15 degrees there up and down. Good good work from uh, Calais. They tack around, and they'll get that uh, fairway in, hopefully nicely. Oh, a little bit of a bubble. The Alonzos can do nicely. Lowry didn't make his fairway, neither of the Alonzos. Let's see if Peter Burling can get round. He's gone for it, so all three boats are going to come at us, basically twisting at the same time. Uh, we haven't seen we haven't seen uh, Lowry get down yet, so Lowry's either capsized or he hasn't made his fairway. And Peter Burling, I reckon, is taking the lead if he's out in front of the Alonzo uh, brothers. Look how low they're trapping right away. Totally aggressive. <laughs> and here comes Lowry after missing the fairway uh, in this big puff. So the guys have got a lot on. And uh, the Alonzo's made it over top of Burling, so I reckon the Alonzo's in the lead now. Oh. I think it's more how sudden the gusts are. Oh, oh big oh, trouble yeah. from Matthew Fran, Jan Rochu. They got their spinnaker stuck around their shroud. They're gonna have to drop it, and then oh, they're gonna get stuck. Be tough oh. to capsize here. Drop the kite and rehoist. Drop the kite and rehoist, and they do it. Uh, they did quite well. Yeah, they're now getting passed by. Yeah. No, red kite's over. And look oh, at red that kite's over. The Japanese. Yeah. 
amazing. Oh, and here's look at the battle for the lead here. Lowry Lettman's come over top. He had the late uh, late bearaway. So the Alonzo's are in the low lane. And here comes Burling in from behind. Yeah, Alonzo's having to drive away from that. And that's, there's Nathan, fourth place. So uh, we didn't think he had such a promising start, but he's moved through nicely. Yeah, yeah. The Kiwis and the Aussies signing very well again in this race as they did in the first one. I think in this racing there's a lot of chances of coming back in the fleet, so... There's Alan Norgard having another good race too, but he must have jumped around to the other mark. So uh, the top five have three, uh, three of the medalists from the last games in it. And uh, Alonso and Lowry. Now, just to update you on Altridge and Jensen's progress up the fleet, they were in 18th. They got a first place in that last race. Francis, how much do you think that moved them up? A, a race went 18th. I mean, every good result in this kind of racing is going to make a big difference because it's so hard. And, and I don't think there's anyone out there that's consistently slotting in hot results. Um, so, yeah, I thought that would have a really good effect on their results. Well, it's moved them up to 17th place. But the difference is that it's really close yeah, to point points. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 they are really yeah. Now they are what just nine points away from ninth place. They're going to get through today into the, into the final and avoid having to do it through the petty final tomorrow. So so the reality is, although the position changes are very much, the points changes it's it's much better. And how far back did Dylan fall with uh, with his race and what, what score did he end up? Okay, so he was 15th in the previous race. Um, he now lies uh, on joint first, but second on count back. So, yeah, sure. Go ahead and show the scoreboard. They're so far away from the races. Do keep an eye on what the feed is in case we get some good images. Um, we're on screen now with the score. Okay. So, so there we have it. We have Pete Burling and Blair Chute in the lead, and they will move even further into the lead because I just saw one of the pictures just now. Dylan and Alan with a lot to do, a long way back in the pack. And uh, so there, there we have the, the top two. We have uh, Jonas Borra in third place overall. And then the other Kiwi guys, Anton Korebski, in fourth overall. So it's have really tightened up. And uh, even though Altridge and Jensen are on 66 points, okay, it's still 30 points off the lead of, of, of Sperling and Chuk. But the way they're sailing, they can certainly get back into the top nine today. So this. This world championship is not over for the Australians yet. Okay, well we. Seems like they're running. I know that's the. Yeah, so that's Burling and Two. Uh, you reckon not around first, right? There was a few boats around already. No, there was the Spanish was leading and Black Black Two is second. Okay, and then Alan in third. Really good race here from Blair and Two. We expect to see the Aussies pile through the third mark here. Yeah, and there they are. So they're in fourth. Jive drop, uh, two sail jive drop. Not an easy proposition. In as breezy as we think it might be, although it's a little lighter there. And then Lowry Lettman in fifth, going, uh, get, going to get a little bit right, and actually some clear wind, which would be nice for him. Uh, oh no, that's uh, not Lowry, it's uh, Marcus Hansen. So where did Lowry go? Maybe he's out of screen already. Finish. Should be up in the top arch somewhere. Wow, look how tight the action is mid-fleet. Gosh, to, to get forward of the pack is really valuable, because this is as crowded as you can imagine, the lure mark to be, especially in the breeze. Dylan and Alan with the GBR spinnaker there just flapped, so they're in the contention for the middle pack. And you can see Although how the boats behind, they get more breeze, so they come faster, and they, they just groove more and more. Dylan and Alan did a really good job of stopping there, and now they're able to take the inside track on that mark. Uh, but still, they're in a tough spot. There's uh, not very few lanes of wind available to them uh, from that spot. Yeah, this day is not going as well as, as they would have hoped so far, but at least they're holding themselves, holding themselves back into contention in this race. They're a long way back. We haven't spoken much about John Pink either. He came into today in third place overall. Um, he's still doing okay, but it's not a great day for the Brits so far. Yeah, we haven't seen him. So, uh, so oh, there we go. There's Lowry. So uh, we knew he was up there in the front group somewhere. He must have gone around the other mark, and I reckon he's in contention there with, uh, with Nathan and with Alan Norgard. And, uh, well, we're just seeing... Burling and on the right there, and it's at L2. Gosh, they're going fast up wind now. Yeah. Flat water. Looks like amazing 49er conditions. It just looks like a lot of fun out there. It was, it was great. Um, <laughs> quite sketchy at some of the marks, as we said, just because of, mainly just because of how sudden some of the gusts were. There was huge differences between the gusts and the lulls. And 
seeing them coming and anticipating them was absolutely crucial. I also know that there were some waves coming from behind that didn't help at all. Yeah. You guys notice the motorboat chop, chop a lot? Do no, we not, not also the motorboat chop, but the yeah. wind from yesterday created some waves from, from coming from the sea. Yeah. So. Oh, really? So you're fighting like a swell in the wrong direction? Yeah. yeah. It was, it's good to, uh, to go upwind, but downwind when you try and maneuver it. What's the barrel often way? There is, often there is motorboat job exactly where you don't want to go. <laughs> As they all race to the yeah. board marks, they get to see you rounding. Yeah, so yeah. this is the battle for the lead. Uh, the Alonso brothers. Uh, we'll see what, they, what their choice is here with the. Uh, I think they the yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, they must have been able to get it. So Alonso attacks underneath. So Burlington Duke up into the lead. Uh, a 2-1 to start the day would, uh, would be a pretty sweet spot, especially with Dylan falling off the pace. That would uh, end with Pinky falling off the pace and Benjamin Bildstein falling off the pace. That's uh, three of the top five really not in the game, and, they are, and the Kiwis on fire. They might be looking to really capitalize today and take a huge points lead into the final if they can continue this short trend. There's Pinky. No, that's Stevie Morrison, uh, GBR 77. This is Sian Roshu and Matt Frey in uh, France 14. And Dylan and Allen, GBR 96 on their hip. So these, uh, this is that crazy mark, bunch in the mark rounding that we saw. The, the fight in the middle of the pack is uh, a really difficult one. Tough to keep clear air, tough to keep the right away at different spots. Yeah, of course when you're in front it's very easy to take the shifts you want, but when you fall back, uh, sometimes you want to go to one side and then you're stopped by somebody tagging on top of you, so you get uh, less wind and you have to tag back again to the side you don't want to. So it's, but it's still, you have a lot of chances with these guys to come up clean, so it's an interesting day to watch. How much does bad air hurt on a day like today? Can you, can you live in somebody else's bad air for a while? Yes, you can, but it depends on the distance you are and, and where you, if you, want, if you want to go high or you want to cross on the other side. So. It's kind of a risk reward thing, you just have to decide whether you'd rather, how bad your lane is where you are and whether you'd rather take that. Yeah, you will lose, it depends on whether you want to tuck out and go How much you lose and how much you can yeah. do that. The Alonzo's uh, crossed in front of Alan Norgard and then tacked in a safe winded position, so um, they're pretty content, I think, to stick with the fleet. It looks like Burling and Tuke are just extending away now. Great uh, puff in the just not. So, and there's the jumping. So he, just to the right of the screen is John Pink. Okay. So it's a big gap for the top three now. Big As break. We pan up, we see oh, sorry, yeah. These are the, sorry, yeah. These are the six. top six, <laughs> including uh, Matthew, Manu, Dian, and Stefan Castidis, who I bet will be up in second place after this race if they can have another good result. Uh, and we might see Nathan start to make some get place games. If he, there he is. Just yeah, fourth of, place. Yeah, fourth place. So uh, the, the leaderboard's a lot more of the big names today. I was going to say, we've had a summer of no wind in England, so some of the Brits might be a bit rusty in this breeze, but it won't take them long to get back on the game. The Antipodeans making the most of it at the moment, and we saw how fast they were in light winds as well at the European Championships, the Kiwis. They won't, uh, they won't have liked, even though they're good training mates with Nathan, they won't have liked being second place. Uh, they'll be here to let Nathan know if he keeps his eye off the ball, uh, they're ready to grab it. And, uh, showing us today that they really are ready for it. Having said that, they've done their own fair share of fast cat sailing in San Francisco as well, winning the Red Bull Youth America's Cup, so they, they haven't been doing that much 49er sailing themselves in recent weeks. It was amazing to see how good their boat cabin was in the Europeans, which was probably as rusty as they're going to be the whole four years. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty good point to start from when you're 24 years old. I think they asked me uh, earlier this week for the, the we were giving the under, top under 20 a white jersey and they said it asked if they were eligible and they weren't by only a couple months so uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty high level for being in your early 20s. So the Kiwis run first and the Spanish are going for the second. Yeah and then the don't think it's going to be long before the Danes but all three of those guys here are looking pretty safe right now. Yeah they're going really low with the pressure now and they won't have, won't have many chances. So it looks like the Aussies are going to be first to take the other mark going around the other way. See, I wonder if they'll jive set. Like uh, like Martin said, we don't think there's a lot of room uh, on port sailing downwind, so uh, hopefully the cameraman, and there's Lowry following them to the left. Same with Marcus Hansen. I guess it puts 
you in a, a great position tactically if you get around that mark and, and you do a jibe set, you're immediately to lured of the, the people that went down the other mark if you think the starboard jibe is the way to go. And then you get starboard yeah. advantage on the way back. Yes, but uh, sometimes we uh, consider about the their way, so some, some decisions of ours made by how windy it is and uh, Yeah, and, and, and do, you, do you find it harder to bear away on port than on starboard? Well, uh, when you when you uh, to port or to starboard and you, you don't have to tack very close to the mark, it's good. But when you have to tack very close to the mark and you're slow, it's bear away, it's hard. Yeah, it's more dangerous, isn't it? Yes, definitely. We saw that with Lowry at the beginning of this race. Speed for the fairway. And speaking of speed, Burling and Tuba are off. Yeah. As far as far, our cameraman can barely keep Tuba planning out enough to keep two boats in line. No. It's a <laughs> runaway win there. Yeah. So we, asked, uh, we asked the Irish who were here earlier what, what their winter plans are. What are your teams' winter plans? Um, well, I think we're staying at home. And, uh, there's, some teams, there's some teams coming home to train with us, so we'll keep on it. Oh, that's right, the San Martin Championships are going to be in. Floating uh, Africa, yes. Uh, San Martin teams are going to team up with us during the South Americans. And I don't, I'm not sure how many boats are going to be there, but it's a nice uh, venue. And we're going to do some training there before. And we'll also have the Extreme Setting Series just before our championship, so it'll be nice to see that. The guys have been talking to me about the South Americans. We're going to try and think about getting the same set up there mm -hmm. for that regatta, so there's a chance we'll, uh, we'll be seeing you. Oh, cool. <laughs> Are you going to be selling on board the Extreme 40s? Uh, I wish to, but I'm not sure. So. <laughs> Burling and Duke, we've got the onboard, uh, the onboard camera pointed right at them as they zip into the finish line. And, uh, we assume the Alonzos are still in second place. Uh, that's the two red spinnakers coming together are the Alonzos versus Alan Norgard. But there was quite a lead before. It can change very quickly in a run now. But, oh yeah, Alan Norgard did get out ahead. And uh, so the Alonzos have dropped down to third place. Hopefully no worse if they don't have a bad guy. And Kiwi's getting across one, Jenica getting across the other. Looks like they gave up a lot of their ground there, but maybe again the foreshortening of the camera, it's hard to tell. And now the, I guess the Aussies with the black coat? No, they have a red coat. Oh, that's there then, the Aussies are just soaking through to the finish line. So it was, the, it was actually the, we, where is Alan Orgard? We haven't seen him. Lowry threw in fourth, so Alan Orgard lost a couple spots. He was uh, third round. Sorry? John crossed behind. Oh, he did, okay, so he just came back behind, thanks. Oh, we see him crossing the line now. So Alan Orgard dropped three spots there. It's still a good race. And the Aussies were up to what? We reckon third or fourth? Second, I think they came Oh, so our our, uh, our GPS man is telling us that, that he thinks the Aussies managed to get all the way up from fourth to second on that run. So an amazing day for them, an amazing day for Pete Burling and Blair Chu. So they are on a win and a second place apiece, the Aussies, Aussies and the Kiwis. And we saw how fast Nathan was on that first run because he went underneath Alan Norgard. Now he's passed two boats downwind. He's, he's trying to gun for the downwind. He is. That's what he's after. He doesn't care about the yellow jersey. It's, it's just the other ones. <laughs> Manu and Stefan just coasting through to the finish line now. Uh, good race for them. They're having a very solid day as well. Uh, they'll be happy about that. Let's see the replay. It'll be, uh, it'll be good if they can uh, press for a win here. That means we'd have uh, Sarah Stayart pressing for a win in the women's fleet and uh, Manu and Steph uh, pressing for a win in the men's. Uh, get the French crowds all riled up and the style finish. Yeah. There go the Japanese. On, on this last race, arriving there were a lot of boats and more boats in the way, so it was, we had a very big ship. It was really crazy going on. Was there a lot of spectator boats? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a few spectator boats and a lot of, uh, of the coaches and also boats had, that had finished the race. So it was a big crowd on the back of the line coming in with a lot of breeze and we kind of had a really rough coming. That was Dylan and Alan uh, flowing through there, what, about 10th place? Yeah, I would say, I guess it would be about 10th place. George Lima in 12th. 
he's also, we, we chatted with him earlier this morning, he was in ninth. I think he's had two kind of middling races so far, so probably big pressure on. He's probably right in the middle of the gap. George Lima? Yeah, he, he was in 13th after that last race, so with, with this race probably going to be staying more or less the same. Yeah. Uh, uh, Stevie Morrison, number 77, that's Noe Delph, or Julian McCoy, Noe Delph, number 8. As we see the rest of the results pile through, uh, I reckon it's just gotten closer. Other than it's other than Burling and Tuke, other yeah, than Burling and Tuke, everything else is condensing at the top of the award. I would agree with that. And uh, yeah, Burling and Tuke moving even further in the lead. They were tied for the lead with Fletcher and, and Alan's side, but uh, Dylan and Alan, not a great race there, not a great day for them so far. So uh, they're, they're going to be looking over the shoulders, wondering how many others they've dropped. But still very tight. It's just the few are going to be hard to catch if they, if they keep on sailing like this. That's uh, Bill Ambrosa from Argentina just coming through. First trip to Goldfleet for them. They'll uh, just the semi final. So they'll be happy with that result. They're young fellas. Tim, did you see them much? In, uh, um, South America? No, I didn't. Actually, we haven't seen the Argentinians since the uh, past year chain. They are so. Yeah, you'll get to know them at the South Americans. I think they said they're all coming after that. So yeah. should be a fun one. Well, let's take a break now. We're going to be back for the third race of the 49er men. We will work out how things are going on the points. We'll be back to you in another 10 minutes.
Championships, semi-final day two, and there is under a minute to go until the third race of the day. Andy Rice just doing some last minute research. Ethan Nielsen in from Denmark had a great day on the water. I hope that will enjoy his first race as uh, the men are really getting down to it. There's uh, two races left to see if we can make the top nine, and the top nine go on to Charles Pyle. And it's looking very tight on the line there. Considering how windy it is, Ida, how do they stay that far, that far off the line or that close to the line as they get going now? Yeah, it's pretty hard to like control the boat. Who's back to me? Nice to see for you. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. Alan Norgard uh, coming off the line nicely. And uh, we did see a couple boats surge in the middle, so I wonder if there was any individual else happening that we don't know about yet. Nice that the camera boat picks up those images. But it does look like all clear. It looks no, it looks like individual. Okay, yeah, I, you're right. There's an individual, and I reckon that was the Irish, Seton McGovern, and maybe Portugal. I don't know if they went back or not. There's our previous leaders, Dylan. Yes, and they Alan. are now previous leaders. Yes, they're still still in second place. Okay, we had the results on screen up before, so everyone uh, watching will have got a chance to see who's doing what. Oh, which one is that? I bet you that's Burling again. I had to guess. Mm -hmm. L 2 well, Poking his nose out. Poking his nose out. and I, Well, they're both there. You can see uh, the other Kiwi boat, but not uh, poking his head out uh, quite as much as Berlin and Tuke. So we've just seen them uh, second in the first race, first in the second race. And, uh, catching up. Catching up. There's, this is um, Julian Gautoli, and there's. Oh no, so that was, I think. Jesse Marcus? Yeah, that was. Josh and Marcus, who we think are the top Kiwi boat, the top boat pointing coming at us on the left back, uh, with their countrymen just tacked over. We'll be able to tell them before they zoom in just a tiny bit. Wow, busy on the water. We got a couple of capsized windsurfers. What was it like out there for traffic, Ida? Was that was there anything to avoid out there? Yeah, you had to like think about your time again. You had to think about being like. And all the traffic lights get fast in and fast out. Uh, you you look like so you were. In the yeah, mm -hmm. we really like the breeze. It's uh, so much more fun than being uh, cold all together. So we could stretch our leg and uh, yeah, it was fun. Japanese here having a good race. They're uh, look like they're on the right side of the course and they had a good race in the last race as well. So uh, they're, they're on the right hand side, far right boat. Okay. And the, the big pack, the big pack, well it's the big dog who's leading the big pack, it's Australia 1, Nathan Outridge and Ian Jensen, continuing, continuing their charge up the leaderboard, and just to their left, we see them just tacking now, um, so they're the far left boat, they've got their tack in, there's actually no one going to challenge them on starboard until the right hand uh, attackers come back at them, so that's a very promising sign for Nathan, we said before the day that it be a real challenge just for him to make the top nine, but if he's going to reel off ones and twos in every race, uh, he's going to get there for sure. What place is he in right now, Andy? I, I was just checking the scores. I, I couldn't see for sure. What what place is Nathan in? The uh, guys are pulling. Twelfth. He's already up to twelfth. Okay. And in this race, yeah, well, let's see. Let's see what happens on this cross here. He's got the French to cross, and I have a feeling though the Kiwis, the Kiwis who are yeah, and they're. You reckon they're coming across, do you? Yeah. And we still think that's... Oh no, so Nathan had to duck the French. So he just went behind the French, only by a little bit. So that's uh, Julien Dautoli and Men and uh, Noah Delph in the France 8 who have just tacked underneath uh, Alan Norgard, the Danish on the far left. So we saw him come off the pin and he's uh, clearly having a good race as well. The, uh, no one's having as good a race as the Kiwis though. I, I think that's a two though, not a six. I can't tell which Kiwi boat it is. It's six. It is? Crossing, okay. crossing from starboard. So th that's uh, Marcus Hansen and Josh Porebski having a great race. And, uh, and we've got a few guys he the heading up to a different course with this big mainsail right covering our, our lens angle, but I'm sure they'll move off soon enough. That's a really tight beat. Yeah. Really close fleet, so you have to watch out when you get to the top mark that you'll get like really good points. How is the traffic coming into the first mark? It's crazy. It's crazy? Like, okay, where's all the other boats? You just be like on your toes all the time, ready to 
run. Which mark were you choosing most of the time? Uh, the windward mark. Yeah, which one? The left hand mark or the right hand mark? The right hand mark. No, left hand mark and then drive again. Okay, and why do you do that? Why do you go around and then drive immediately? Because we thought it was better on the right hand side if you look. Okay. And so we probably I'm wanted to have like a free lane and we thought it was easier. And the, the view would like the left hand was like closer. We saw you do this, like I call it the straight set jive, and it was a really wonderful maneuver in that race. You guys did a beautiful job of it. Yeah. We practice that a lot. I <laughs> bet you do. <laughs> also, the tech. <laughs> That's so about the hardest thing you can do yeah, in the 49er, exactly. right? So hard. Sure is. Lowry and Calais, Finland 49, coming from the left side uh, in the lead group. Let's see if we get. Uh, so it's the Portuguese. I thought we'd do an over at the start, but uh, we won't know. Actually, we probably won't know the whole day, so maybe we'll just assume they weren't. And. Um, oh, the Japanese, far right boat. Okay, we're getting the. Uh, yeah, they, they look like they tacked underneath the group. Uh, and then they're headed back farther right. So they tacked out early with a far right boat and it's paid off. But we've also seen Alan Norgard do pretty well in this race and he was the far left boat, so. Yeah, uh, he's coming up here. Or is it him? Yeah. Yeah. Or 30. No, 30, that's, uh, Jonas. Uh, here's a clear image. Okay, so we've got uh, the finish, far left. Friends. But I reckon there's a few of them across. They're overlaid, are they? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Look how much that mainsail is dragging from time to time. Very gusty and shifty up there. So we have the, the Mike Booty. Yeah, you got this little flap of the main there. And uh, Lonzo's up there in, in the discussion as well again. That'll be their third decent race in a row. So if we could just get back to the other camera, we can actually <laughs> see what's see, there. See the <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So unless someone pops in from the right, we're looking at uh, Jonas, Denmark 30 for the front spot here, right? Okay, yeah, 28, he just tacks underneath. Oh, there you go. Oh, Marcus comes, leading. I think the Kiwis are looking good in six. Yeah. There they go, they've just yeah, come around the windward mark. Where does the Japanese go? Right behind, I think. It looks so busy there with those two windward marks. Okay, Jonas in second, and then it looks like the Japanese are going to be in third, just right around, they're going to round at the same time, different gates as Alan Norgard going to the right gate. Nathan round in fifth place with uh, George Lima just oh, underneath him in sixth. Oh, Japanese have a hard time. Almost. Oh, the Japanese didn't get their bear away in, which means it's going to force the whole group up. Did Nathan get out underneath it? He yes, did. he did. So Nathan's actually going to have a big barrier between him and the guys behind. The Japanese finally get their boat around. And underneath, is that Burling about to put his kite in the water? No, that's Manu that's and Stefan. Burling hasn't tried to hoist it. Just hoisting now. Yeah. Very busy. Very, Very busy, Mark. That's Pinky going around the right gate, so he's in the teens. We haven't seen, I think maybe Dylan and Alan. Oh, there's Dylan and Alan coming through now, so they're back of the pack again. Uh, only a couple boats behind them. And they, the Alonzos rounding with them. And here's our leaders, Marcus Hansen and Josh Porebski. Uh, sizable lead, clear air. Clear boat handling and boat speed. Uh, they're going to be loving the situation they're in. Yeah. Although we've seen Nathan chase down a few leaders in the last couple races, so yeah. uh, they're not going to be able to rest by any means. Uh, and Pete Burling and Blair Chute, they got some pace downwind too. Yeah. There's Nathan so, now in the red spinnaker, uh, the Irish going to the far side, but Nathan coming towards us. And he thought the Irish maybe were the ones that should have gone back? I thought so. Uh, there was an individual recall flag up and just I got a glimpse of their bow uh, trying to save it below the line, but we won't know until we get in, so we can only hope for their sake that they weren't moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So already Nathan Altridge making gains. He's looking fast. I wonder if we are going to see him move up on the Kiwis here. Yeah, two Danish boats doing very, very well. Denmark 30, Denmark 28. Both Olympic medalists. And it's looking like oh, the Kiwis are hanging too. on, but they're being caught up, aren't they, by the two yeah. Danish boats. Watch out. <laughs> the Irish on the far side. Still in the fight, but dropping back to yeah, made a bad fourth or fifth. 
And the Kiwis just holding on to their lead. Looks windy. Coming down towards the bottom gate now. Still the orange kite in the lead possibly, but who's that going around with them? It's the Australians. Number Overstood. Five. Overstood. Look how far down early he's taken down his spinnaker. Two, two sail reaching to the far side mark. And uh Oh Paul's a good one. And so let's see if George George Lima's gotta make a big turn as well. A bunch of boats coming through in front of the Aussies. So they've, so they've uh, given away a lot of ground. They've given away an awful lot of spots just by being outside. Just the quiet. It's going to be a so real tight battle up the second beat now. That's a really unusual mistake by the Australians there. Well, if it's shifty there's, and puffy, there's nothing you can do sometimes. You get yourself deep and with no recovery besides just dealing with it. Which, uh, that's a French team. Which one is that? Probably oh. Julien and Noé. Yeah, that is. Just Julien. shows just how tricky it is. Oh, and there comes... Best sailors in the world making these little part rounds look quite different. Tell you what, Nathan looked pretty good when he went round just after. Um, there he goes, but he's, he's really back in it now, isn't he? I mean, he's back in the pack, I mean. Gave up a lot of ground there, understanding that march. Yeah. Here comes uh, Lowry, and uh, is that USA? Oh, here's Dylan and Alan. So, they're deep in terms of numbers, but they, they, they're closer in terms of time than, yeah. than uh, they might so have been they before. they could make up ground, but... A big trailing Still giving it's away tough, tough to work through the fleet. Yeah. So the Kiwis generally having a good day, whether it's one boat or the other. There's always a New Zealand boat up there. <laughs> Did we see Berling and Two come through though? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and the Danes doing well in the breeze as well. Yeah. They like the breeze. Yeah. I guess you get a lot of it all in Denmark. Things. Yeah. We have all kind of weather, but we all love the breeze. So I don't yeah. Know why. But well, it keeps you warmer, doesn't it? Yeah, in the winter time. You yeah. Just don't want to like no. it. It's too cold. You want to keep on moving. Yeah. I went for a site visit to Aarhus uh, in April, just after one of the regattas after Palma, and it was snowing one day, and there was 29 er sailors out sailing. I thought, oh, these Danes. It's no wonder they're so good. <laughs> good dedication. You just have to sail, even though it's snowing. And there, in the middle of the picture, that, that's Denmark. 28, that's, that's Alan no, Lowrigard. Oh, it's Jonas, is it? No, that's Alan. 28 that's is Alan, yeah. That's Alan. Oh, who is that? That's Josh Perrett. The one capsizing. Yeah. Let's see. Did we see a New Zealand boat capsize? No. We've seen them both. Uh, there's Black Burling and Duke in the middle there, number two. Oh, I'm not in the middle. Here's oh, the French, Stefan, uh, Stefan Manu. Having a boat. Oh, they're fighting with Nathan here for about, what, 10th? 8th place? Looks like fast. it's going really fast. He's almost heading faster than just Marcus. Yeah. Peter uh, Lang looks like he's put on a bit of muscle. Yeah. So and something on the stomach. Ah. <laughs> 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 no, we're not from the same uh, club, so okay. trying that much to get But we meet Jonas sometimes. Don't you? Okay. So, day like today, weight on the shoulders, weight on the stomach, it's all useful, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. Just <laughs> have weight on. Yeah. Now, what, what are you trying to do with your weight? Are you working at the, the weight you want to? Or you it's, uh, we're not quite sure where we want to be yet. So, right now, we're just trying to be like in the middle. But we might think it would be nice to be a little bit heavier. Okay. So, you, so you're not sure, so you do nothing and then you'll keep an eye on it? Yeah, we tried to gain weight, but then we were like, oh, I think this is alright for now. And we wanted to see how it went here and make a decision. Two Danish boats You didn't go to Santander though, did you? You came here instead. So, yeah. And I su it was surprised not many teams went to Santander to check out the conditions ahead of next year's Critical World. Yeah. What was the thinking of that? Just that it was so close to the we wanted to go. First things first then. Yeah, exactly. Have to go to Santander next year. With your European Championship, you're still... Uh, it's only the Worlds which counts. It's only the Worlds which counts. So you've been under a lot of pressure yeah. the last couple of days after the tough start. You've right. sailed really well under we that pressure. We had to be in top eight. And we've got the top nine to go now, so... Well, a couple more races tomorrow and yeah. uh, you'll continue with the smile. Yeah. 
Swedish boat looking good there, left of picture. They must be on, on the cusp of qualifying. They started the day in 13th place. That's Carl Silver and Otto Hamel. Jason Marcus still leading. Still leading. The two Danes tracking him down though. They're not going to give yeah. it to him, are they? No way. And then we see uh, Julian and Noé Francais on the right, or on the left, getting a nice nice puff and a shift, uh, significantly lifted over Nathan Outridge, who's uh, Australia 1 on the right. It looks like um, the Nippers have just crossed the uh, Danish boys. Yeah. Here they just barely did, yeah. But, okay, so that's uh, Jonas Warer's just tacked from Denmark. Alan Norgaard's gone behind him. And uh, they'll be doing... It does look like it looks like a very good shift to the left for uh, the for the French France eight Julien and Noé, who by the way is organizing the party for tomorrow night. Oh, so uh, nice. we like him uh, right about now. And uh, yeah, that's not much in it. Uh, those Danes didn't uh, didn't go behind uh, the Kiwis by much. After having after seeing Nathan plow through the fleet the first. Uh, races we thought that might be a trend but he's having to fight back again well he threw it away there that first run and he's, he's really not coming back into it that quickly it looks like one more even more lift. yeah it's really far left now nathan was one of the far right boats so uh i don't know how well he's been around here so, so the usa boat's not in this race right that's good right uh, the usa boat on the right hand side and that boat in the central picture i'm pretty sure is not in the Gilgo's definitely not in our race. <laughs> He's coming for a, a good view of what's happening. So we see a Danish boat going away from us there. But we see a US boat there as well. I don't understand how the US boat is there. Remember, so there is a US boat in this race. So, uh, Strammer and Brown. Now they're meeting Justin Mathis. Strammer and Brown. They, they, uh, Strammer and Brown got through from the Repishage yesterday. The top team oh, right. every gets well, in every day. Every day. Yeah. And, and they're uh, splitting. They're splitting. Yeah. Oh, they're not splitting. Not splitting. Marcus and Josh uh, had to pinch to make that mark so they didn't get their bear away in very quickly. So the Allen's going <laughs> to shave a couple seconds out uh, right away. And then Jonas is in their tail too. So Allen is going to be right on these guys. Low set. He's in the commanding position. He's going to probably just try and soak in and uh, for a jive and pass him that way. We'll see if anyone can go over the top. Lowry's climbing back up. Is that Nathan there? Nathan just yeah, that is Nathan just setting up. So he's done well, even though we thought the shifts were against him on that beat. That's Pete and Blair coming up. Yeah, Pete and Blair are falling back. Well, not falling back, but... Uh... Oh, oh Strava Brown! Out water skiing! And uh, out around, the, around them go the Kiwis, picking up another spot. This is... Uh, Next, next round is Matthew Frey and Jan Rocheru, and then Jorge Lima and jo Costa, uh, Jose Costa. Okay, Alan Norgard had to drive away, didn't stay below uh, Josh and Marcus. And uh, really fast right there, what do you think? Yeah, it looks good. The US boat, I was speaking to Zach Brown, the crew, and he's, of all the injuries we've seen this week, I would say his is the most horrific. He did a face plant into the lower shrouds about three weeks ago and got himself 50 stitches. He's wearing a helmet at, at this event to protect his head. It's still quite tender and he's lost the feeling and the nerves in one side of his forehead and one of his eyes is still quite closed up. So really rough accident. He's wearing a helmet, but they wear helmets in the Americas. So helmets are cool. Yeah, that's great. Right. You wear a helmet sometimes, sir? Yeah. We actually had it on today in the last race because we thought it was quite good as well. How, uh, what's, what's, is this just any time you feel like you might, you're on the edge, you put it on? Yeah, every time I think we like, we don't want to hurt, but a lot of people can look in the head and get a concussion. Concussion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we don't want that, because then it's not safe for like, the next three months. Yeah. So, it's just for protection. One of the girls in the Canadian team got a concussion uh, last year, and I really put it up for quite a while. Okay. It's, uh, it's and it's actually, uh, Peter, Peter Lam, yeah. Peter Lam, got it in the head. Okay, we couldn't sail almost until Yeah, I remember that. That's not a good thing. Yeah. And, and so, uh, does it affect and the sailing? And it hurts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> does, does it affect your sailing? No, not at all. You can't really feel it. Here, here's the cross for the lead coming up. We've got uh, 
Alan Norgard on starboard with uh, going to come up very closely here. John, uh, our former leaders, our possible leaders, Marcus Hansen and John Perebski. Uh We're going to see them come into frame here very shortly, and we'll see who's going to take the race win. They might have already across. Maybe the flip. Maybe in the flipping cameras, we uh, got. No, there they are. No, that's tough. Oh. So we reckon these guys are taking the lead. Have do we? Yeah. They have. Okay, we got confirmation of that. They are. And wow, the motorboat <laughs> is right in their wake. So, so we just seen an orange kite there. Yeah. So Look how close that is. It still looks like the orange kite might be in the lead. But it's Got more speed coming into the line. Yeah. Oh, wow. Very close. Very, yes, very close. Oh. So the Kiwis cross first, the Danish in second. That motorboat was right in there. Who's that, Who's that third there? Uh, Australia won. Oh, wow. So Nathan's wow. caught up to third. Oh, Amazing. Oh, my God. That was Julianne, did you say? Den 30. Oh, Jonas. Swedish. Sweden. 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 Swedish. They're piling through quickly. This is the closest race we've seen so far. Finland, Lowry. This is uh, that's Julian there, eight. That's eight, you think? I don't know. Hard to see. That's the closest race we've seen so far today. Series leaders, the uh, the Kiwis. We haven't seen them come through yet. Oh, oh that's yeah, them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're just uh, so well -timed. about ninth or so. The Kiwis. And what we're waiting to see is Dylan. Who uh, wasn't far behind? Oh, 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 oh capsized! Who's that? Who capsized? That? Not a good place. Not a good place either. They might drift oh, through time. It's the most so frustrating good. place. And another oh, one. one! Oh, so that's Matthew Frey and Jan Rocheru, I think. They actually probably capsized across the line, so as long as they don't drift into the finish boat, they'll be okay, technically. Well, relatively okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah. This oh, that's a lot of so That's a lot of capsizing for the best sailors in the world. Yeah. Shows how hard it is out there. We did feel some very big cops coming through our studio, so uh, we did. out there it's going to be pretty rough because we're behind a hill. <laughs> you just have to think like being so safe mode to be sure that the boat capsizes. Yeah. The capsizes just we like haven't seen Dylan and Alan yet though, have we? Yeah, no. they were, here we are. Uh, we have? Okay. Um, they were in 11th by okay, my so counting. So I don't know what they said outside the top 10, so they haven't had a top 10 score yet today. They, they went into the day leading the regatta, but I think it will still be Peter Burling and, and Blair Troop, by my reckoning, who are still leading, even though they only got about an eighth or a ninth in that race. Do you have the um, women's results, for, uh, what, what we think the overall results are, with Ida here? Uh, why don't we talk through them a little bit? Uh, or we can't actually see them ourselves, though, so it's a little tricky. Yeah. Oh, I can't. I'll run out of juice. Well, why don't you guys tell us about them? You can see them on your screen, can you? Yeah. Um, so first we've got ended up 16, Maloney and Meach. Uh, okay, Kiwis in first, Maloney yeah, and Meach. 56 points. Nine points behind, we've got Stay Out and Bosart. Okay, so the French still yeah. managed to hold on French to second. French still in second. Yeah, the well, they won a race, the they first did. race today, so they did pretty well. Yeah. Uh, Conti and Clapping, 67 points, so two points behind. Italians, Conti and Clapping, yeah, 67. Yeah, they got two seconds this afternoon, so that's pretty good. Um, Nielsen and Olsen, um, six points behind them. Woo! Oh. Catching up! So you're <laughs> up. in fourth with 73 points. You're in fourth place? Yeah. That's a good move. Yeah. Fourth and eighth, I'd be happy. Peters and Groves in 77. Um, we had Frances Peters in earlier, so she's in fifth. Yeah. Okay. Germany 712 in 78, just one point behind. Now we saw them hanging around the protest tent. So they're definitely going to be involved in a protest hearing today. I did not catch what the incident was, but uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they still can make this. How, how close are they to getting knocked out of the top nine? Um, so the person on ninth has 92 points, so they're 14 points ahead. Cool. Okay, and so what, what do we have for 7th, 8th, and ninth? Okay, so in 7th we have Martina Gray out at 80, uh, with 80, um, Beckery with 90, Hansen with 92, um, Price and Elks with 94, and then in 11th we've got Tunnicliffe with 108. So Hansen and Everson? Yeah, yep. they had two they are. capsizes today. And yeah, they're in 9th or 10th? Uh, in 9th. They're just making it. They're just making it. Protests pending and these GPS. are GPS results, <laughs> not official results. So let's talk about uh, Ida's chances at the win here. How many points back is she from first? 
So, you reckon it'll be hard, okay. I, I make it about 26 points. Yeah. That is quite hard. That's hard. Do we have three double, double points and three races? It's double points, three races, yeah. and it's 10 votes instead of, we can say, only 8 votes. Yeah. But that's not a lot of points. So it could happen, but it will be. Just go win hard. tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Every yeah. race and. And what about for a medal? How many points is third place? Um, so third place is 10 points away. I think that's what we're aiming for. Okay. But that, that's not bad considering where you started the week. Yeah. You know, it's but we had like the first race were our like worst race. Yeah. So, so it hasn't been that all the time. No, I think we said quite good with the whole race. Just couldn't see the result because we couldn't like take all that race off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it's yeah. getting it's getting Climbing better. up from twenty two into the goal fleet into the Yeah. <laughs> finals. Yeah. You and Nathan both trying to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So what are we on now? Are we taking the results off the screen? Yeah? Is it just on us? Race to go, one more race to go today, and this will be to see who, who makes the uh, breakthrough into the top nine, and, and has Nathan done enough by now with that last race to get in, or has he still got more work to do? He was in 12th place going into this race. And he was third across the line. Yeah, so he must have moved up. He must have moved up again, so I think we're going to be seeing more Nathan this week. We'll, we'll get back to you before the start of the next race and we'll let you know how Nathan is getting on in his quest to get back into this final 10 for tomorrow and see if he can win another world title.
So here we are at the 49er World Championships. The men just about to come into their final race of the day to decide which of these 21 boats will go through as, as one of the top nine. Getting very close to start time here. Japanese very, very close to the line there. And just seconds away from starting. Let's see, we've got the Americans and we've got the Danes at this end of the line. Very windy out there at the moment, so holding station, keeping these boats going without actually stalling, very difficult indeed. Japanese put their bow down, um, and the Americans put their bow down. They're going to come right at us, the Americans, and that's good. Nice, nice launch by the Americans, great start there. And uh, oh, Alan have... Norgard off the pin again. We saw him come off the pin in the last race. Uh, he didn't have anyone on top of him last time, but uh, he's in a good position to hold that hold there, actually. So Alan Norgard wins the pin. Good starts there for Denmark and America. And off the right side, we've got Nathan Outeridge. He's one of the first. Oh, looks like turning it, around. He looks like it's around. a recall. It's a yeah, general recall. I can see the flag. So general recall. We'll have to do the whole thing again. Um, so Alan definitely likes his starting uh, approach of going to the pin. We saw Nathan go to the right every time, and he likes that. They're both. They came second and third in that last race. Uh, so third so, and fourth. So, so many, many different ways to the same problem. Yeah. Why don't we pull those results back up online? Uh, Tom, and why don't we pull the results back up over top, and uh, we'll just talk through what's at stake here in the final race of the semifinals of the 2013 uh, World Championships. Just very quickly at the top before we talk about who's on the cusp of going through, at the top you've got two Kiwi teams, we got Pete Burling, Blair Duke, the Olympic silver medalists, now in the lead, but they didn't have a great last race, so the other Kiwis, Hansen and Perebski, just four points behind them. In, in the overall standings. So looking at what we really want to know about, which is who is going to go through, who's going to scrape through, we've got about five teams that we reckon are on the cusp of either staying in or going out. If they go out, it's not necessarily the end of their regatta because they could get back through the petty final, but those five teams that we reckon are on the cusp of ninth place, they're the Finnish team, Leighton and Bass. 69 points. The Spanish, Alonso Alonso. 70 points. Australia won Outridge and Jensen. 71. Pink and Wheeler from Great Britain. 75. And from France, Dottoli and Noe. 75. So of those five teams, three of them are going to make it in. The question is which five, because uh, all of them have got the skills to have a good race. And uh, we're only gonna, there's only room for five, uh, or for three of the five. <coughs> well, based on how they've been going today, Pink and Wheeler, they started the day in third place. They've had three unlucky 13 places so far. So, so based on today's form, they're not going to be going through. But that's to say, things can always change very quickly. But, but the French, currently in 11th place, Dottoli and Noe, again, not a, not a great day, 7, 16, 11. Uh, Alonso, not a bad day, 3, 3, 10. So they're showing the form to go through. Leighton and Ambas from Finland, 11, Four, seven, but Outridge and Jensen from Australia started the day in 18th place. They have now moved up to 9th place because they have had positions of 1, 2 and 3 in the last three races. So they're winning the day so far. No reason to think it's going to be any different this time, is it? No, no, they are absolutely winning the day. Uh, the, the Kiwis have, have had very good days, but the Aussies have had the best day. And they, we saw them move into third place early in that race. They overstood on the, on the drop to the uh, to the Lured Gate. A very uncharacteristic mistake for them, but very easy to make on a day like today where it's so shifty and so gusty. But they dropped back to, I would say, about eighth or ninth place. They had a big fight on their hands in the middle of the pack. Other people kept on making mistakes around them. They, they, they hoisted in a good, good position on the final leg and they got back up to third place again. So it's almost like they've already had four top threes this regard, or this today, because they managed to get into the top three twice in that one race. Well, yeah, I, I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Uh, so let's see if they can do it for real this time. It looks really breezy now. Uh, we saw a lot of teams have trouble in the last race, and I think it's just going to keep building. Hopefully they can, uh, they've got the black flag up now, so we're under four minutes to go to the start. Uh, and well, we're certainly going for the race here, and uh, no reason not to. We haven't seen so much carnage that they shouldn't be trying to push them. Uh, but there's going to be a lot on for the guys, especially at that windward mark. Busy windward mark, lots of traffic. Uh, the start line's hard work as well. It's a little choppier at the bottom of the course than it is at the top. So there's lots of ways that teams can either uh, make big gains and 
certainly have big losses. It, you know, if you look through the, the um, if you look through the drop race for all the top teams, all the top teams have big double-digit numbers uh, that they will that will factor in if they have a bad race here. So no one's got a free pass, and the championship is really under play here, especially. If When you can score 20 points just as easily in a race as you can uh, one, uh, it goes quickly. And it's looking really windy out there. They, they're on, under the black flag. They cannot be over the line. That would be disastrous for any of these teams. But controlling these boats at slow speed in this kind of breeze is not easy. And, and, and coming back to that risk and reward, I, I think, Ben, surely you'd, you'd hang back a little bit and, and, and hope that you would even if you get a bad start, there's so many shifts out there, there, there are plenty of ways back into the race. That port tack option start, it's one to pull out of the bag of black flag. Uh, you start behind boats, but if you get out to the right, then you uh, get clear air relatively easily. Now, it's not without its risks. Uh, certainly, uh, even though you, it would be your fault, the team can tack right on you. Uh, they're not really looking for people on port at the start. Uh, also, you can find yourself running out of runway, or you could uh, find yourself getting pinned into a boat. So it's not... It's it's not the easiest start to pull off, but it is does guarantee you not getting uh, being over the line. Um, otherwise, you can trust your skills, like we've seen Alan Norgard do. Uh, he, he clearly thinks he can set up for the pin and make it, and we've, he's done that the last two races. So um, there's a lot of different ways you can guarantee being behind the line. In the ends helps, having good transits helps, uh, or you can start on port. And on the far right, you can see one of the boats on port tack. I suspect he's going to be one of the ones having a go at the port tack start. And we also see maybe it's the Irish on the far right hand side, but they've tacked back over, so it looks like they're approaching for the. Here's Strammer Brown doing the port tack option, just like I talked about, uh, USA 777. Um, there's a few of them actually lining up on port. What I'm looking for is the Alonzos there. They're tight to the line. Yeah. Alon you, the Spanish 9, they're one of the teams that has to have a good race here, and just to weather them was Finland 49. Both those teams are fighting for these precious uh, three of five that'll make it through. A little farther back is the boat and screen. That's Julian Dertoli and Noah Del Delpesh. Um, Getting they, close to start time here, aren't we? Yeah, we're down in the last 10 seconds, I guess. And again, they get so close to that start. And they're just accelerating now, bow down, and uh, looks like Julianne is going to be the pin boat and safe. Uh, so Stevie Morrison there punched too, forward. Oh, too early, too yeah, early. But was. the Spanish, the, oh the Spanish, are they going to get rolled by the Italians? These critical, critical few, first few meters in any one of these races as you get your acceleration in. Um, Red acceleration there. Oh look at France the spray there. coming off of France. So it's definitely choppy at the bottom. So Julian Dautelet and Noé Delpec, that's a great start for them. These are one of the five boats we talked about that, that are on the edge of going through. Burlington Took just poking out forward, rolling. Uh, Jose Lima or George Lima um, who else has got a good start I'm really looking for Nathan right now can't see him yet but uh, looks like the Burling's going to roll roll the Portuguese eventually from that spot you can guess but uh, he's in tight still there's Nathan so the cameraman's picked him up he and Manu Dien also doing very well in, in France 4 Nathan's already done his second tack of the race now so uh, unless he started on court yeah, yeah, we don't but know he's, that. But he's coming across the fleet. He's going to have clear wind the whole way, and with his kind of speed, he reckon he's going to be well that spot. Right, he, he's, he, he's got space ahead of him. He's got a clear lane. We know he's one of the fastest boats in this kind of breeze, so that's a good early position for him. Even, as you say, if, if he do, has done some early tacks. We're seeing a lot of tacking, considering how windy it is. We're seeing a lot of tacking, of course. The reason for that is it's as gusty and as shifty as it is. So, so even though attack is slow, it's worth doing when the breeze is moving around this much. Sure, I mean, Nathan's one of the best at that. Uh, with their boat handling skills so good, if they can move across the boat quickly, get back up to power, and save themselves 10 degrees of angle or something, they'll, they'll do it every time, is my guess. There's John Pink uh, he, ducking he's, under. He's got a lot of work to do to stay in the top nine. The Swedes are doing well here at the bottom, in the center of our screen, uh, Sweden 717. Next to them is Dylan, Dylan Fletcher and Alan Sign, who were leading going in today, had an ordinary kind of day so far. And we've just spotted the Finns for the first time. So the Finns are, you know, in clear air. They're just not, uh, they're just having a pinkies crossing them. Um, oh, they're coming across with the Aussies. So, you know, who, so who, of the five teams that we're looking at to, to pressure, who's, who's not the game? Everyone's in the game. So I'm just going to see if I can bring up some and uh, holding it lane nicely. 
nicely. We've also got uh, Marcus Hansen and Josh Perebski, New Zealand 6, whose boat speed is really fantastic. They look like they're surging. Uh, Manu Dien is going to hold his lane on John Pink. Let's see if, uh, yeah, he just rolls right by. So John Pink tried to go for the cross, couldn't do it, and did attack early enough to avoid the roll. So he's actually put himself in a terrible spot there. Yeah, why uh, would you do that? I mean, that was a high-risk move by him. Yeah, he's he's not, uh, that's not one of his best moves, and we haven't seen him at his best today all day, so that's unfortunate. Uh, he was one of the guys in line for a possible medal so far. There's the Aussies, though. Still a clear lane. Oh, we see Dylan and Allen, too. Dylan and Allen have held a good lane on... Uh, on the Swedes. Swedes out for the Kiwis in number six. Swedes going well, Dylan and Allen going well for a change to most of the team. But Australia won most consistent boat of the day up there in the top few again. Dylan and Allen have to eventually have to attack off and uh, immediately behind the Aussies there's the Swedes they go. So maybe maybe they're getting a little bit of a left shift and uh, able to cross the fleet here. And looking at the GPS it, it, it's very evenly spread across, across the, the breadth of the course, so there isn't a clear way that's playing. So there's still a lot of boats in the hub here for the top position. Nathan just tacked back, so he figures out the edge of the course. High risk maneuver here for uh, Matthew Frey and Jan Rocheru as they go for their tack. And uh, these guys have trained here out of Marseille for a long time, they know the water as well. And uh, we've seen the left consist of the, the French consistently take this top left. Yeah. The French teams, and both, uh, both in the morning and the afternoon. So with with good reason. I mean, uh, it, it, it does seem to work at the top. It does, doesn't it? And then the next boat we think we'll see them cross is uh, France 4, Stéphane Christidis and Matthew Dien. So uh, they're just... No, no, yeah. So Dylan and Alan are... No, that's Pinky, number 19. Just, uh, just holding off Stéphane. So, so he did hold them off. So we he kept his clear air. We, I don't we know thought he was going to be rolled, but he got away with it. And they've come across and attacked just slightly ahead, haven't they, of, uh, of the boats on the left. So the right side of the bottom is there. Yeah. And that was a nice attack there by GBR19 in the middle of picture. Japanese 81 coming across the screen. They had a good race early on in the previous race, but couldn't keep it together by the finish. Yeah, they've had and good beats all day. Look at the big, big lift on Port Tack for GBR19 on our left of picture. Big race here for the Alonzos. They're going to want to stay in the top nine. And, and so will Pink. I mean, uh, GBR19 is one of those that's that's on the edge of staying in or going out. So a lot of the boats that really need this race are showing their true colours. They're actually putting the hammer down when it matters most. Yeah. And, and now look how John Pink falls away to the right of the screen. He's, he's out of that breeze, and the Japanese and the Spanish are in complete They are completely different, aren't they? Maybe 20, 30 degrees different. The Japanese are lit up high and fast. Uh, but we have, I mean, we've seen boats come across in the right. So, the, you know, they're picking something up there, too. It's breezy everywhere. And there's lots of time. There's lots of runway for them to take something back. Uh, they're just centering themselves in the course. There's a lot more uh, port to sail in starboard. So, uh, last, the last race of the semi-finals here, and uh, we're seeing uh, sailors sail at their best when it matters. Yep, we like to see that. But these are, these are three teams we haven't spoken much about today. The Spanish, the Argentinians, and the Japanese. Currently having a very good race on the left-hand side. They're not far off the ley line, so they don't have that much more room to play with. So, so we might we'll probably only see one more tack from the teams that we're looking at here. And there are the marks. You see the Japanese are almost making the right-hand mark. Whoa, Another wow. lifting gust. They looks like they do. So, looking great for the Japanese right now. That's Massive quite shift. a shift. In that that must well. be 40, 50 degrees of shift they've had there. It's uh, they're I mean, they're thrilled with that. Uh, you know, in just the right time. You know, top of the beat. If you can get one of the last shifts, it makes such a difference for the rest of your race. If you can pull up your boat handling. So there's John Pink coming around in first. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So for all that shift, he still managed to get across in front. And a nice little lead. And John Pink coming on strong just when he needs to. Making a strong bid to... Oh, Manu didn't make his barrel. Weight. Okay, and Dylan and Allen. Going to be third round this uh, third round this mark. Australia one. Always there or thereabouts in these strong wins. And there's Burling in two. And an early jive for... Oh, 
Dylan yeah, Fletcher and Alex Wow, that's tricky. Then the Lancers had to duck around uh, Kiwi's ball. So everyone, nearly everyone going around this left hand mark, yeah. still going different ways out of it. A lot of agreement on which mark is favored, not a lot on which way to go. No. That's a lot of boats passing in a very short period of time, though. It's yeah. Impossible to keep up with. Oh, look. Guys, oh, miss twice. Same boat. Same, same yeah. boat again. So, yeah, they've got to keep their main sheet, their spin higher depleted on the left. It does cost them a lot today, and they're only about 10 points out of it. That may have qualified for tomorrow. So that's a bit of a major error. It's your first hoist. It's just a bit of tidying before the start. There's no excuse for that. No, there really isn't. On the, on the second hoist, you, you yeah. can't blame someone. But on the first hoist, that's just being lazy in between races. Yeah. Keeping your spin sheet pleated, and it's cost them twice. Dylan and Alan looking lit up in the middle of the course. Looking good there. Reports from our statistics crew that Dylan and Alan will be second overall if the places stay the way they are. So they were first coming into the day, spent a few points uh, getting the fr through the first races, but they're in, on for a good one now. We're seeing people dump Jenica there, actually not keep the Jenica full. It's that windy. Yeah, it's it's plenty windy. We see one of the French boats. Uh, could be could be from a different course. This is a runaway lead for them at the moment for John Pink GBR19. But look how tightly bunched the, the, the middle of the pack is. So many bunks there in contention. A lot could change. Which one do we think Nathan is? I would think he's certainly a red Jenica and he's going to be one of the first two red Jenicas on the right hand side. The, I think these are the Swedes with the blue Jenicas. So that might be Nathan parallel with him uh, on the far side there. There's the race leader. John Pink and Simon Wheeler. Flat trapezing, very low down on their wires really flying along and looking really comfortable in this breeze. So, so Dylan Fletcher and Alan Simon in second place in this race we hear. Ah, Denmark. Okay, the, the red spinnakers, Denmark 28. We didn't, so they went around the other mark. We never saw them. Uh, that's Alan Norgard and, uh, and uh, Paul Anders Thompson. Uh, went around and we never saw them on the downwind, but they're actually challenging for second place here with Dylan and Alan. And actually, Australia hasn't had a great run. No, they're a little bit behind, aren't they? Yeah, they are now back in about six or seven. So, oh, so look at the look at the spinnaker's rag on the way into the mark here. It's uh, that's gonna be a super very busy, busy, very windy Lord Mark rounding. Difficult one to work through. Everyone probably having to do jive drops the way the rules work, and that's a difficult maneuver. Everyone gets through safely though. There we go. Really congested though. And there you go the Kiwis, Pete Burling and Blair Chu up in the top ten. Swedes doing well coming out towards us. There goes another Danish boat around. It's like Jonas Vara, followed by France 8, and Stevie Morrison and GBR 77. Strammer Brown, USA. Okay. There's Alan No Regard left of picture. And well, Nathan uh, didn't have his best run, but he's come out of that mark, you know, going a good direction. He's got a good lane, so uh, safe, another safe result for him. He'll be through to our final, I think, if he can keep the boat up right through the rest. So who's out of our finals? Tell, tell us about that's uh, doing well that's not, uh, that we think might be out, because only three of the five can make it. Well, well Josh, oh, the, the, there we go. The Spanish just just uh, had trouble in their tag. I'd say they're one of the back, the lead, worst place teams of the five we've been tracking. And, John Pink, uh, certainly not one of them. He's no, still John leading Pink's this race. Seven one seven's right in the race here. They uh okay, France eight. We haven't seen them, so maybe they're one of the ones about to fall. Okay, they're, they're, they're in about uh, ninth or tenth position overall, France eight. Okay, so it's not a terrible race for them either. But they had to make up four points on uh, Nathan and on who's the second team that Nathan was with? And Hickey. So they're not going to beat either of them. Can they beat the guys? Uh, who, Oh, okay. How many points are they on? Uh, 70, so they were 5 points ahead. Okay, so it's uh, very close. Very close between Julian Bertoli and uh, the Alonzo brothers to see who can get this last spot in. 
John Pink, Simon Wheeler continue to nail on their finals position with a really good lead at the moment. Still crossing Australia 1. Nathan Outridge and Ian Jensen. But Nathan and uh, Ian on a charge. You can see John Pink, Simon Wheel attacking there. And oh, not a great tack. Okay. Cameraman picked that up. So hard to we, tell if that's a lead change or not. Yeah, because we got that wrong last time. Didn't we? we thought uh, we thought John Pink and Simon Wheel had under tacked uh, the French, but it turned out they were fine. But it, you can't believe that they passed them. He's going to have a the lead. <laughs> well, I'm just going to check it up on the GPS and just see what it says. And it looks like the Australians have moved into the lead. So that was a big lead. I mean, considering how bad that run was for Australia. Well, they rounded in six, and now they're up to the lead. So yeah. uh, they so really they've had they, a phenomenal they run. That really well. yeah. yeah. Amazing comeback. And that'll really cement their day and put them in the medal contention, uh, possibly for the final. Could well do. I'm, I'm sure that's the way they're thinking. It's not just about making the top nine for these guys. It's about winning the World Championships. They want to keep that one on the south. They don't want to have to pull off sand. Actually, when we were discussing these circle sail numbers, which are new to sailing, uh, primarily because we can see them from a distance and comment on the boats, but also we wanted to make sure the, the, the sailors could brand themselves appropriately and uh, could keep their numbers for logistics reasons. Nathan was the biggest proponent of keeping the top 10 ability to keep a single digit on their sail. Uh, and cockily, I assume, because he thinks he's going to get away with a one his whole career. Um, <laughs> and maybe he will. The way he's saying today, you wouldn't bet against it. He's not had a great week by his standards, but he has been an America's Cup sailor for most of the last year. This is the first regatta he's done since winning the Olympic, uh, the Olympics over a year ago, almost 15 months ago. So uh, he's just finding his feet again at the 49er. He's doing it pretty quickly. He did uh, the Bay Beta Regatta in San Francisco, where uh, every type of craft can sail against every type of craft from the, uh, from the down to the Bay Bridge there from Golden Gate. And uh, he was third across the line for boats. The two two Aussie 18s beat him, and he was in the third. 49ers. Uh, 49ers. There was the windsurfers and kite surfers mm -hmm. were, were ahead. But he beat a bunch of 18 foot skiffs. He beat a bunch of 18 foot skiffs. But uh, he said himself that he, while well, he has been in San Francisco training a little bit, he hasn't seen many of the lighter conditions we saw at the beginning of the regatta. It does look like he's seen a bit of the breeze. Yeah, this looks a little bit more like San Francisco conditions. Yeah. And uh, we're just seeing uh, on the left side of the screen the Danes, uh, Norgard and Lan Norgard and Thompson uh, tack, but Nathan tacks directly on their line well ahead. So he is uh, jets this upwind, and there's Pinky and Wheeler tacking uh, just below Nathan's line. Look like a couple of seconds from where I'm uh, viewing from. But a lot of distance given away. I mean, I, I don't know how they gave away so much distance. They're not that slow, John Pink and Simon Wheeler. D distance given away to who? To Nathan? Well, they, they had a good lead round that Lured Gate. Yeah. And uh, looks like they sailed through them, doesn't it? Well, I, th I think maybe they tacked a little bit too much at the, at the bottom of the course. Yeah. It uh, with, a, with a lead that long, you would have thought they'd have actually run away with it. But uh, you know, let's not. Nathan and uh, Ian are, are big for 49ers sailors now. They've, yeah. they've been putting the muscle on, like 40, especially 49ers skippers don't normally do. Yeah. Uh, for that America's Cup, so you can guarantee there'll be a different weight come Rio time. Uh, but right now they're certainly putting that weight to good use. And they tag there, just going up into the mark, fair away, and head to the finish. So around they go. We've seen some people struggle with the fair away, but so far this is a good one from them. A bit of a messy set. Yeah, a bit of a messy set there. Anyways, they're going to get away with it. Oh, they're going super low to avoid some boats, I think. There they go. Now they're going to get it set. John Pink round in a, what looks like to be a comfortable second. So it's a very it's a congested top of, the, top of the gate here, isn't it? They, there's always a lot of traffic up here. Yeah, much more so than if you just had the one win with Mark. These are only these are only twenty minute races as well. Yeah. So uh, you know, fifty percent or thirty percent shorter than uh, than we normally have sailed at fifty minute races. But we've also got a slightly smaller fleet at only twenty boats instead of twenty five or thirty. Uh, Burling and Took, we didn't see how they did it, but they've uh, got up into third place on this beat. Um, Manu and Stefan, and there's Julian Bartoli, number eight. Race. He's rounded in fifth. Spanish not looking so great. Still going up wind. They're not that bad. They're going to be top ten. 
we haven't seen that many boats well, go around yet. They're on the edge of top ten, then. Yeah. Not uh, these guys. We'll get our stats crew pounding out these results to try and get them up on uh, screen as soon as we can uh, following this race. To just try and confirm who we think is going to be straight into the final tomorrow and who's going to have to fight their way in from the T final. These guys are going straight into the final. It didn't look like it at the be beginning of the day. 18th overall going into today. Ninth going into this race, another race win that's got to move them up another couple of places. And uh, and if it wasn't for Burlington Tuke, we'd be talking about them for the gold again. I think the way Burlington Tuke is sailed right now, it's going to be tricky for them to get the gold tomorrow. Of course, they're going to give it the best shot, but yeah. uh, big points. Burlington Tuke are class act. Yeah. yeah. Um, but today, you know, Nathan, we talked about it that it was a long shot for Nathan to even make the top nine today. Yeah. By the end of this race, it's looking. Uh, it's going to be a conversation for a medal, certainly. Yeah. yeah. The way you sell today and, and the fact that we have more breeds forecast for tomorrow, another another strong wind day tomorrow, and we've got three races, but each counts for double points. Sure does. And boat handling big time tomorrow, right, with the, with the boundaries. So, I mean, we think this is all about boat handling. It's even more about boat handling tomorrow. Yeah, today's been about security boat handling. Uh, boat handling. Tomorrow will be about, you know, just consistent boat you're going to have to do a lot of it, no matter whether you want to or not. Yeah. And, uh... The, these guys are sailing off far beyond the Wimbledon mark to, to get their bail away. Like, presumably they can't be doing that tomorrow. Now, I know, we're going to have the rain restrictions in. I, I don't expect them to be quite as big as this, so I think everyone will get their bail away. Okay. Look how lit up they are. Bouncing downwind over these waves. Uh, going in for their last jive towards the finish. As, soon, as long as they make it through here. Oh, safety. Full safety. Wow, keeping that kite sheeted on, you don't see that very often. I don't know that I've ever seen Nathan do that since. What uh, is going on? Goobs is just not going to let it go. And there they do, they finally get around to go through the finish line. Okay, so it's windy. Yeah, when, yeah. when you see the Olympic champions doing that, you know everyone else has got boat handling issues as well. I haven't seen that Dylan and Allen yet, and they were in the top pack on the first lap, so uh, they're down, they're in sixth place. Okay, so they're still, they're still having a good race. And, uh, Hopefully they're going to stay in the conversation as well for a uh, They've been the leaders all week. So we, we've got GBR 19 holding second place, going across the line then. France 8 in third place, one of those boats that had to get a good score this time around. France 4 in fourth. In fifth, Denmark 28. Oh, this is, uh, this is the two French boats crossing right now and... Uh, <laughs> Manu and uh, Stefan, they make it through, get their jive in, and they're going to come in the finish line here. Have we seen where, where was... Oh, uh, they're slow to get set again. So this is... Oh, this, look at the... Here's Burlington Tuke. Going to pass two boats right on the finish line. They did. My goodness. So Burlington Tuke up to, what was that, third? Sixth. So that was no... I think a little bit higher than that. Yeah. Yeah. So they just passed two right on the finish line. You haven't seen it in the GPS. I think they might have been and then they, beat, the they beat Alan Norgard across the line. Wow, how'd they get that speed? And uh, we see uh, the Swede 717 coming in just after Steve I think it was Dylan and Alan uh, in there uh, as well. They were in fifth or sixth. Just ahead of the Swedes. No, no, no. It's not great now. And here are the Alonzos. I'd say 10th. Uh, a good race, kind of, but it's not going to be enough. enough. It's not going to be enough to get them through, no. They still have and then day -day, New Zealand six, a, a, a place or so behind the Spanish. So a great race by the standards of New Zealand six. Still well in for, for qualifying, and they were in second place overall. But uh, they will have yielded a few more points to the other Kiwis. Uh, Pete Bowling and Bayer Chuku will be the overall series leaders going into. Uh, Lowry and uh, Lowry and Calais are going to be on the outside as well. That's the second boat. Right. Okay. The, we think the Alonzis, Alonzos, and Lowry and Calais are going to be out. In, we think Nathan, Pinky, and Julian Dortoli. Okay. Well, our stats guys will confirm that as we go. Grammar Brown coming through now. Uh, but from the USA, they've had a good day. They have had a good day. Yeah. In from the Rapprochage. Uh, that is GBR set. Sure. Is that, it looked like a 19. Is, did we have a 19? Yeah, Pinky. No, well, what's he doing there? He crossed earlier. There's GBR. No. This must be a rerun. This is a this is a rerun of what we've already seen. Maybe. No, that's war. They don't. We don't have a replay. So we're gonna have anyway, to check what I'm not sure. I'm not sure what which GBR boat that was. I'm, I'm, Andy, if he pissed it in, I'm sure Pinky crossed the line earlier. <coughs> anyway, what's his number? Nineteen. 19. 
Here's uh Oh he must have he must have He must have he, Pinky did piss it in. Yes. But Pinky well, He's blown it. He's blown it. But maybe, winning that race. He was winning that he was race. Winning that race by a mile. Oh. Poor fella. Sickening. Yeah. Sickening. We moment. saw how difficult it was. He probably capsized in his jog. Uh, well, Nathan and Nathan and Ian barely got through their jog. Doing the safety jog, yeah. Here comes... Uh, uh, that's a sketchy jog we're looking at right there. Yeah, but they're going for it. They didn't... Uh, no safety jog there. Uh, Jan Rochu and Matthew Frey uh, sending it in in the Seiko Spinnaker. They're in about uh, 15th and 16th overall and again in this race. And then followed by... Ah, Austria. We haven't seen them all day. Oh, yeah, well, the we young fellas who uh, were wearing our white jerseys a number of times this week had... Uh, they we probably thought, haven't had their best. But we thought they would struggle today. <coughs> They're new to the class and they are quite light as well. Yeah. Today was uh, a day for the experienced and the, and the larger of the teams. And uh, we saw that... Uh, I don't think we've seen too many votes coming through. Still coming through. So who's this? Uh, the Argentinians. Okay, so they were right up there at the beginning of this race. Japanese, I don't think we've seen. No, we haven't seen the Japanese. Japanese either. were right up there at the beginning. So, so some of these teams finding it hard to hang on throughout the race. Yeah, definitely like all 49ers sailing, getting up when you can do in uh, definitely a few more knots if you can get back down there. Yeah, and, and it's the downwind that seems to separate the, the great from the good. Ruggiero Tita, he'll... Uh, yeah, this is his first trip to Gold Fleet as well, and uh, he'll be happy, uh, I think, just to have just to, uh, got that experience. And uh, what a great day of racing we saw, Andy. Yeah, we, fantastic. Uh, we got to see a lot of really spectacular skips down today. And the, the big story of the day was would Nathan Aldridge and Ian Jensen be able to get back from, up from 18th place? Would they be able to redeem themselves and, and put themselves in the hunt for the world title? But they're still in the hunt for another day. I'll be honest with you. When you started talking about the beginning of the day, I thought, oh, wow, this is a bit of a stretch. But uh, clearly we saw the class come through. It wasn't a stretch at all, was it? They made the class in the field today. They had a day that I didn't think anyone would be able to have, being so shifty, with a three top, or four top three finishes, uh, even with a couple mistakes. And uh, now they put themselves in the medal conversation from a really deep spot. Absolutely. But as you said earlier, Pete Burling and Blair Chute, uh, the silver medalist in the World Championships, and in the Olympic Games last year, are they going to be able to catch them? Are the gold medalists going to be able to catch the silver medalists? That's going to be the battle for tomorrow. It was only their countrymen close to them going into this race. They got another 10 points or so on their country. Uh, Marcus Hansen and Josh Borewski. Them um, and both of them. The first place was Dylan. The second place was Dylan and Allen, who dropped down to about 10. So they're going to take a healthy lead into the race tomorrow. And from what we saw in the Europeans, uh, they don't have any holes in their game. And, uh, you know, some solid boat handling, some solid racing, and they'll see themselves for their first world championship. And for those that did miss the cut, it's only nine that went through from today. It's not all over, is it? Tomorrow we have a petty final, and someone, one lucky team, or one skillful team, is going to get back in and get back into that top ten. John Pink, he could have been one of those nine. We think that he capsized, and if he did, he's probably not through today, but he still has a chance to go through tomorrow. Same with... Uh, See Nathan's already in the background of uh, oh no, they don't have that shot. Nathan's already in the harbor, so uh, he can tell they were sailing relatively close to here. And um, the, the other thing we wanted to talk about, so the petite final, the way it works is we have all the 12 boats that didn't make the final today, plus the first boat from the Repershaw. We're out sailing in another course, we didn't get to watch that today. So there'll be 13 boats in the petite final tomorrow. Two races, uh, probably run them about 15 minutes, but in the theater. And those guys will then get a top guy running on points for the whole series. So it'll only be a few people in the conversation to make through into the final. One of those will pull into the final. Guys in the 49er effects. Uh, they'll have the top uh, 12 votes from the team final plus one from Silverfleet. Um, and the top one will get through into the final. So uh, lots of teams hoping that uh, tomorrow's a good day for them. I mean, uh, we've got both championships up the grass. Completely. I mean, and the way you've got it structured, you've got double point races tomorrow, three of them in the final. So much can change, and it, and it's a different style of racing. And one of the great things about this championship is that you, you get to race against big fleets at the beginning of the week on big courses. But as the fleets get smaller, as we get to the top of the pyramid, the courses get smaller. So they're on 20-minute races tomorrow. They're on 10-minute races, right? 
going around the boundary mark of the course. So they can't sail out the boundary because there are lane ropes like the swimming board down each side of the course. Is that on screen now? Yeah. Okay, wow. So we've got our leaderboard. And, uh, wow, Nathan's only up to seven. But if you look at the points, 72 points.